Are, are we live? We're live! It worked! Oh my god! It worked! Yay! Okay, guys, there was a small issue with the key. This was unrelated. It was because I had to, because of the security issues and getting kicked out of Twitch, I had to generate a new key, but I accidentally messed up my key over on YouTube. Welcome and hello to everyone. Hello, 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 my lovely, lovely, lovely imps. We got Hissatir, Mellow Anarchist, Emerald Queen, Gay Fest, Sober Flote, V, X, Vi, Abo, Arcane Sunset, Purple E, Chan, Pros Renegade, Pansabi, Ach Achilles, Road, Zoe Vex, Emerald Queen, Aztec 99, Mixed Dizzy, Bonks Daily, Jazz Dog, Toa, to Toa Trika, Indicat, Pseudo Fawn! We got the Fawn. We got Akira Tanica. We got Post Scarcity Cat. We got Fun Bun. And over on the Twitch chat, yes, that's right, we're back on Twitch. We got Big Orange Jude, the Twos, I uh, Li Liavas. We got Psychopax, Eventual Ghost, Nuts. And on the YouTube chat, we have none other than Bondrud, Bestad, Alien Gunk, Versifer, Kimber Wolf, John Warren, Funky Corvid, Smalls, Comrade Cat, Pernicus, Rhodes, and J. Troido. And Sound Judgment. How does it sound today, huh? How does it sound? Does the audio sound good? Because the audio should sound good. Now, you might notice that the, um, you might notice that the, the, camera is slightly off it's slightly different than usual right um yeah the camera position changed and it's going to change again um in fact it's going to change again um we have moved to a new audio device oh my god holly fox it's all right i hope you can do well i hope your wisdom teeth are fine piftle cakes with the gifted t four tier one subs thank you so very much I, I heard, so I heard, so I heard. Even the camera is moving further left. That's true, but guess what? A lot more is going to be changing, okay? Listen, you all, welcome, first of all. Make sure you hit the like button. What the hell happened? Wait a minute. We had like 167 viewers, and now we only have 100. What the fuck happened? Was the restart that severe? Oh, that sucks. Hold on. Let's, let's retry this. Hold on. I'm going to send another notification to the server real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me try and fix this. Let me just get the correct link here. Now that we have this stream key issue fixed. Because I would really love everybody to be here. I got some cool shit to talk about. We have a lot of stuff. We got to, we're doing a drama mama today. It's been a while since we've done a drama mama, and this is a weird drama mama, isn't it? Well, we got to, We have a lot to research today. It's going to be one of those old school classic drama mamas. So I hope you all are ready. Um, but uh, but yeah, hey Soma, great to see you. Let me just tell you. Okay, so um, yeah, classic drama mama, an old school style. So let's talk about some of the changes that were made. Okay, so the last stream that we had was on Friday, you will recall. And on Friday, uh, we played Inscription, which was amazing. For those of you who are watching on Twitch, um, I recognize that you may have missed the Inscription streams that were on YouTube only because of the Twitch false ban. Brought to you by none other than the uh, pathetic, slippery, shitty shit covered orbiters over at DGG who in t who literally actually called for my channel to be re uh to be reported and actually succeeded in having my channel mass flagged to the degree that I lost my channel for 2 weeks. You know how much money that is? Do you know how much that fucking hurts? Oh, I wish that was the drama mama topic, but it's not. What's the news on the ban? It was actually a mass report. They, uh, the, the mass report came in and they, uh, just issued it right out. Yeah. The, the inscription stream. So for those of you, um, who have not seen the inscription streams, please go watch the VODs on YouTube. I'm not kidding you. It is so good. I am so proud of those streams. I did. I voice acted the entire game. Every character in the game has a unique voice done by me. 
and it was amazing. We accidentally broke the game, and it was so incredible. It was so incredible. You cannot even believe the excitement. Go watch those VODs. It is a, it is a totally new thing that I've done, a, 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 a long-form playthrough where you get to experience a story game voice acted by yours truly. Hell yeah, that'd be amazing. So I finally admit it was DGG this time? Almost assuredly. You can never prove it. But Mindwaves, who is a prominent member of DGG, actively called for my, my account to be reported literally 20 minutes before my, my channel got banned. So, yeah, I think that's fair. I think there's enough... Uh, enough uh, evidence there to say that the guy who got like a hundreds and hundreds of likes and retweets um like like 50 plus retweets on his thing calling for me to be deplatformed and then within 20 minutes of that post being made i just magically got deplatformed huh nightbot and youtube chat is broken okay we're gonna have to go through and do that i'm gonna add that to my to-do list so uh we're gonna we're gonna do a end of year cleanup it'll be called like a winter cleaning um sort Stream element, stream labs, nightbot for stream winter cleaning. I have a lot of stuff to talk about. Ugly Pie, thank you so very much. Oh my god, the queen hath returned. Let her fury reign. Indeed, indeed. You can see the reflection of what appears to be a Pokemon battle. Actually, it is an animal battle. Um,. Fawn is currently playing a uh, super stuffy animal battler. What? What's it called again? Super, super Auto Pets. It's a really fun game. It's a uh, it's an auto battler with really cute animals. A lot of apples. Thank you so much for the tier one sub. So since D since Destiny isn't the culprit, what's this drama mama about? This drama mama is about Jeffrey Epstein, and more specifically. Gislaine Maxwell. And yes, I am going to call her Gislaine the entire time. I don't care. I'm going to call her Gislaine the entire time. Okay? And I don't care what you say. I'm just telling you right now. Because I've watched a hundred other people fuck up and, and mess up the names and I don't care. It's Gislaine. I don't give a shit. You can enjoy it or not. Those are your choices. You can either enjoy it and shut the fuck up or you can re in the in the chat and I'll ban you. <laughs> All right, listen. Um so hold on. I want to I want to try and keep this organized, okay? Let me try and keep my brain organized, okay? Hold on. Let me just give me just a second here, okay? So, let's talk. So, Friday was the last stream. Saturday and Sunday, Grime Dango and I sat down for like somewhere between eight and 12 hours total and completely tore out. We committed, we did surgery on the computer set setup. And it, to the degree that obviously, as you can tell, the room actually looks d different. Oh yes, my stream, Grime Dango is my best friend. In like, like Grime Dango helps me so much. Like, I, 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 I just, I can't thank Grime Dango enough. Grime Dango has a very different skill set than me, and I have a very different skill set than Grime Dango, and we just help each other a lot on a lot of different things. Um, and the fun thing is that um, Grime Dango has a lot of passion for audio video stuff, and so Grime Dango gets to come tool around with a set setup that's not hers, and... Uh, I get the benefit of of having a stream that has some cool features. So yeah, huge huge shout outs to Grime Dango. Um and this audio th the audio setup is a collaboration of uh, it is us banging our heads cuz neither of us were good at audio. Um I'm a little I've got I'm good at like uh like angles and some of the more artistic aspects of video. And Grime Dango is very good at the technicals of video and, and broadcasting and that kind of stuff. And we're both getting better, um, but the audio was, was us both bashing our heads against a wall. But we did surgery this weekend, and it took a long time. But what the result is we no longer have... Look at this. Let me show you. Where'd it go? Wait, where the hell did it go? 
you know where the do you know where the old button there it is? This shit, this fucking piece of shit is done for. It's gone. You see it here? It's not transmitting any audio because fuck this piece of shit. Fuck it. I don't want to, I don't know. I, I kind of want to get, I kind of want to get a refund. This thing's like $300. I kind of want to get a refund. I don't want to destroy it. I want to go yell at them and get a refund, guys. It was so annoying. Look, I'm not, I'm not rich, okay? I really am not. I really am not, okay? Um, no, I would not sell it to a fan. I should be able to get a refund. It's completely failed. Um, the, uh, what was I going to say? So, yeah, um, that one is done. Now what we have in there instead is this one. So this is what is in my computer right now. This is the Motu M2. Uh, I did a post about it on my Patreon. That's right. I bet you guys didn't know this because I always forget to talk about it. Um, but I I post technical blog thingies on my Patreon. Uh, yeah, I have a Patreon and I, the only, you get a nice name in Discord if you sign up for the Patreon, you support the show, and every once in a while I do a blog on there where I talk about the random shit that um we're working on i know i've not been good about plugging the patreon i'm trying to get better about it um the thing is like let me just explain something um if you can afford a place in seattle you're rich my brett you're a moron are you stupid i have four roommates wait three roommates four roommates what are you fucking talking about can you please suck my cock <laughs> holy shit I fucking hate people. Oh my god. Do you know what? Oh, you guys are going to provoke my rage. <gasps> Wait, really, Wolfie? That's awesome, Wolfie. If you have a link to that, DM that to me on Discord. Yeah, chat. Yeah, oh yeah. Check out the Bratz emote. Check out the Bratz emote. Everybody type Bratz in all caps, right? It's Bratz in all caps? Yeah. Yeah, type Bratz in all caps. In all caps. Look at that. Bratz. We have a new Bratz emote, and that emote was made by none other than Intentions Nasty, the incredible artist who also did my fursona. Yay! Ooh. Oh my god! Whoa. I'm acting brand new today. Listen, I'm feeling I'm feeling all right. I'm actually listen, I'm not gonna lie, I'm going to be a little bit lower energy during the holidays. Uh, I have I do have a fursona. I do, yes. Good. Oh, I want to see this. Can I watch? If you can get me a link to that convo, I will watch that convo. I would love... Oh, my God. That will be a little... Mm, ah, it'll be a nice little bonus for us today to watch a convo. I always want to support Ico because Ico is poggers. So we'll get some little bonus drama. Okay? It'll be fun. A little treat for all of you. Um... Did I see the Borshenko? Yeah, I want to talk about that. The Borshenko thing is off the rails, okay? Um, you're having issues connecting to Twitch? A lot of people seem to be having issues to Twitch. Um, it does. It does look a bit like the Kitty Demon, doesn't it? I love that. Um, uh, thank you very much, B Borshenko, yes. Um... There's a, oh God, there's so much. Okay, hold on. Let's focus for just a second here, everybody. Um, let's focus. First of all, like the stream. Like the motherfucking stream. I love having you here. Please like the stream and subscribe. I, I really want to grow the channel. We're almost to 15K. And at 15K subscribers on YouTube, which I should have right now, there is no way. I am the smallest. I have the, like the smallest youtube following of any of these people and my face is all over the place i am so famous in twitch politics and i have basically no subscribe it makes me so frustrated but uh regardless when we hit 15k we're doing a call-in stream which means you all that is a lamb chop yes but you all will be able to call in my youtube following being so small makes no sense uh 
let me just say, uh, there are reasons for it, okay? When your account gets falsely flagged, like, six times, it hurts you in the algorithm, turns out. Just so you know. Holy shit, Fell Guy. Well, don't worry. We're doing a big gaming stream on Wednesday and another one on Friday. We're doing Inscription on Wednesday and on Friday, a special stream with some special guests. Oh, sick. Thank you. I'll hold on right on to this. We'll take a look at this. Um, I wonder if a new channel would help. It might. We might need to do like a Mama Gaming channel where all the gaming stuff goes on, but I don't know. I feel so nervous about doing that. The problem is that my channel has been hit so hard for so long that it is actually choked out all growth and it makes me really fucking sad because um like i don't know i have really really high average view counts but i have no reach because the algorithm hates my guts like it just hates my guts <sighs> anyway Look, no time to get down, no time to get down. I've got some ideas for this coming year. I'm gonna talk about them a whole bunch. We could have the Demon Mama Dungeon. Ooh, that's a good idea. I feel like a gaming channel would be risky. What about a cooking segment? I have Cooking Mama, and guess what, everybody? I've begun working on a very, very special Cooking Mama segment. You all have no idea what's coming. Okay, let me just tell you, the camping idea is going to happen. I, I that is an aspiration of mine. Um, so, uh, is it happening tonight? No, because it's going to be a big, a big project. Okay, do you want to know what it is? It is a tournament. Okay, a tournament. That's all I'll say. Okay, and it's going to have a lot of live aspects. So the goal is to uh in is to have tons and tons of fun for you all to engage with. We're going to have votes. We're going to have IRL stuff. It's going to be amazing. Uh chair, honestly a nice chef knife would be un unbelievable. I don't have a nice chef knife. So wow, holy shit. Um it's going to be sick as fuck, okay? This is going to be the sickest thing. It's just going to take a little while. I got to talk about a couple of these things. Okay, man, there's so much stuff I want to talk about. Okay. So I told you what we did over the weekend. We did a fuckload of work over the weekend, reworking everything, and it's great. Um, uh, what else do I want to talk about? Um, we've I've been doing uh, a ton of uh, organizational and administrative stuff behind the scenes. Um, what we're going to have soon is sometime in the next week or so, uh, probably this weekend, not... It won't be this week, but it will be like this weekend. I am going to rework this set. We're going to be moving to the Christmas set. So we're going to have a tree up. We're going to put uh, ornaments up. We're going to have a tree decorating stream. It's going to be awesome. So that's another exciting thing. Um, I've been saying this a couple of times. Um, I've been saying this a couple of times, which is that... Uh, um, which is that I'm going to have less streams this December. And the reason why is because I'm going to be doing a bunch of special streams. Yes, the tree is hell themed. It's going to be Demon Mama themed. You'll see. We got some ideas. It's going to be great. Um, and uh, so there's going to be a little bit... There's going to be fewer streams this month. I've said this a couple times. There's probably going to be fewer streams leaning into... Uh, we'll probably get back to like the usual schedule at the beginning of February. And the reason for that is is threefold. So listen closely. First, we are doing a bunch of holiday special treat uh, special treats. I'm reworking the set for the holidays so that we can get a tree up in here and have a lot of fun with that. Secondly, I am planning a bunch of more ambitious content. Um, something that I've been kind of frustrated with over the last year is that it's felt like there have been a lot of, like, getting stuck in drama cycles. And, um, I hate, I hate it. It makes me really sad and very frustrated. Because the last, like, I had a stream that had a thousand viewers recently. Um, and it was drama. 
a thousand people came to watch my show, a thousand, uh, 900 or 800, approximately somewhere between seven and 800 of them stuck around for like four plus hours. That was the stream I got banned on. This drama shit, I'm, I'm, I, I make banger streams, okay? I know I do it. I'm, I'm confident in my streaming ability at this point. I can make a stream and keep 800 people entertained for six hours, but Every time I'm involved in drama, even if I'm defending myself, I take a hit. My channel gets fucking shit canned for any involvement in this shit. And literally, guys, I had a... Wait. Oh, I feel like I should be able to celebrate for three weeks the fact that I, that I broke a thousand viewers on a stream. I should be celebrating that. Instead... I lost money, a lot of money. I lost two weeks of Twitch pay for break for breaking a thousand viewers. Why? Why is it like this? Do you understand how devastating it is to my fucking psyche? <sighs> anyway. <sighs> This year has been, um, has been me constantly, uh, not being able to celebrate or enjoy any of my victories. In two years, I have grown from a nobody, a chatter in one streamer's chat, to a stream that is sustaining my, sustaining my rent. Um, but I haven't been able to celebrate any of that, really, not meaningfully. I've done a couple little announcements here. We've had a beer on stream and I've I've been like hype hype hype, but there has been no room to actually like breathe and take it in and enjoy it as a community. Our community has been in raid mode for months. Our Discord has been raid mode for almost an entire year. It's it's annoying. And I have not gone out of my way to seek drama. I have simply responded when people pick fights with me. But the reality is that this space is beyond toxic, which means the only option for me is to make more ambitious content that brings people in that without engaging the politics space at all. And I know a lot of you came from the politics space and I will promise you all, listen to me right now, okay? If you are like watching me for the politics, that is never, ever going away. I am extremely political. I am a po politics addict. But I will not have a job or any semblance of mental health if I try to continue to engage with these extremely toxic spaces. So I'm changing things a little bit. For you all, it's only, I promise you, it's only going to get better. Because what I want to do is I want to, uh, I want to do more funny segments. I want to do more politics. That's me talking to you about my politics and the things I care about. Much less debates with fucking dumb shits on the internet who end up just making my life hell for forever because that's what they do. Um, and much, and obviously no more panels. I am retired from the panel scene. I am not doing any more panels. I will not touch your stupid panel bullshit. I have been exploited on that front for long enough, okay? That shit brought me like a drop of growth very early on. And then since then, I've been fucking carrying the panels, okay? I have been fucking bringing viewership to the panels. I like debates with dumb shits too, but guys, guess what? It doesn't happen anymore. No one will debate me anymore. You understand that? No one. Everyone is too scared to debate me. Because what happens is, they come in with some stupid take, like you're a piece of shit degenerate, and then I school them, and then they look like an idiot, and they've now seen Destiny look like an idiot, they've seen fucking, uh, fucking, uh, John Burke, Rob Knorr, all these fucking conservative assholes have seen their, their besties look like fucking idiots, tearing the shit out of Lauren Southern. 
And so they just don't. Nobody debates me anymore. Nobody comes by. Nobody even tries. We once in a while will get like a Rose Wrist situation. And guess what? Rose Wrist is still fucking pissed about talking to me. Okay? Rose Wrist is still fucking mad. And I get it. He's a young guy. But dude, fucking chill. Fucking chill. Stop. It's just one debate. Yeah, I know. But that's what I'm talking about, Starshine. Is it like, it's like I can't have a conversation without, I can't have a debate without it turning into drama every single time because everybody's got it. There's a tar there's a giant target on my back that says free clout. And people think that they can just go at me and treat me like shit for free clout. It, it's impossible. Oh, hey, that's six, Pansabi. So, and then number three, okay? Number three is the third reason why there's going to be slightly less streams um, in the near future. And that is because I'm going to be moving to a new place soon, which is awesome. I know. I'm not leaving Seattle. We're just moving within the area and we're going to get a bigger place because it's time because we have to. Uh, I don't have enough room here. Uh, right now, I share this this computer room with my partners and I need a studio that can just be my studio if I want it to be and not bother anybody so I can stream whatever I want without bothering anybody or or I can make whatever changes I need to. So we're going to try and look for a place and hopefully it will be within the next, you know, month or two. And, uh, oh, thank you, Zoe Vexed. I appreciate that a lot. Well, I'm sure we'll have more in the future. Um, yeah. There's going to be fun. Oh, wait, wait. There will always be Fontaine, okay? There will, n do not worry. There will always be Fontaine. And so, yeah, of course, if you, listen, it's the holidays and I'm going to be probably doing a move. Any donation is deeply appreciated. Listen, only donate. The show will always be free. I promise you. As long as I can keep making the show, it will be free. Okay? I will never pay well the show. So, if you want to support me, if you want to help me do well, if you want to help me be be in a place in my life where I'm I can work comfortably and keep making this show and keep taking it to the next level, you go ahead and throw me the donates. If not, it's all good, okay? Hey, thank you Pros Renegade. I'm happy. I'm happy about it too. Yeah. This this I do this. There's there's like <laughs> I survived my assassination attempt. All right, let's take a look at this meme. Here, a little quick meme would be great. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh my god, amazing. Absolutely fucking incredible. Oh my god. Ah, yes, I didn't. Don't worry, I didn't forget to renew my BDSM license. <laughs> alright, alright, there's a little bit of spite, okay? <laughs> Ursula! Ursula V with the incredibly generous $50. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so very much. I will indeed do my best to stay based, okay? <laughs> Holy fuck. Occam's. Listen. Here. Occam's, I'm sorry for blocking you. We had a fight. I'm sorry for blocking you, okay? It's it's all in the past now, okay? There. Uh, so the, those are the three reasons why there's going to be slightly less, slightly shorter streams for the next like month or so. Don't worry. Remember, I know that on the internet, a month and a half feels like forever, but just remember that like um, that like that's not that long, and everything will be back to to full power in no time. Um, I just, I can only do so much and I've been doing nine hour streams three days a week plus a Sunday gaming stream for a long time. So yeah, me, Posadas John. Entire time spent as an imp feels like a month. I know this year has been wild. Okay. It's been wild. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been planning a lot of things 
and uh, we're gonna do some. We're gonna do some uh, Christmas. What's it? What do we want to call winter cleanup? Uh, am I gonna check out the Ico thing? I am Wolfie, but we're not gonna do it right away. I got to do the Drama Mama first. It'll be Drama Mama and then other stuff afterwards. You're lost on the current meme. Uh, the current meme that we're talking about right now is just um. Fuck yeah, Danny. I gotta throw you. Okay, listen. We're gonna. I'm gonna listen. I got. I got. Okay, that's like another thing I got to put on here. Okay, listen. I got to do some fucking celebrations here. I've been. Listen. Uh, maybe we can talk about this a little bit. Hold on. Let's see. Oh God. Okay. Yo, Sarah Jane, four twenty five. Thank you so much. Thank you for standing up for the trans community. Good luck with the move, always and forever. I will never stop. Um. I got to promote my Patreon more. You would have signed up months ago. I know. Okay. I, I promise I'm going to do. Okay. Listen. Oh God. Oh, how much can I reveal? How much can I reveal? Hmm. Okay. Listen, I'm working on some big stuff. I'm working on, as you can tell, I'm working on a lot of things. Um, I am a bit, uh, I'm a bit of a workaholic. I've said this many, many times. Um, I have, yeah. Um, I've, 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 I work on a lot of things. Uh, we have soon, we are going to have custom, uh, we are going to have custom d goal bars because, um, multiple people have, have yelled at me, um, that I don't do the shill stuff enough. Uh, I, I did it so, oh my God. It's, it's not a cookie. Spectacular Snyder man and Nico Pico. Thank you so very much. Oh my God. Thank you so very much. Um, so I streamed for eight hours recently and I did four promo. I did four subscription plugs the entire time. I've gotten bad at it. Um, I've always been kind of bad at it, but, um, I, I need to do this more. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get a really cute. I, how do I talk about this? Um, how do I talk about this? Uh, I hate advertisements. I fucking hate advertisements. So the least that I can do is make them pretty and fun. Okay. So I, ha you have to do them. Capitalism and, and YouTube makes us do this shit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have goal bars that are custom and they're going to fit. They're not going to look ugly and out of place. It's going to be little, uh, they're little health bars that are going to show what our monthly goals are. And they're going to fill up with little animations. So it's going to be really, really sick. Also, we're going to have a really cool new feature soon, which is going to be, it's going to react to the sound of my voice, okay? That's right. We're going to have a special feature in the UI that reacts to the sound of my voice. It's gonna be really cool. I'm telling you, it's gonna be sick. Yeah, it's gonna be fuck. It's gonna be fucking sick. You know, as much as being a niche community feels, you got to grow, become big. It's better for your advocacy. Plus seeing you succeed will fill our impish balls with joy. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's a sound visualizer and you're going to see it's really sick. Um, yeah, it's going to be fucking sick. Um, so we're doing a lot of things. Um, we need a Doe VTuber AI. Maybe. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll see. Um, We'll see. These are the most reasonable Patreon tiers I've ever seen. The base tier, which still gets you a Discord badge, is only one fifty a month. That's eighteen a year. Every little bit counts. A great opportunity to support an awesome streamer. Yes, today I was <laughs> Grime Dango. This morning, literally, <laughs> this morning I woke up and Grime Dango was like, "Okay, time for me to crack the whip." And I was like, "What?" And then Grime Dango was like, "I'm sorry, I have to be your manager for a minute. What the fuck are your Patreon tiers? What the hell is wrong with your links on YouTube? What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Ah!" And so Grime Dango was like, whoosh, whoosh, and I fixed a bunch of stuff this morning. Okay, listen, it's very rare that anybody cracks the whip on me, but sometimes. So I fixed the Patreon tiers. We're going to be upgrading the Patreon soon. We're doing a bunch of stuff, okay? We're doing a bunch of stuff. The problem is, the real truth is, streaming is too much work, okay? I can't.
cannot keep track of everything. I'm losing my goddamn mind trying to keep track of all of the shit I have to do. There's YouTube, Twitch, Restream, OBS, the actual computers that I have to run. There's all of the networking. There's all of the scheduling. There's the uploading, the editing. There's the keywords. It's fucking stupid. So I'm desperately trying to keep on top of everything. And that's why we're going to do a winter cleaning where I'm going to take a little bit less time being on stream and a little bit more time uh, fixing shit up. The problem is, is that I need to be careful and not overcommit to things like uh, special Patreon rewards and special YouTube rewards and special Twitch rewards and special Discord rewards and special website rewards. I cannot, I literally am only one human. There is no way I can do all of that. Plus... I really want to do merch this year. Like, actually, I really want to do merch. Even if all we do is get a hat, a shirt, and a sticker going, I want, I said that 2022, if I was still doing well by 2022, I would aim to do merch. And I have now had multiple people talk to me about wanting to help me do merch. So what we're thinking of for merch, and this is still very much in the works, so don't, this isn't any sort of like promise yet or anything. Um is we're going to aim to get Pacific Northwest locally created um, stickers, shirts, hats that are going to be fucking sick, okay? They're not going to be low quality. I made a promise, and will continue this promise, which is that none of my merch will be shit. My merch will be stuff that you will want to wear and will be comfortable to wear or use, or whatever, okay? No motherfucking bullshit. I'm not doing any shitty screen-printed tees. I'm not, I won't do it. I will not do that. That is fucking terrible. Um, what we really want to do is we want to do a Mama Bad one that you can slap up that'll say, Mama Bad, find out why at DemonMama.com or some silly, stupid thing like that. And then we also want to have a Mama Bloosh one that you can just slap the stickers around. And we're going to go and me and a couple of friends are going to go stick them up all over Seattle. So Mama Bad and Mama Bloosh are the two stickers we want to do to go do some like IRL. Because guess what? I, I, heard, from, um, I heard from somebody. Somebody was talking about me in Seattle. One of my, one of my, uh, one of my team members, Cherry, who you all know, Cherry has a, has a, a, a friend who works at Starbucks and while they were working at Starbucks, one of their coworkers brought me up unprompted and then they were like, wait, my friend works for, my friend works for Demon Mama. Isn't that fucking wild? That's the wildest shit to me. So, holy fuck. I've never had anything like that happen in my entire life. So, yeah. I think that's basically all of the, like, like weird uh, update stuff. We've been going for 48 minutes already. Jesus Christ. Time flies. Yeah, reckon, yeah we're, we are reaching. I mean, right now we're at... We're, we get an average of 200 viewers at this point, which is sick as fuck. So, um... When do we get DM pro Oh my god! Mama Mauled programmer socks would be cute. They might be watching right now. It'd be sick as fuck. If you are, thank you. Please. Uh, word of mouth is unbelievably powerful, okay? Word of mouth is fucking ridiculous, okay? In a world where ads are plastered everywhere and everyone uses um, ad blocker, word of mouth is so important. Oh, holy shit. That's sick, Gayfesh. What about Dean Mama Dog Toys? Putting it in the list. Oh my god, that would be so sick. Oh my god, that would be so sick! What if I could get them? What if I could get them? What if I could get them to be sold at Doghouse Leathers? Unironically, I would take a sponsorship from Doghouse Leathers. 
If anybody is in the Seattle area and has connections at Doghouse Leathers, I will take I will take a I will I will take a sponsorship from Doghouse Leathers. No joke, I will. Unironically. It's a, it's a it's the it's one of the most famous uh leather pup play pup play shops in the world. Adam and Eve kind of sucks, but I'd think about it. Hell yeah, that makes me really happy. Well, we're going to talk about anti-work today. Oh, we're going to have... Oh, Demon Mama fake tattoos. That's a good idea, too. Temp tattoos. Oh, that'd be so sick. Anyway. <laughs> Capo, well, maybe we'll talk about it. Maybe we'll talk about it. That'd be sick. All right, we'll have to do that. Okay, listen. But, um... We have two things to talk about today, okay, everybody? We've talked about all the future stuff. This is all super, super exciting um, and awesome. And the reality is I want to make something... I've said this before. In my wildest dreams, in my wildest dreams, I can make a... a I want to help inspire a wave of leftist media. But to do that, I have to build, build something that's stable and awesome that's going to keep going for 10 years. 10 years from now, I want you guys to be reminiscing with me at a Christmas special where we're like, oh my God, do you guys remember fucking 10 years ago when it was like drama was like what we had to do for like a year? I want us to be able to reminisce about that and laugh about that someday. You know, like on PBS, do you guys remember Car Talk? It was it Car Talk? I think that's what it was called. I'm I'm blanking on the name now. I used to listen to it. I don't even Was it Car Talk on PBS? Yeah, Car Talk Radio. Do you guys remember Car Talk on PBS? Anybody? Anybody? I mean NPR, NPR, sorry. NPR. Not PBS, NPR. So I used to listen to Car Talk. Um Car Talk was a, a show on NPR that was broadcast all across the country. It was just two guys talking about cars, how to fix your cars. It was a variety show about cars. Eventually, one of the brothers, the two guys who were in, I think they were like, I think they were cousins actually or something. The two guys who were involved in it, one of them passed away. And when it ended, the show had been running for like 18 years. So when he finally passed away, there was like literally a month of people sharing their favorite memories, all this shit. And they, it was, it was, um, it was incredible. And so I would like, I would love it for us to have that type of legacy because everybody talks about, um, it online. All these shows are so short lived. Everybody's shows last for four or five years, maybe at most, most people's shows last for less than a year, but I don't want to do that. I want, I want my show to have, to make an impact. I really do. So, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it ended because one of the brothers died. Yeah. And it was a great show. That show used to make me laugh so goddamn hard. Yeah. Yeah, listen, Sam Cedar is a huge inspiration of mine. Uh, we have different politics. But yeah, the la with the last episode of Always Sunny it became the longest running live action sitcom in history. That's amazing. Read up on your TV contacts. Yeah, I got to do that too. Contracts. Yeah, I know. I mean, look at look at a show like uh, look at a show like Howard Stern. Obviously, Howard Stern is like fucking huge you know what i mean but like how long has howard stern been doing an independent show like how long decades decades of lore and fun and people and 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 crazy events that nobody's gonna fucking rem like like that everybody's gonna fucking remember and nobody's gonna ever forget that's fucking sick that's what i want to do so yeah all right all right enough Enough wistfulness, okay? What is this? What is this? December? What is it? December? Jesus Christ. 
What are you supposed? What are we doing? Thinking about the year in retrospect, sharing sentimentality. Ugh. 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 Yucky. Ooh. Feeling the seasonal depression hard this year? Thriftless voyage. I will try to make you laugh, which will give you a little bit of serotonin, which will help stave off the seasonal depression. Hopefully. Want to know? Watch this. I bet I can make a bunch of people laugh just by doing this. Ah! <laughs> what? <laughs> I knew it! I knew some people were going to laugh just by me doing that. <laughs> ah. ah, so good. Look, look, some of you did. No, no more. What the? Hey! What the hell happened here? The Elgato crashed! I screamed too loud and it crashed the, it crashed the Elgato. Ro, ro, so what's the term? Uh, stream, stream dome so, so sloppy that I, cl I crashed the uh, Elgato. That one, was, that one was for Constance, okay? Listen. All right, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's talk, shall we? You, you guys want to get prepped for what we're talking about today? Yeah. Why, hello there. What the hell is this? Hey, happy birthday, Dad. It's your cake day. We don't see that very often. Happy cake day, Dad. Happy cake day, Dad. I need to do, I need a sound effect for people's cake days. You know, Sam Cedar has the shofar. What would mine be? A spibbity spoo? Oh, that's the next thing we're doing. We're, we're like next weekend or the weekend after we're going to reset up the, um, the soundboard. We haven't had the soundboard in forever. Yeah, we need to get the soundboard back. I think I only have like, I don't even think I have any of them set up right now. Yeah, I don't. That's true. I, that's true. I only launched it in, a year ago, but that's going to be not true for for soon. Yeah, we'll, we'll get more of them. That's cool. Yay! Or something like that. I could do like, I could do like a like a maybe I could do like the Roblox oof like vocoded to the uh, leather belt thing. Belt. It'll be like oof, 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 oof. Something like that. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. I'll have, to, I'll have to brainstorm some ideas. The children, yay. Yeah, here we go. That's so... Nah, see, it's too cheesy. It's too tacky. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. Let's take... Let's, let's bring it in. Let's bring it in. Come on, everybody. Capo! Oh, my God! This was going to be a help DM while she's banned, Dono, but instead it's a celebrate beating the band, Dono. Get that weak-ass shit out of here, DGG chuds. True! Thank you so much! Thank you so, so much! Capo, for the incredibly generous 10 gifted tier 1 subs. Deeply appreciate that. Deeply appreciate that. Um, I have been falsely banned six times and evaded it. I have become increasingly efficient at it. Okay? What ring of hell am I from? The one that's the sex one. I'm from the sex one. Yeah, the cool one. Happy cake day, you goddamn sons of bitches. 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 There we go. There's a couple. I could do- Oh! I forgot to tell you. Why can I do that? Because I am- Because I am a living cartoon. That's why. Sophia Shell, Thank you so much for the Prime sub! 
Thank you. Prime subs are free and they do help the channel. What? Hold on. Let's see. Um, let me see. What else can I do? Oh, yeah. You guys know the weasel voice? Happy, happy cake day. You're going to regret it. Please look into a VA manager agent. Get on Pokemon. I could do Pokemon. Squirtle. Squirtle, Squirtle. See? I could do Pokemon. Stoat. Listen, the voices is something I want to do more on. And I have some cool ideas, but I can't, we can't spend all day, we can't spend all day talking about the cool ideas, okay, everybody? By the way, not to be that bitch, but we have 278 fucking poggers concurrent viewers on YouTube alone, not counting Twitch. So if any of you haven't pressed the like button over on YouTube, just go YouTube, just go to the live stream on YouTube, you can just click on the screen, and I would love to have you press the like button. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please, please consider. It would mean the world to me. I'm trying to make a cool ass shit, okay? And the subscribers, the, the subscribers, they help a lot. And the likels, the likels help a lot too. We got to talk, we got a drama mama to do today. You know, <sighs> we got a drama mama to do today. Also, I look weirdly like low because we had to raise the camera a little bit. It's a little strange, but we're going to fix it. Um, I'm actually thinking of stopping mirroring it. Oh my God. It's going to be so disorienting for a little bit. I'm thinking of changing, of putting the camera over here and the light over here and then not mirroring. It will just naturally be me looking to the left. Won't that be weird? It'll be cool, but also weird. And you'll be able to read things that are in the background. There's a reason for this. It has to do with the tournament. Okay? Also, oh god, no look, I've been doing it. Yeah, see? Thanks, Grime Dango. Grime Dango, you just, we just spent the whole, I just spent an entire hour gushing about what we were working on, what we've been brainstorming about. You're also here for like five seconds. Well, thanks for being here for five seconds. I appreciate that. Change is good, everybody. Change is good, okay? Change is exciting. It keeps you excited. It keeps you having fun. And that's why it's time to change the segment, okay? We've had our fun. We've gotten comfy and warm. Everybody's got their seats ready. We're ready to do some drama mama. Because let me tell you, it's a weird one today, okay? Shall we start? Shall we start with the drama mama theme song, everybody? I think we should start with the Drama Mama theme song. So, let me just get the Drama Mama theme song up and ready. And we'll enjoy it. And then from there, we'll go into the Drama Mama. Because I got some stuff to share with you. I got some very interesting stuff to share with you. Here we go. Let's do this. Welcome, my lovely, lovely imps, to yet another installment of Drama Mama. Here on a Drama Mama investigation, we go through and we analyze all of the receipts so that if you're out of the loop on any piece of notable internet drama that I find interesting to share with you, you can catch up. What we try to do here in Drama Mama is we try to get the most even-handed view that we possibly can for you, the viewers, so that you can make the decisions for yourself and then I will, at the very end, make my conclusions, which I'm always very clear are my conclusions. The goal is to inform you. So welcome, everybody, to a new Drama Mama investigation, okay? Today, we are going to be talking about a strange mystery that has been uncovered by Redditors. Now, <clears throat> you might find yourself going, well, wait a minute. Hasn't there been a lot of occasions in the past where Reddit thinks they figured something out and then it turns out they're completely wrong about everything? Resulting, yes, exactly, as Grime Dango so wisely says in chat, resulting in the we did it Reddit statement, uh, which was a reference to um, the time when Redditors framed 
the wrong person for the Boston bombing. Uh, okay, I know I'm losing you now, and I'm really sorry about that. Please don't go away. Please like and subscribe. I promise you this is going to be interesting. It's not going to be stupid. No one's going to get falsely accused of anything. And, um, and, and okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really trying to, please don't go. Please, please, I promise, okay? Um, Reddit has a bad track record of, of, of catching people for crimes. Like, really, really, really bad, okay? Um... So, I thought that this particular time um, would be an interesting opportunity for us to do a bit of a deep dive and a bit of a drama mama investigation into it. Because let me tell you, this particular story is definitely very interesting. All right? Um, yeah, we're doing a little, maybe it's a little true crime investigation, okay? It's a Reddit internet crimes investigation. This is the boom, boom. Law and Order, Reddit Crimes Division. There we go. Goo goo. What's that noise? I need. We need that fucking. We need that fucking sound. Um. So, how many people in chat? Just real quick. Can you throw up a a, a what the fuck mama emote? Um. The 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 beloved what the fuck mama emote. If you know who Jeffrey Epstein is, do you know who Jeffrey Epstein is? If you know who that guy is, please throw up a what the fuck mama. Obviously, everyone here who has not been living under a rock for the last 10 years, regardless of how much you know about everybody, you can see now every single person knows who the fuck Jeffrey Epstein is, okay? Uh, not the CEO of McDonald's. <laughs> He's the guy who definitely, definitely killed himself in a high-security prison while the guard conveniently went for a coffee break and a long dump. The only guard at a high-security prison, apparently, and he mysteriously killed himself right before he was going to testify on whether or not a bunch of American presidents and politicians had fucked children repeatedly. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Isn't that a strange occurrence of events? Very weird. Very strange. Um, yeah, very weird event. Okay. Um, and yeah, nobody, nobody gets to see the footage. You know, it's really weird. You know, it's, sick real weird um so yeah uh jeffrey epstein uh a a child trafficker um who finally got caught and then died i mean committed suicide conveniently very good friends with trump uh a donald trump once said uh let me get the exact quote i don't want to misquote anybody here um let me just read the quote out loud um Donald Trump said uh, that he hadn't spoken to Epstein in about 15 years, but the last time he talked about him, he said uh, he was a terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be with. It is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do. Many of them are on the younger side. No doubt about it, Jeffrey enjoys his social life. Yeah, nothing sus there, right? Yeah, nothing suspicious at all there. The guy who had a private island and had a almost uncountable number of child sex trafficking charges against him, kept a black book of everybody who ever pl flew on his plane, his plane, which was called legally, on the books, the Lolita Express, which went to his island, his barren island, where all of the structures were mostly underground and nobody could see anything, and it was well documented by hundreds of witnesses that young girls were constantly taken to his island. Wow. Bit wild, okay? That's a fucking, woo! What a wild, what a wild story. But today we're not actually talking. Yes, it was literally called the Lolita Express. What is Lolita? I don't get it. Lolita is a book, a, a, a piece of literature about a 40-year-old man who dates a 12-year-old girl. Dates... Uh, the story is actually uh, about a lot of things. So don't like go and try and cancel the book Lolita. Um, it's a book that talks about a lot of things. Okay? Okay? Let's not... That's why... That's why... That's why I did the quotes. Okay, please? Please? Look, please do not cancel me over literature. 
Please, for the love of God, can we get through this segment without somebody trying to slit my throat over fucking uh, what I said about a book that was written 150 fucking years ago? Go read it, okay? Go read it yourself and decide for yourself. We're not talking about that, okay? Let's just say that if you name your plane the Lolita Express and you have literal hundreds of people confessing that you were raping children and that you were allowing powerful politicians to rape children on your plane and on your secret island, let's just say it's really bad, okay? It's bad. It's a bad look. That's a yikes look, everybody, okay? For the love of God. But today we're not actually talking about Jeffrey Epstein directly. Instead, we are talking about Ghislaine Maxwell. Ghislaine Maxwell. Yes, this entire segment, I will be saying Ghislaine. If you don't like it, shut the fuck up. It's too funny to pass up. And I am going to say it the entire time because I think that's what her name looks like. And uh, it's important that we understand who the hell this person is, okay? So let's take a look. This right here is Ghislaine Maxwell, okay? Right there, okay? You have probably seen this lady's face. Ghislaine Maxwell was, let's say, I think it would be kind to, to call her Jeffrey Epstein's fixer, okay? So her job was basically to be a personal assistant specifically in the management of who went to and from Jeffrey Epstein's private child rape island, allegedly, okay? Um, and she has been involved with Jeffrey Epstein since she herself was young, just so you know. Now... Ghislaine Maxwell is a very rich and influential person. Her father was close associates of Epstein. And uh, she was set up with Epstein to do work for him pretty young. So her story is pretty complicated, okay? Pretty young, capo. That's going to be determined as the trial goes on, which isn't exactly what we're talking about here, believe it or not. Was she groomed by Epstein? I think there's a case to be made about that. Yeah, I think there's a case to be made about that. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it might come out that that is the case. Um, unfortunately, uh, this is a pretty complicated situation. Uh, so, uh, um, there's a lot of, anyway, there's a lot of very complicated aspects to this. But needless to say, regardless of Ghislaine's past, Ghislaine Maxwell was largely responsible for ensuring that there was a steady stream of minors to be abused by guests to Jeffrey Epstein's island. Okay? And, uh... We're going to talk about something that gets very weird. Right now, Ghislaine is on trial. Ghislaine Maxwell is currently on trial. And let me tell you, that trial could be a segment in and of itself, which I might do next week, depending on how much stuff goes. The thing is, I, I, really, I really don't like covering live trials because uh, there's, so much, um, there's so much that you can get wrong, okay? Um... There's so much you can get wrong when you're covering a live trial. But if more solid information starts to arise as the trial goes on, I would like to do coverage on it because I do think it's important. Keep in mind, the first people who were named, some of the first people who were named in this trial, Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, okay? Fucking, um, what's his name? House of Cards guy. Why am I blanking on his name? House of Cards guy. House of Cards guy. Spacey. Kevin Spacey and Prince Andrew. So a prince of the royal family to a, a, a former president, another former president, 
and one of the most influential um, actors. I will put up some content warnings now that we're getting into it because it's going to get weird. Okay, it is going to get weird. Here we go. We'll put up the CW right now. Okay, content warning going forward. We are going to have uh, talks about all of this. Okay. It seems to double up when I transition between scenes. Is that possible? Oh, it is. That's very weird. Why? That's really weird. I don't know why it's doing that. That's weird. Different delay. That's very strange. I'm going to have to look into that. Bill Gates was on the plane. I don't know if he was implicated yet. Um, that's a bit trippy. I'll try and fix that for next stream. We'll try and avoid it for this stream for the most part. Um, yeah, that's a little bit strange. I can see that a track pops up, but it looks like it's supposed to be a hidden track. So I don't know which track is, is popping up at that moment. It's very strange. Whatever. Let's continue with this. Okay. Um, it's a secret meme. I'm going to have to go look into it and see what's going on. That's a bit strange to me. Um, it's a scene change. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's... It's, it looks like it's a software issue. We'll have to try and figure that out. I'll, I'll be able to fix it in the future. Um, that has to do with OBS. So, this was a lot of preamble, wasn't it, for this drama mama? Um, I've had to put a lot of preamble into this. Uh... And the reason for that is because what we're actually looking into today is a very, very weird bit of all of this, which is that it appears that Ghislaine Maxwell might have been one of the most important Redditors in the history of Reddit, and nobody knew. Like, unironically. I'm, I'm not kidding you. And we're going to look into it. And now, so far, to my knowledge, this has not been confirmed. I don't know if it could ever be confirmed. However, it is nonetheless incredibly, incredibly interesting. And we're going to go through and follow all of the uh the de the details and evidence that has been pulled together by the redditors and then we're going to talk about it because honestly that's a pretty big story um reddit is a huge social media site even though i fucking hate it it's a huge social media site and the fact that one of the most influential users of all time may have literally been using that as a piece of her attempts to perpetuate mass child abuse is pretty fucking bad. That's pretty concerning. And it also touches on something that, that is a recurring theme on my own channel, which is that social media is the real world now, okay? It isn't literally the real world. What happens on social media isn't always true, but that social media has become such an enormous part of our lives that there's no way, you can't just downplay what happens on social media anymore. We shouldn't have. Obviously, Gamergate is a great example of that. But the reality is that these social media sites have become so ingrained in our society that even presidents and massive, massive, uh, what do I want to call this? A conspiracy to commit, I mean, a, a literal conspiracy of a small group of people who were using, uh, blackmail and, and, uh, and, uh, connections in order to perpetuate, uh, abuse. It's very interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into this. Now that you know approximately, you know a little bit about who Ghislaine Maxwell is, you know, we, we, we know who Jeffrey Epstein is, we're going to dive into this, okay? Misinfo and reality tunnels are always a problem. Yes, they are, but we're, we, we live, but we've never lived 
in an era with the internet before. The internet completely changes everything we know about like all of this type of misinformation stuff because information can transmit like that instantaneously. So yeah. Now, before we get into the heavy stuff, please, if you're here and watching, subscribe to my channel, press the bell, and like, okay? Because uh, I do a lot of hard work for this channel, and I love that. And we have 312 viewers, but 200-something uh, likes, so I'd like to have those likes before we go any further, okay? The essay log off can't be done. We've talked about that, and we will talk about that again for sure, though not right now. Let's do this, everybody. This is the thread, okay? We're going to have to shrink down over here. We're going to have to shrink down the chat just a tiny, tiny bit so that we can make sure that we can read it nice and easily, okay? We're going to shrink down chat, make you guys nice and small, tiny little imps, okay? Tiny, tiny imps, okay? So this thread has been going for five months, okay? It's been going for quite a while. However, recently... It was edited and and exploded in popularity because of how much information has come out as the process of the trial has gone on, okay? Now, you can see there are multiple threads that are currently uh, following all of this. The conspiracy thub subreddits love the Epstein topic, okay? However, sometimes... Those people who are passionate about conspiracies are actually relatively good at research. Usually, it's the people who are more interested at how conspiracies are formed, the people who are analyzing the conspiracies, who actually do a good job figuring that shit out. And so here, we're going to go through this, and we're going to see if there's any grounds to what they're saying. And let me tell you, there are grounds to it, okay? This is... This is a very weird event. And we're going to see just how much there is, okay? Let's get into it. Today is the one-year anniversary of Ghislaine Maxwell's arrest and the last day that you, Maxwell Hill, posted on Reddit. Let's review the evidence that you, Maxwell Hill, was Ghislaine Maxwell's account. Here's the original post with the evidence of you, Maxwell Hill, being Ghislaine Maxwell. The post was featured in an article by the Daily Mail. I have edited this post for corrections, readability, broken links, and included more research. I am now certain that the account was operated by Ghislaine Maxwell. I might want to clarify that our conspiracy is a cesspit. Yes, conspiracy theory communities are a cesspit. This particular conspiracy, this post, is very interesting. And like I said, we're going to look into it and see where the holes lie and where the truths might lie. Yeah? That makes sense? Because, guess what? Let me tell you something. On this particular issue... This, uh, this particular issue of, of, um, of, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, we're talking about a real, um, a real conspiracy, right? Okay? So, I guess before we should go further, let's talk about, like, what makes a conspiracy theory and conspiratorial thinking versus an actual, literal conspiracy, right? So... When we think of conspiracy theories, a lot of people immediately think of like UFOs, the fake faking the moon landing, Bush did 9-11, um, and that sort of thing. But it's funny because some things which used to be considered conspiracy theories have indeed been proven to be true. For example, um, MK Ultra was once considered a conspiracy theory in a whole cloth. And yet it turned out that actually, while there was indeed a lot of made-up stuff about MK Ultra, MK Ultra actually existed and was, yes, I know, oh, I know exactly what chart. Yes, we're going to talk about this. 
Yes, precisely. Thank you so much, Vermin. I was just about to talk about this. MK Ultra is a basically perfect example of this, where MK Ultra, there was literal things that went on. And it turns out that a lot of the conspiracy theory people were getting at true things while still embellishing other aspects. Um, and MK Ultra was dis was a a incredibly unethical action taken undertaken by the by the uh, U.S. government. Actually fucked. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, MK Ultra produced Ted Kaczynski, who pr who went on to become the Unabomber. It's very, very, very fucked. Recently, on this channel, we read the story of how the FBI created a terrorist and then imprisoned him, a guy who would have otherwise not been a terrorist, but secret FBI informants. There were so many informants informing on other informants that they actually created, out of thin air, a terrorist attack that a guy that they were trying to follow, who was innocent, got wrapped up into... And then end up literally he was so incompetent the attack failed because he intentionally failed the attack and they still arrested him we talked about this on an earlier stream it is very fucked okay this shit is very fucked so when we're talking about things like this it is important to not to simultaneously be a skeptic and also recognize that uh, genuine conspiracies do exist and it is important to begin to uh think about how you can how you can parse evidence and truth in order to come to more reasonable positions so real quick let's look at this chart okay we're gonna look at this little chart together oops here we go okay grounded in reality this is a really awesome chart i love this chart We've, we've shown this chart on stream a couple of times. We're going to go through it right now. This is the conspiracy chart upgraded for 2021. Okay? So down at the bottom, things that actually happened. COINTELPRO, big tobacco mass lying about cancer. NSA mass surveillance, big oil pushed climate disinfo, Watergate, FBI spying on Martin Luther King, the Tuskegee experiments, Project Mockingbird, Operation Paperclip, Naira testimony, Free Britney, MK Ultra. There was a time where people believed that Britney Spears being abused by her father was a conspiracy theory. Okay? Now, keep in mind that most of these were at one point considered the area of absurd internet der deranged people. You know? So, uh, we have to be very careful about how we handle conspiracy theories. And we have to be careful that we uh, look deeply into the evidence, which is why we're doing this as a drama mama investigation. See? See, look at that, everybody. Demon mama teaches you, even when we're having fun. I'm trying to help you understand how you can parse stories better. All right, let's continue. So from the things that actually happened to the speculation line, you cross the speculation line into we have questions. JFK assassination, Charles Manson being a CIA asset. We live in a simulation. Jimmy Hoffa's disappearance, the Denver International Airport, Iran-Contra, Area 51, Epstein didn't kill himself, UFOs. As you can tell, we don't have good evidence. You can't prove that Epstein didn't kill himself. It is basically impossible. I Iran Contra. The, okay, the reason why Iran Contra is in there is because there are aspects of Iran Contra that have not yet been sorted yet. The Iran Contra deal did happen. We we have confessions and everything, but there were aspects of it that were alleged that we don't know if they're true. So, yeah, every, they pardoned everybody, et cetera, et cetera. The Denver International Airport is a very weird thing. There is a bunch of, uh, there seems to be, I, look, I haven't done all the research necessary onto this, but with regard to the Denver International Airport, there appears to be some kind of, um, like, nepotism 
and some weird shit going on with the design of the airport that people are very dodgy about, okay? Yeah, the big demonic horse, a lot of the Masonic imagery, it appears to be that there is some level of, like, uh, nepotism or maybe, uh, you know, some people doing back, back alley deals and stuff like that. Um, it's just a very weird airport. Um, yeah. So, uh, there's a whole lot of these. Obviously, there were a whole bunch of questions about the JFK assassination that still exist to this day. Um, there were unanswered questions about the JFK assassination. There were a ton of unanswered questions about Area 51. The, uh, recently, more, uh, UFO videos were, uh, confirmed by the United States military and the CIA, which is very weird because they don't know what they are. And these were, th there were UFO videos that have been talked about by UFO experts for some time that are now confirmed to be real. Um, and, uh, so there's questions about UFOs, what they are, are they aliens? Probably not. Maybe could be stranger things have happened. Okay. But, uh, why is 51 on the, on the, we have questions. Don't, don't we know that it's a testing ground for experimental planes? Yeah, but we don't know to what degree we don't know how far, uh, testing has gone in area 51 and we don't really know what goes on there anymore. Yeah. It's probably not aliens, but it is very strange. Um, most of them are ducks. Nah, I don't think they're ducks. Um, the, a lot of the things that we've seen are very difficult to explain and are maybe weather phenomenon, but we don't know. So, uh, wasn't Iran Contra real? Yes, it was, but there are aspects of Iran Contra that have not been determined. Is so. Let's not let's not get hung up on the details, everybody. Okay, let's not. So now we are entering the leaving reality unequivocally false but mostly harmless elvis lives the united states is a giant corporation stevie wonder isn't actually blind um greta greta thunberg is a time traveler avril lavigne was replaced with a fake michael jackson is secretly still alive mattress firm money laundering scheme the alien abductions ted cruz being the zodiac killer prince charles being a vampire tupac secretly being alive in serbia kylie jenner being a clone uh, the Titanic never sinking. These ones are like false, but as you can see, they're mostly harmless. They're fun conspiracy. They're like kind of fun conspiracy Cry cryptids. The big one is cryptids. I love cryptids. And the reason why I think cryptids are super fun is because they're, they're animals that people are interested in going and looking for. They don't really hurt anybody. They're not secret. They're not tied into some sort of like accusations of pedophilia, et cetera, et cetera. I think cryptids are cool. So this is a thing where it's like, okay, most of the cryptids are obviously fake, but we can enjoy, um, we can enjoy that there's some nonsense there. Yeah, Nessie got canceled for sus discord logs. Yeah. Okay. Then we cross the reality denial line dangerous to yourself and others tartaria i don't even know that one antifa did january 6th not only is this incorrect but also is a lie rfid tracking devices in bras this is not true there aren't rfid tra tracking devices in bras and people panic and become paranoid about that it's harmful vaccines having microchips harmful uh pandemic wayfaring wayfair trafficking essential oils uh ancient giant trees faked moon landing ivermectin global warming the iraqi dinar scam 5g being toxic soy boys biden is a robot chemtrails um oh oops sorry here i'll move this down oops here let me move this down here we go we're back down here okay Hey, welcome, welcome, Surf's Raiders. Please come in and get comfortable. My my lovely, lovely Raiders from the Surf's, welcome. We are uh, about to dive into a very, very strange internet rabbit hole. And we're doing a uh, perhaps a bit long-winded, um, a long-winded preamble so that we can discuss the importance to discern between conspiratorial thinking and curiosity and genuine skepticism, okay? Um, we 
uh, are very, very happy to have you. Please, if you just arrived, consider um, coming over to my website and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Okay, I'm going to put it down here. Check in the chat. Um, my YouTube channel is my primary, uh, place of doing things. Oh, no, it didn't work. Uh, it's this. Hold on, hold on. Why is this... There we go. Bam. You can follow that link right there. And if you, um... Click that link. Please subscribe. I would, uh, I would love to have you join my, my YouTube channel. Uh, my website, demonmama.com, uh, is super great. You can sign in for free through YouTube, Twitch, whatever, and you get all of our emotes. So this chat right here that you see is my website. Thank you for being here. I know you're going to have a fun time. Drama Mama, for those of you who are new from the surfs and don't know, Drama Mama is where I pick a big piece of internet drama and I dive in super deep and we get all the receipts and we have a big conversation about it. It's super fun. Super fun. So please consider staying and hanging out. I promise you, you're going to have a great time. So thank you for being here, surfs. Thank you so much for the raid. Very, very happy to have you all here. Again, demonmama.com forward slash live if you want to join us on the website. And uh, otherwise, just, uh, yeah, oh yeah, it's just like the Surf's website. Yep, same function. It's sick. Our bot is busted, don't know why. Um, but yeah, if you come to the website, you get free emotes. And we have a bunch of them. Everybody post your cute favorite emotes, okay? And then we'll get back to the show. Um, hey, Fawn, will you refill my drink? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mountain Dew would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, no, I was like that too, Wolfie Universe. Oh, sick. I'll check him out as soon as I can. What, what's up with the feral people living in the reality line? Uh, what about tribes in Papua New Guinea? This is specifically... Oh, okay. So let's go back to the... Let's go back to the thing. Okay? The uh, feral people in the forests thing is like... Um, is like saying that there's like... Um, in, in America that there's a bunch of like secret societies of feral feral people living in the forests who like um, go underground into the donut earth um okay I'll have to read that article that's kind of cool this conspiracy theory shit I want to do more conspiracy theory shit because it's super super interesting um the believers in the Tat Tataria conspiracy theory are convinced that the elaborate temporary fairgrounds built for events like the Panama Pacific International Exposition in San Francisco were really ancient capital cities of a fictional empire. Okay. Um, did I change my background? I've changed it quite a lot. Yes. Tataria tablets. These tablets discovered in 1961 in a Neolithic site in the village of Tataria in Romania. What the fuck? Like, these even look fake. Like, look at this. This shit even looks fake. Come on. Ancient, ancient people did better tablets than this. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. Let's continue, okay? Let's continue, all right? Here we go. The anti-Semitic point of no return. Here we go. Detached from reality. QAnon. Deep State. Flat Earth. Protocols of the Elders of, Vi of, of Zion. Illuminati. Reptilian Overlords. Adrenochrome. Holocaust Denial. Sandy Hook Fake. George Soros. Secret Satanic Rituals. New World Order. The Trans Agenda. Nazis on the Moon. Hollow Earth. Pizzagate. George Floyd Crisis Actor. Jewish Space Lasers. Hollywood is Turning Your Kids Gay. Nasara. Bill Gates Depopulation. Uh, Rothschild Central Banking. Cultural Marxism. All of these, the world is ruled by a supreme shadow elite. This promotes hatred and violence towards marginalized groups. Okay? Okay? So this is the chart. Do you see what I mean? It starts from stuff that's like actual conspiracies that you have now, that you can actually go and investigate yourself. And it progresses into a level of, of, of complete and utter conspiratorial thinking that is beyond above and beyond um like basically anything that you can you can re reason your way through if you're talking to somebody and they're bringing up one of these 
the chances are they believe most of these, okay? Like, uh, this whole shit, the hollow earth is over here. Uh, great replacement is up here. The deep state is up here. Um, I have seen hollow earth. I've seen both hollow and concave earth. They're both basically the same thing. Um, hey, Deepor Magna with the incredibly, incredibly generous, uh, prime sub. Thank you so much. I am indeed unbanned from Twitch, which feels great. Um, yeah, so these are huge conspiracies with basically, with with no evidence, no meaningful evidence whatsoever that are used to promote hate. And you'll notice it accelerates pretty fast, right? You start by going, oh yeah, what the fuck? MK Ultra was so fucked up. The Tuskegee experiments were so fucked up. Big Oil is literally boiling the planet by using their money and influence to push climate disinfo. But you'll notice something which is that at each level, there is less and less plausible evidence and less and less attempts at meaningfully substantiating the claims being made. Does that make sense? If everyone is listening here, you'll notice that each step you go up this ladder is a, is a further distancing from rigorous investigation. And that is why I think this is such an interesting conspiracy for us to dive into. Because it's about Reddit, which isn't the most impactful thing on the entire planet, but nonetheless does have impacts and we can dig in and go and find evidence right away for ourselves, which is important. See, there's all this talk right now about how we live in like a post-truth world, you know? And it's kind of true to a certain degree. The acceleration of information sharing is so fast that misinformation and explicit disinformation um, can spread in incredibly, incredibly fast. However, however, as it turns out, the same tactics that were used in the past to challenge disinformation are still effective now, which is rational skepticism, asking good questions, looking for evidence, and applying scrutiny to the evidence, okay? And of course, you are always going to reach areas where you may not be able to prove everything, right? Um, sometimes people get away with crimes. Sometimes people get away with conspiracies, but there are a couple of rules of thumb. For example, the broader the conspiracy, the less likely the conspiracy is to be true. And the reason for that is because every single time you add another member to the conspiracy, you have another potential leak, right? That's why when you look at a lot of these, these conspiracies were uh, undertaken via very, very, very complicated structures. Let's take an example real quick. Oh, Val 9 Thou, I'll go check it. I don't know why that didn't happen. That's so weird. I missed it myself. I'll check real quick, Val 9 Thou. Sorry about that. Give me just a minute here. Actually, we'll do the, I'll do that dono at the end. Remind me at the end of the segment. I don't want to get off topic too much more. Okay, let's look at this chart. And I'll, I promise I'll get to it. Just remind me. Thank you very, very much. Um, so look at this. NSA mass surveillance. Ha so the reason we know about NSA mass surveillance is because of a leaker, Edward Snowden. Edwards, Edward Snowden leaked uh, information that the NSA was was spying on people illegally. He was one of the people involved in the conspiracy and he blew the whistle. So the more people that get involved, the more likely that somebody is going to have a crisis of conscience and release the information about the conspiracy. Big Tobacco lied about cancer. Well, there were a lot of people involved in this, but the reason we know it's false is because the only way they were able to lie about cancer was by basically bribing scientists and eventually certain scientists refused to take the bribes so they were able to do a lot of damage but they weren't able to keep the conspiracy under wraps because there were a lot of people involved cointel pro cointel pro 
was later revealed because tons of people ended up being affected by it, but it was originally, COINTELPRO was originally um, done by a very small group of people within the CIA who were able to make orders without any questions being asked. Yeah, there's some really good videos of COINTELPRO out there. Um, but you'll notice that a lot of these that stayed secret for a long time, like, for example, Free Britney, Free Britney was a conspiracy involving just one person, basically. One person who was very influential, Britney Spears' father, who used his personal connections to keep Britney under control and keep the story secret because there was just basically one person who had the final say. Why are UFOs in the We Have Questions segment? Because we have a lot of questions about UFOs. Like, unironically. If you don't think that's true, true, like, wait, wait, hold on. Like, it's unironically true. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, somebody, somebody, Grimed it, absolutely. Um, Big Tobacco was a conspiracy. In the same, it is a conspiracy. Same thing as the opioid, uh, the opi opioid um, uh, epidemic is also a conspiracy. A small group of people control a, a bunch of information and those people uh, are the only ones who know the truth and and until they're exposed, because there's only a few of them, they can keep up the mask. All right. And then you'll notice as we go higher and higher up here, Things like this, essential oils cure all illnesses. Not only is there very little evidence of this being true at all, but also there are literal ways to prove that it's not true. And so this this type of conspiracy theory is maintained by, by blasting out all kinds of misinformation and claiming that Every, every single scientist in the world is lying to you about essential oils. Do you see the difference there? If you go down here, guys, let's talk about, let's talk about this one. FBI spied on MLK. A couple dozen decision makers at the FBI decided to spy on MLK and were able to keep it a secret. Okay, wait a minute. That's believable. You can have a couple dozen people keep a secret by threatening them. You can have a couple dozen people keep a secret by those dozen people believe in what they're doing. You can have a couple dozen people keep a secret like spying because it's done in secret. But you scroll up here to essential oils, you're telling me that every corporation in the world that doesn't sell essential oils, every scientist, every doctor, that the thousands upon thousands of doctors who have said essential oils literally don't do anything, chemists, um, uh, 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 physicians, uh, nutritionists, um, fucking materials researchers, all telling you essential oils cannot physically cure your illnesses. That becomes a conspiracy of un of of just irrational proportions. Why is cryptids under unequivocally false but mostly harmless harmless when dough exists? Well, I mean, yes, that's a good question. Dough, dough cryptids. Dough, dough. Uh, 8522 Derek with the $5. Thank you very, very much. This sign makes me sad because so many of these things my mom believes in and has dived into. I'm very sorry about that. I've had a, I, I have had multiple family members get lost into this shit. It's very frustrating. I'm the Edward Snowden of cryptids. It's true. I'm going to find you. All of them. Yes, each, each, each claimed party involved in a secret exponentially increases the chance that the info will get out. Okay. So that's one of the rules of thumb for conspiracy. Now, for those of you who are here now and watching, okay, we now have to return to the subject at hand, okay, which is the conspiracy we are going over today. Was Ghislaine Maxwell secretly operating one of the most influential accounts on Reddit for years? We're about to find that out, okay? Now, there's a reason why I do the build-up. The build-up is because I don't want people walking away from here 
taking everything that's posted in this thread as fact, but I want people to be able to look at the evidence, to think about it, and to analyze the plausibility of such claims and the potential importance of such claims. That's why, okay? I'm trying to be responsible. Let's go. You Maxwell Hill. Here's the user, okay? We're opening up the user right now. So this is a, a look at this person's karma points. So they their account started on March 11 in of 2006, okay? So this account has been around for 16 years. I don't know why that happened, Grime Dango. I have to figure that out. Um, 16 years, the top 1%. This person has 14 million post karma, 130,000 comment karma, a lot of shit, okay? This is a huge, huge account, been around forever. And notice this, Reddit Premium, it's a verified account. And the last post was a year ago, on June 30th, 2020, okay? Maxwell Hill was a moderator or lead moderator of many huge subs, including World News, Our Politics, and Our Technology. The user has since been removed from the Politics and Technology subs. Huh. Very strange, huh? Isn't that a really fucking weird thing? Moderator of World News, moderator of envi Our Environment, Moderator of Environment Action, a moderator of Greed, Cyber Laws, Bad Cop, No Donut, and was previously a moderator of Technology and Politics. The user is a Redditor since 2006. The first user to ever collect 1 million karma now has the 12th most link karma, 8th when the, eighth when the post ceased and is a charter member. A charter member being an, a member of Reddit that gets special treatment from Reddit because you've been around for so long. Maxwell Hill was a very active Reddit user who produced highly upvoted posts, but there has been no posting at all since the day that Gislaine Maxwell was arrested. Huh. Here is the evidence that they have so far. Posts nearly every day for 14 years up until the day of Ghislaine Maxwell's arrest. Gaps in posting line up with Maxwell's mother's death and the Kleiner Perkins party, where Ellen K. Powell reported seeing Ghislaine Maxwell and the Terra Mar Project speak, speech. So here we go. Let's look. Here we're getting it. Oh, I love these. Now we're getting into it. We'll take a look at this. Okay, we'll go to that afterwards, okay? We're going in the, the sussy ones, okay? No posting. So here's the thing. Elizabeth Maxwell died in... Oh, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Robert Maxwell... Uh, no posting between the 6th of August on in 2013 and the 9th of August after daily posting. No posts here, okay? And Elizabeth Maxwell, who was married to Ghislaine's, uh, Ghislaine's mom, died on August 7th, 2013. So between the 6th and the 9th, on the days when Ghislaine's Ma Ghislaine Maxwell's mother died, conveniently, a daily posting account named Maxwell Hill didn't post. Very, very weird, okay? That's that's very strange. Here we have another example. Here is a video uh, where uh, on October 12th, Ghislaine Maxwell was on video at a conference speaking m for multiple hours. And interestingly, there were no posts during that time when Ghislaine Maxwell was on video giving presentations and again, another gap in the posting. A daily poster for 14 years. With very few exceptions. And these are the exceptions. Here's another exception. So, 
uh, Ellen K. Powell, she was at, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell was at the Kleiner holiday party in 2011, but I had no desire to meet her, much less have a, p a photo taken with her. We knew about her supplying underage girls for sex, but I guess that was fine with the cool people who managed the tightly controlled guest list. Here's who was at the party at the super exclusive Kleiner Perkins party uh, uh, on December 9th. No posting between the 7th and the 10th when we have now multiple people saying, including the CEO of Reddit, right? Ellen K. Pow is the CEO of Reddit, if I remember correctly. Current CEO, wait, let's see. Yeah, CEO for the social media company, Reddit. So is she not anymore? No, she currently is, right? No, former CEO, no longer. And look at this. Here we have it. She stopped working for Kleiner Perkins in 2012, which was a year after she claimed to see Ghislaine Maxwell at the Kleiner Perkins event in 2011. Huh. Very strange. Let's continue. So gaps in the posting lines up with three major events. The user claims to be born in December and Wikipedia shows that Maxwell, that Ghislaine Maxwell was born on the 25th. Somebody says winter doesn't start until December 21st, at which point Maxwell Hill states their birthday is after December 21st. So let's see. Here we go. I guess I am doomed. Born in December. Well, with that attitude... I know, but this is the wee bit worrying. In humans, studies conducted in the northern and southern hemispheres have confirmed that it's the season of winter, not the birth month, that leads to increased risk of schizophrenia. But winter doesn't officially start until the 21st. Maxwell Hill responds, doesn't help. It's past that date. Uh, and Ghislaine Maxwell, birthday, according to Wikipedia, is the 25th of December. Weird. Okay, so let's continue. Post articles about why we should legalize child exploitation material. This is a post seven years ago by Maxwell Hill, allegedly, secretly, Ghislaine Maxwell, Falkvinge, Three strong reasons child porn must be re-legalized in the coming decade. Okay. And I have seen, and by the way, I've seen this actual post. This is a real post, yes. I believe it's linked below. Hmm. Gripes about overzealous child protection laws. Here we go. Girl steps in front of a man's car. He grabs her arm and lectures her about traffic safety. He is now a convicted sex offender. The message is, this is Maxwell Hill again, 13 years ago. The message is clear here. We leave those kids alone lest you feel the wrath of the law. I feel we're taking one step forward and two steps back. On the one hand, we wish to protect the children from the grimy hands of pedophiles and febophiles. And on the other hand, the law... Uh, as we interpret by the lovely magistrate judge, inform those with good intent to stay clear of the same children we wish to nurture and citizens, do we really want us to head down this path? Now, this doesn't mean anything to me. This comment is a little sussy, maybe, but I don't really think this means anything. I don't think this is, is convincing evidence. Discusses age of consent in various countries here and here. Out of curiosity, do you or anyone know which other American states, apart from New Hampshire, as stated by the author, still entertain these laws that allow 13-year-olds to marry? Uh, site is verified cons age of consent. Here's some various information about the charts. Great. Thanks, Unit Mike. A quick browse for the U.S. shows that for Ohio and New Hampshire, the age of consent is 13 years, whereas for Iowa and West Virginia, it may be as low as 12 years. I may be wrong in my interpretation of different conditions. Hmm. It is weird that there's an out... I will say I agree with you, Cotton D-Pad. It's very strange that there's that out-of-context distinction. It is a weird flag, yeah. 
child refugees sexually abused by Italian men after picking up while sleep while after being picked up while sleeping homeless in parks. Charities warn that countless child asylum seekers are being abused. Um, here we go. Hermaeus Hale, a 16-year-old from Etrea, has been sleeping on a building site with his friends since they arrived on the island after making a treacherous voyage from Livia. Er Hermaeus and friends told Sky News an Italian man had sexually abused them after buying them drinks and offering them shelter. He finds us a place like this in the park and invites us to a bar, lets us drink beer, etc. Uh, we start drinking, then he touches us. After we leave the house, he calls us and gives us money. Um, the smacks of pedophilia. So what are the Italian authorities doing about this? Never mind. I stand corrected. That's the wrong term and the age of consent is 14. Mm. Okay. Neither of these are amazingly convincing, but, um, but yeah, I don't think either of those are super convincing. Here we go. Moderator of both our environment and a small subreddit environment action has many, many posts about ocean protection. And, of course, Ghislaine Maxwell is heavily involved with the Terramar Project. The Terramar Project. Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein's company, Terramar, is tied to the global elites. This was Epstein and Ghislaine's company that was about o uh, ocean preservation. Hmm. Very strange. Now, that is a true thing. That, that that project is indeed true. Now, is that convincing evidence that somebody who might be Ghislaine Maxwell also talks about um, ocean protection? Uh, it's tenuous, but it's something. It's a little bit loose. Maxwell Hill could be a combination of her surname and the family estate in the UK. Headington Hill Hall. Headington Hill Hall stands on Headington Hill in the east of Oxford, England. It was built in 1824, and the Morell family remained in re residence for 114 years. It became home to the Pergamon Press and to the disgraced tycoon Robert Maxwell. Hmm. Now that is very weird. Snowfacen, great to see you! A good, it is, now, Pro's Renegade brings up, that is a good reason to need a boat and to be able to travel overseas without trace. But we're not necessarily deciding whether Ghislaine Maxwell was guilty of the things with Epstein. We already know that to be basically true. Um, but we, we do, uh, we do want to find out as much as we can about this. This is very weird. Subsequently, the publisher Robert Maxwell, the founder of the Pergamon Press, released the building from the council for 32 years as residence and offices. He described it as the best council house in the country. Maxwell commissioned a stained glass window depicting Samson at the gates of Gaza by Israeli sculptor uh, Nehemia Azaz for the imperial staircase. So this is indeed, this is indeed her family mansion, one of her family mansions. Yeah, little weird. Okay, weird, but nothing confirmed. Account spams strictly liberal propaganda, but doesn't seem to have ever mentioned anything Epstein related. Now that is kind of weird. If you are the, if you are a daily poster on politics and you've never mentioned anything Epstein related, that doesn't say anything, but that is very sus, okay? That is circumstantially as sus as fuck. What is the likelihood that you are a daily Reddit poster, a a lead moderator, and one of the one of the major posters that keeps the politics subreddit going and you've never talked about Epstein once? A liberal that hasn't mentioned Epstein. That is w very sus. And it's funny because that's not hard evidence. But that is a piece of circumstantial evidence that makes my brain go, whoa, okay, that's a little bit weird. A standard, wait, a standard Redditor will probably post about Epstein. Do you know how much Reddit talks about Epstein? They love that joke. They love that shit. It's absurd. It's very sus. I find that really sus, okay? User is not another person from Malaysia as world news mods have said here and here. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. 
I am a moderator at World News, and I can say without a doubt that Max is not Ghislaine Maxwell. This is the most absurd thing I've ever read. His username is the name of a place in Malaysia. Try Googling before drawing insane conclusions. Hmm. Maxwell Hill is a Malaysian man. Please stop this nonsense. I mod our world news with him. Maxwell Hill is literally the name of a place in Malaysia. It's not a reference to his name. Maxwell Hill, platform Reddit. Who the hell is Maxwell Hill? Is Max a he or a she? A media pro or a high school student? A reporter, an editor, a dog? It doesn't matter. What's matter is that Max is the first person to rack up more than 1 million karma points on Reddit. A score earned... This is... Wait. <laughs> this says nothing. Okay, this is weird. The people defending her with literal nothing is also very strange. People going to bat and then having false defenses that, that, that don't pan out into anything is fucking weird. Malaysians call it Bukit Larut, not Max Hill. Let's see. Bukit Larut is a hill resort in Malaysia located in the state of Perak, Malaysia, 10 kilometers southwest from Taiping. It was established under the direction of, Bil of British colonists as a place of observation for tin mining and as a retreat for English people who were based in nearby Larut and Taiping. The area was initially named Maxwell Hill after British Malaysia and was renamed in 1979. Okay, guys, an account, an account made in made in the last 16 years is using the former colonial name uh come on for real that is so fucking weird there is no possible way that a a like a native malaysian is going to call a place that hasn't been called maxwell hill since 1979 maxwell hill that is the most sus defense ever. Like, the fuck? <sighs> okay. I find that sus, okay? Oh, let's take a look at this. We'll look at this article as we go on. Okay, thank you for that link, Thriftless Voyage. That's a good I that's a good link to have. Let's continue, shall we? Okay. Um Maxwell says she only visited uh oh. Maxwell Hill says that she only visited Malaysian countries. Maxwell Hill AMA strongly success suggests the user is British by the terminology she uses. For instance, her favorite word is bollocks and the use of a link of English colloquialisms. Ghislaine Maxwell is from England. That user claims to be male is likely an attempt to remain anonymous, which is not surprising since she was a sex trafficker and a child groomer for Epstein. Okay, true. Uh, true. The user never revealed her true identity in any interview or post, but left clues. Here we go. Maxwell Hill one what is the date on this what is the date on this can we get dates on this uh 19 teenage indian students commit suicide after software error botches uh, how do i get this i want to go to this actual link hold on this is not helpful because i don't know when this date was let's see 19 teenage it yeah fuck 19 teenage indian students commit suicide after software error hold on how do I do this? 19 teenage Indian students commit suicide. Let's see if we can find this article. Here we go. World News. Was it posted by Nir Yassi? It was posted by Nir Yassi. Here we go. This is the post. Three years ago, 2019. So this is a real post. A lot of deleted comments. 
real real post from three years ago. Let's see what they said. See what was said. Right. I believe it's the same in Southeast Asian countries, especially in Chi the Chinese in Singapore and Malaysia, where the parents are driven by some innate fear that their children might not make it in education. When I visited those countries, when I visited those countries several years ago, the school kids are enrolled into private tuition centers after schools for certain subjects. I doubt any of them have time to play with their friends. It's ultra competitive over there, particularly in Singapore. Okay, guys. That's weird. The only people who are claiming that Maxwell Hill is from Malaysia are random other moderators who didn't actually provide any evidence of it. And Maxwell Hill has a post from three years ago that says that they visit that they've only ever visited Malaysia. That is fucking weird. Yeah, I visited those countries, one of which is apparently my native home. Come on. That is the sussest shit in the fucking world. Now, are you starting to get the idea? Are you starting to see why I think this is very interesting? Are you beginning to see that? This is a weird one, isn't it, guys? This is a sussy one. I thought this would be interesting to dive into specifically because we just looked up one of these random posts and there the fucking shit is. That, it's not the best evidence, but it's evidence. And it's very weird. So let's keep going. So here's the AMA. Let's look at the AMA. Maxwell Hill. Ooh, let's see. Longtime Redditor, frequent poster, rare commenter. Uh, Maxwell Hill begin remains a bit of a mystery. This was from, this was 11 years ago, by the way. Right here, this post, a real Reddit post, a Redditor of the day post from 11 years ago. Longtime Redditor, frequent poster, but rare commenter. Maxwell Hill remains a bit of a mystery. Due to time zone differences, Maxwell Hill may not be able to answer questions immediately. Sex, male, age, 40. Relationship status. Married. I love dogs, but living in a condo makes it difficult to have one of my own. Favorite beverage. Coffee, black, no sugar. Pint of beer would be nice. Occasional whiskey. Food. Uh, none of this matters. What's your favorite word? Bollocks. In the nicest way possible, but never in front of the ladies. Uh, what is your biggest pet peeve? What general area of your country do you live in? I worked in the UK for many years before traveling, deciding to travel to countries in the Far East. Okay. Horse's mouth. Horse's mouth does not, it does, did not live, did not live or come from Malaysia. That Far East is, that is so British it hurts. The Far East is so fucking British it hurts. Nobody would have said the Far East 10 years ago. Let alone a fucking not British person. What was the best thing about 2009? Teaching English to a group of missionaries. Total number of Reddit identities you've had. One. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to the ROTD. I'm honored indeed, and I shall try my very best to answer everyone's questions. How does it feel to have the most link karma on Reddit? What do you think about recent claims of Reddit power users? Huh. Hmm. I befriended a Korean pastor and his wife where I live, and we would occasionally meet for dinner. 
One day I asked if I could teach some of his students conversational English. I didn't realize that he meant adults undergoing intensive training in Korea and abroad as missionaries for posting to other parts of the world. I thought he meant local teenagers who wanted to become more conversant in English, pronunciation, diction. So I volunteered. On my first day, I got a shock because I'm sitting around a meeting room where a dozen adults who were devout Christians with Bibles in their hands were wanting to learn English. I almost died there and then, but my pastor and friend came to the rescue. He explained the situation in Korea and my role there and how it was going to be done. Long story short, it worked out really well, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. That doesn't sound like a Malaysian Redditor, does it? Hmm. This is actually super interesting. Huh. Ah, I suppose some songs by Queen, Free Bird by Leonard Skinner during my evenings spent in UK pubs, a bit of Dire Straits, Fleetwood Mac, if you can call those harder stuff. Okay, guys, guys, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think we can confirm that the Malaysia shit is fucking bullshit, okay? All, talks about living in the UK, talks about being from the UK, visiting the Far East, go, spends a bunch of time in UK pubs. Come on. This is bullshit. We know that we know the Malaysian shit is bullshit. We, it has to be. They're very clearly not Malaysian. Come on. This user was accused of corruption, auto-deleting mentions of their own account and more. Meet the Reddit power user who helped bring down our technology. This is from the Daily Dot, okay? Maxwell Hill, one of Reddit's first and most important users, has now become the site's own worst enemy. One of the first moderators of all of default subreddit subreddits, politics and technology. By the way, this right here, what we're looking at right here, is confirmation of an earlier claim by the way look remember the conspiracy guy claimed right here about uh being the lead moderator of world news and politics and technology we now have a journalistic outlet at the time in 2014 that reported positively that maxwell hill was indeed the a moderator of politics technology and world news do you see why we get the receipts? This is why we do it, my lovely, lovely imps. This is why we do it. By the way, if you're enjoying this strange investigation, please press the like button on YouTube. Click right through, press that like button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Consider joining my Patreon or my website. I do this show for free. It will always be for free, and it is supported by viewers like you. So your engagements, your likes, your comments, uh, your monetary support, all, and your fan mail, of course, all supports me. So thank you so much, truly. Let's continue. Let's continue. Just wanted to do a little plug. I'm trying to get better about it. People are telling me to do better. Okay. Maxwell Hill joined Reddit eight years ago and immediately made sure each forum featured links to the hundreds of news stories a month. This was crucial for Reddit, whose co-founders Alexis Ohanian and Steve Huffman were eager to have people contribute to their link-sharing website. With top posts in each of these three subreddits appearing on Reddit's front page and the subreddits each new user was subscribed to when they, lined up, when they signed up, it was important for the site to look busy. I focused on building a reputation for quality links with a style of my own. I avoided pictures, jokes, and comics if at all possible. I focused on well-written articles from reputable sources, Maxwell Hill wrote on Gizmodo. I would change the title to reflect the gist of the article, but I would never editorialize it. Otherwise, I would appear biased and could alienate a general audience. Sometimes I had to make the title interesting, but I would never distort the story or be misleading. I would not comment on my own submissions either. I, straight, I stayed strictly a content provider, sticking to the platform approach I had identified early on. Posting new links was such an important task that Huffman and Ohanian created tons of fake users that they would use to submit links. 
By 2011, Maxwell Hill's diligence paid off. He was proclaimed one of the most viral people of 2011 by Gizmodo and was the first Redditor to collect more than 1 million karma points through Reddit's gamified voting system, which rewards users for providing the community with popular content and is completely useless in the real world. Uh, Maxwell Hill was an internet god. Today, he is perhaps the most reviled person on Reddit and emblematic of an antiquated moderator system that seems to be cracking under the weight of the site's growth. In the past nine months, our politics and technology have been booted from Reddit's list of default subreddits for a laundry list of issues that include controversial domain banning and most notably, moderator drama. Hi, Rapti! At the center of each kerfluffle is Maxwell Hill, who, like a British monarch has gotten fat off of years of interaction, behind-the-scenes shenanigans, and ignoring his communities. The most recent victim of Maxwell Hill's antics was our technology. For years, about half of our technology's moderators have been completely absent, forcing five Redditors to manage a community of more than 4.5 million users. Moderator responsibilities include banning user for breaking Reddit rules, removing spam, and recruiting new moderators. Two of these inactive moderators included Ohanian, who removed himself as a moderator before admitting he had hadn't been active, an active mod on any subreddits in years. With no help in sight, our technology moderators used a bot to filter out submissions containing about 50 different terms. It was the only way to stop spam from reaching the front page. While news of this banned terms began to circulate around Reddit, Maxwell Hill continued doing what he did best, submitting links, only he did it a little differently. Thanks to his senior moderator status, Maxwell Hill was able to submit a link with two of the banned terms and push it past the bot. Subscribers revolted. The community they are supposed to represent is not important to them, said the Reddit Pope, a former politics mod. The quality of their subreddits is not important to them. What is important to them is their ability to control their own content. Huh. Koopa Shell, being Epst Epstein's lackey is probably the most cushiest job you can imagine. Being Epstein's lackey means making a couple of phone calls and otherwise schmoozing with rich people and spending money. Just so you understand. Just so you know. Okay? Uh-oh. Here's where it gets very weird. Obviously aware of the cries of censorship from the Ars Technology community, Maxwell Hill began approving and removing moderators at a rapid pace in an apparent effort to calm the brewing storm and strip other mods of their permissions. One of the Redditors Maxwell Hill added Thursday was Ann Utensil, a controversial world news moderator and former politics mod who has been described as a poisonous rot that makes any team operate in a negative environment. Oof. Maxwell Hill and Ann Utensil are on one end of the moderation philosophy spectrum, and the Reddit Pope are on the opposite end. Pharnaces 2, a new moderator of technology, told the Daily Dot, this resulted in internal turmoil as both sides attempted to implement their policies and maintain the status quo in their favor. By Friday, Reddit administrators were fed up, having seen similar drama on our politics last summer under the tutelage of the exact same two moderators, Maxwell Hill and Ann Utensil, our technology was removed from the default list. Hi mods, the past few days have not been your finest hour. We feel that your focus has shifted from moderating your community to squabbling over who is added to the mod list. We've come to the conclusion that you are no longer effectively managing your community or moderating the subreddit, and we have decided to remove you from the defaults. Oof. Today, Maxwell Hill turned the entire subreddit into a total shitstorm. David Rice 666 com uh, commented on Thursday, Don't worry about me. I'm a big boy. I can take a little disagreement with people. But in this case, there wasn't even disagreement. They refused to talk about anything at all. No discussion of any kind took place. Just Maxwell Hill and his quest to get our technology punished by the admins. He got it right across the face. He didn't even see it coming. That I'm sure of. To date, Maxwell has never publicly broken his silence regarding the R-Technology or R-Politics drama. His last Reddit comment was made on December 26th. It's been about a week since he posted his last link, a strange sign for someone who has posted at least six times a day for years. What the fuck? In December, Reddit administrators quietly introduced a new rule prohibiting Redditors from moderating more than three default subreddits. Administrators did not provide an official explanation. Maxwell Hill and Ann Utensil are still technology moderators. Farnassies 2 was added as a mod Thursday and has begun fixing issues. We've ha I've had the displeasure of being witness to the senseless damage caused by a moderation team led by individuals who struggle with teamwork and honest communication. 
The power plays and dysfunction of the top mods in our technology recently and in the past serves as a bad example for mo all moderators. Ooh, hey, here we go. Is there more? There is no communication. There is no communication from an utensil before she moved mods, after she removed them, or after her removal. She seems to believe she doesn't have to talk to fellow mods at all. Hmm. Very weird. Okay, let's continue where we were. Yeah. Here we go. User was accused of corruption, auto-deleting mentions of their own account. So this is the one we just read. A Gizmodo article on the user, the story of the most successful man slash woman slash question, question, question on Reddit. A couple of weeks ago, Matt Hunan wrote about the most viral people on the internet. At the top of that list was Maxwell Hill, the first and only Reddit user to achieve 1 million link karma points. Hmm. Person says that you will still see Maxwell Hill's threads even if you block them. This user is the true conspiracy of Reddit. He's like he has a swarm of likes following any post and a demon army to refute any dislikes. It is impossible to block this person completely. This account is at the crux of the propaganda and BS of Reddit. You it is you cannot block DB Wax Maxwell Hill. This is the true conspiracy of Reddit. He has a swarm of likes following. I I can see the option to block this user. I did already, and yet I still see their posts in all my threads. Yeah, you're right. I tried blocking, but I still see all their posts and comments. Huh. Very weird. More research. User account was scrubbed of pedophile references after discovery. Oh, boy. Here we go. Jislaine Maxwell's Reddit account I posted about is now being scrubbed of all pedophile references. I posted investigative research showing Jislaine Maxwell was a longtime Redditor curating content at World News, one of the most widely viewed news sites in the world. Anons were up all night scouring and archiving the entire account history of you, Maxwell Hill. There's some threads here. It didn't take Anons long to find this comment, which is a link to a neural brain mapping art article published in 2016 titled Evidence for Superior Neurobiological and Behavioral Inhibitory Controls in Non-Offending as Appared to Offending Pedophiles. And Anon reported the comment for containing a link that was deleted in real time. They're deleting her comments regarding pedophilia live as we speak. This literally got deleted when I refreshed the page. I have not confirmed Reddit scrub, uh, scrubbed the three-year-old comment in the Anon screen, screen cap. However, I typed the link posted to see what it was and got a 404 error. I found the page was archived by the Wayback Machine, including a capture a few days after um, uh, this other user posted it uh, in 2016. But when I tried to view, view the page, I got an error that said access to the Wiley Online Library has been temporarily suspended. I was able to find the article by removing the abstract. Another Anon found a 13-year-old thread titled Ephebophilia in, in It's Today's Word and It Matters, where Maxwell Hill discusses age of consent laws by state. This was posted the year she joined Reddit and, according to her lawyer, stopped working for Epstein. Here's a real winner. She posted to World News titled Falk Vinge, Three Strong Reasons Child Porn Must Be Legalized. Here's the article that was linked. The significance of these fines. A lot more digging to do. Uh, her entire account was archived with the deletes. Very strange. No, no, no. Listen, it's not a matter of getting the Wayback Machine down. Um, there's... If you break a link in a certain way, it sometimes breaks Wayback Machine. Wayback Machine is not perfect, guys. It's not perfect, okay? Here we go. Breaks in Ma Okay, so Maxwell Hill was a key player on Reddit when it was purchased by the known Epstein associate... Con uh, at Condé Nast. Here we go. This was, let's see here. Let's read about this, shall we? Maxwell Hill, Jason Kalkanis, Condé Nast, and Reddit Connections. Here's something that might be interesting. Maxwell Hill created the, their account in 2016, in, in, sorry, in 2006, 
And in the Gizmodo interview, they mentioned the Reddit founders by name. They also mentioned Jason Calcanis. Apparently, Calcanis created a Reddit competitor and poached the top five Reddit posters. Maxwell Hill was not selected. They say that that venture didn't work out and that Calcanis went on to form a new company. It's worth noting that Calcanis is in Epstein's black book. He was somewhat well-known at the time in the startup founder circles, but Maxwell Hill seems close enough to follow him closely. Reddit then sold to Condé Nast in 2006, roughly seven months after Maxwell Hill created their account. Condé Nast are the owners of Vanity Fair. Yes, we all know this. Vanity Fair published their infamous article, The Talented Mr. Epstein, in 2003, notable because Condé Nast execs interfered with the content of the already puffy article to put Epstein in an even better light. Here's some discussing from this sub. So what the hell does this even mean? Maxwell Hill was a key player on Reddit when it was purchased by the known Epstein associates at Condé Nast. Another known Epstein guy, Jason Calcanis, saw Reddit take off and tried to compete around the same time. Epstein's network was very clued into Reddit. That's the evidence that's shown. They actually acquired it. It's even possible that Maxwell Hill helped broker the deal. There's no evidence of that. This, there's no evidence of this whatsoever. Timing and direct mention of Epstein Associates by Maxwell Hill leads me, lends me lends credence to this possibly being Ghislaine Maxwell's account. Okay. This this is too far right here. This line right here is conspiracy. Is is there's no evidence for this. But that is very strange. Okay. Let's keep going. Breaks in Maxwell's posting history on Reddit lines up with the disappearance of Madeline McCann. Let's look out. Let's see. Breaks in U. Maxwell's posting history on Let It right, lines up with the disappearance of Madeline McCann. There was also a four to five day around the time that Epstein killed himself. Oh, come on. The account has a five day gap around when Epstein killed himself? Oh. Literally. Oh, come on. I don't know what this means. I don't know enough about this particular story. That is very strange. But I don't know that this is anything. Maxwell Hill gets a personal mes mention from Alex Ohanian in this post. Let's take a look. Maxwell Hill just became the first Redditor to hit 1 million karma. Congratulations, Max. A post by Ann Utensil. And here we go. Whoa, I certainly never expected this six years ago when Steve and I launched Reddit. Thanks for sticking with us for the, the nearly the entire ride, Maxwell Hill, and rocking in the process. Congrats on being our first million upvote uh, Redditor. Okay. Okay. Scrape of deleted... Okay. So comment and post archives. Revet it. I don't know what revet it is. Ah, okay. So this lets you reveal what was removed. Okay. So this is posts that were removed by this person. Post by Maxwell Hill. I don't... This would be useful to somebody who wants to dig even deeper. Scrape of deleted and removed comments. Oh, somebody would... I can't, I can't scrape like this. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. That's why I said I didn't know. Yeah, that's why I didn't... I didn't... I didn't... That's what I said. That Aaron Schwartz isn't mentioned as a founder on Reddit due, due to some of these posts. Like, isn't... Is, like, this isn't part of the conspiracy, but just, yeah. I don't know. Somebody who knows how to do these scrapes can, can look at this shit. This is nerd shit. This is above and beyond my head. I can't do this. Um, user analysis. Let's take a look. Reddit you analyze a Reddit user. Ooh, this could be an interesting tool. Let's see what this t tool brings up for us. Is it going to load? I guess we got to wait. 
Holy fuck. But it's only able to analyze a thousand submissions. Yes, I'm very glad, Gayfesh. I've been thinking on it. Holy fuck. Trump president news article money FTA people world report Mueller HSBC China comment activity over time comment karma this is interesting the best comment Gates I've been disproportionately rewarded for the work I've done the Microsoft founder and philanthropist said in a blog post titled what am i thinking about this new year's eve the rich should pay more than they currently do and that includes melinda and me gates added referring to his wife and co-founder bravo to gates how refreshing to hear that i believe warren buffett shares the same views on taxation wasn't uh mm, listen wasn't uh wasn't gates on the uh lolita express yep. wasn't gates on the black book Let's keep going. A possible alternative account. Ann Utensil is the moderator of most of the same subs that Maxwell is moderator of and over 60 moderating positions in all. Most posts are submits that are very similar to Maxwell. Might be a sock puppet by Maxwell to flood her ideology into more subreddits and have more power when her moderator role is questioned. User also stopped posting after Maxwell was arrested. Guys, that is so fucked. The Daily Dot article we just read, the Daily Dot article we just read showed that Ann Utensil and Maxwell Hill were in lockstep across two separate default sub de uh, detonations. <laughs> that's really weird the fact that two power user mods both of whom were known for undermining uh the function of large subreddits and were in perfect lockstep one of whom never comments and utensil never comments barely at all and the other one which posts six days a year both using very similar term terminology that's very weird to me. That is very strange to me, okay? So let's go and let's see what the comments have for us, okay? That's pretty incriminating. It is very sus. We'll put it that way. And we'll try and put everything together at the end here, okay? This was one that I... Oh, I remember this post. Okay, listen to this. This is very interesting. Okay, this is all speculation, but it's nonetheless interesting. From the top of the post, note, due to time zone differences, Maxwell Hill may not be able to answer questions immediately. Also, because I've seen a few people mention she has said she's a 40-year-old married man, as if that proves anything that it wasn't Jis Lane, who was the user, she had been told by her dad and Epstein that this was a man's world, that she could never be heads, uh, she could never be heads of the print newspaper publications her father was in charge of. Only the sexy assistant at parties to close out huge publishing deals in New York or find young girls to ship to bank executives. She knew she wouldn't be taken seriously as a woman. This is something that has come up with Ghislaine Maxwell multiple times in the past. Um, Ghislaine, if I recall correctly, Ghislaine herself has talked about how her dad was, was like a vicious misogynist. Reddit was her last chance to be to move away from radio, TV, or print media into a new frontier. Laced with anonymity, but also the ability to silence and remove adverse posts or leaks about her political friends and elite investors. That is a very good point. This is something we have to talk about, okay? 
Assuming she only used it as a hobby even, the ability to silence, remove, and block content adverse to her and her political tech CEO friend's interests would be astounding and part of their pitch to these elites. She would have seen it like this. My father's father only cared about broadcasting. My father only cared about print media. I am on the front lines of the next big thing set to explode from 2006, all, all whilst being able to hide who I truly am. Sophia, Christina, both, thank you very, very much. Deeply appreciate that. Hmm. This is one of my favorite conspiracy theories because it's so far-fetched, but at the same time, the evidence is so particular. Imagine, I just imagine her sitting on her private jet, scrolling by new. It also made me reassess how much manipulation goes into all of the internet. It makes it easier to understand how everyone is so radically polarized. Artificial intelligence has destroyed much of human's intelligence. That is the wrong conclusion. This is conspiracy theory users, for fuck's sake. It's not AI. You converted the date of each comment of the list of deleted comments into a readable format. I don't know if there's a for if there's a pattern. 2020, 20, 20. There's a lot of deleted comments, right? That's a fucking lot of deleted comments. I wish we could know what the content was, right? It'd be sick if we could see the content. I'm sure somebody has put those posts up. The archives of those posts. Maybe we can sort by top. They're permalinks. Oh, okay, that's good. Top. This is a sticky comment. Uh, where's the next big one? I hate Reddit. Look at this. It's so stupid. Has anyone gone over the post history and seen if there was any change that might indicate... Oh, that's the time zones post. Don't forget you, uh, an utensil. An utensil is an anagram for Anne Slutty, a girl who was kidnapped when she was 17 in broad daylight and repeat... What? See, this is, con this is, cons this is conspiracy. This is why you have to be careful. You never want to become like this person. Okay, please. This is, this is why we did the thing at the beginning. This is why I did the preamble, everybody. This is why I did the preamble. Okay, fuck. This is silly. Tomorrow, 7-2 is the one-year anniversary since she was arrested on 7-2-20, and one year since Maxwell Hill went from posting six times per day to zero after 14 years. Also, Maxwell Hill and a Ann Utensil, who hadn't posted in a year, were thick as thieves. It was the first mod she placed in after her attempted takeover of technology. She was removed as a politics mod, too, so their current mod list is shorter than it once was. Both accounts were more than a decade old, heavy posters with huge amounts of karma, um, and and power mods. Complete silence since, J since Ghislaine Maxwell's arrest. Only a fool or a disinfo agent would say that these two accounts are different. I got permaban from World News for making a reference to it? Huh. All right, everybody. So that's the receipts. Let's talk about it. It's time to move into the uh, it's time to move into the uh, discussion segment, huh? Shall we? Shall we move into the discussion segment of this of this drama mama? So, everybody, how do you feel? How are we feeling? We doing okay? We doing okay? This is a lot to take in, isn't it? This is why I do drama mama by the way. If you're new to my channel today, please you this is sick isn't it we've got like 300 we've got like fucking 500 people glued to this right now because this is where you this is this is what you all have been wanting from streaming actual research actual commentary F fucking get in here subscribe jesus christ fuck i put so much work into this get the fuck over here i know i haven't even stood up i know i probably should i should probably stretch i gotta get better about doing that so don't kill myself all right, let's stretch real quick. Oh, oh my God, you saw my belly. Oh no, not my belly. Not my belly. Um. Yeah, there we go. Some stretching. Okay, there. I stood up. I I got the I got the. There we go. Ah, ah, little money. I've seen that documentary. 
I've seen that documentary. It's a sex act. Act you're under arrest. Wow, thank you. I didn't know that my tummy was so so hot. Actually, my stum my tummy is a little scarred up. I have a bunch of scars. You know, you know how my uh, you know how my uh, my first Sona has scars all over the tummy. That's because I have scars all over my tummy. So let's talk about it. Pregnancy scars, maybe, <laughs> of a type. Okay. So let's talk about this. Uh, uh, do you still smoke on stream? I actually haven't been smoking cigarettes in a couple of weeks. Um, I do want to smoke, though, but not yet. That's for the fun stuff later. I'll smoke some weed afterwards. I've been getting braver about that. Because of the gallbladder? Partially. Yeah, some of it's because of the gallbladder and other things. Um, it's all good, though. Um, you've been so engrossed that you forgot to chat. Hell yeah. I mean, this is super, super interesting. Yeah, I haven't noticed. I haven't smoked in like two plus weeks. Um, but yeah. So, so, um, did you see the clip channel of me? It's fantastic. Wait, which cl which clip channel? Uh, 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 Tragic Hero. Tragic Hero is awesome. Is that the one, or is there another one? If I have another clip channel, that's fucking poggers. But we need to actually finish this though before we get too distracted. Okay. Um, let's, let's not. Um, yeah, Tragic Hero is a god. Yeah, of course. Tragic Hero is a god. To be honest, I, the thing is, though, I never smoked cigarettes. I smoked, um, clove. I smoked clove cigars, which, um, are not good for your health, but they are, they're a lot harder to get addicted to because, uh, when you smoke a, uh, like a Marlboro... Why am I getting distracted on this? When you smoke like a Marlboro Red, there's a fuckload of nicotine in those things. Clove cigars don't have as much nicotine because they just use... They have tobacco. They're not good for you, but they don't have as much nicotine. So I don't get... Um, I, I, I'm not having any addiction cravings or anything like that. I do know who runs Tragic Hero, yes. I will probably smoke them again at some point, but yeah. But not right now. I, I try to take I try to take a break so that I never become addicted to them. Okay, that's the thing. And to be honest, I have no problem stopping. Um, the 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 smoking is just soothing. Okay, but look, I also have this now. I have my tongue that I can fuck around with in my mouth. Let's get back to business, though. Let's get let's get focused. Okay, we had our little we had our little dis distraction, our little uh thing. But we got to talk about this. Okay. We got to talk about the conclusions to be had here. And then we got another thing to talk about. And then we got some drama. So if you all want to have some fun with some petty drama after this, um, yeah. So Maxwell Hill, this is a very sus account. Most of the evidence here is very circumstantial and tenuous. However, However, there are some, there is some of the links here between Ghislaine Maxwell and Maxwell Hill that are very hard, even though they're circumstantial, they start to add up, okay? And let's talk about the most, in my opinion, the most, um, the most notable, uh, uh, pieces of evidence that are linking this. Obviously... The number one piece of evidence is the fact that both Ann Utensil and Maxwell Hill just disappeared overnight on the exact same day that Ghislaine Maxwell was arrested. And, and that both of these accounts moved in lockstep to control moderation on multiple reddits and that the posts that the posts the only breaks in the posting history were times when we know that Ghislaine Maxwell was occupied doing something else not on reddit which I find that to be very very strange that goes beyond coincidence um, and into, okay, uh, that is fucking weird. The fact that, the fact that, 
Um, the death of Jeffrey Epstein was one of the gaps that uh, the death of, of Ghislaine Maxwell's mother was another one of the gaps. Both of those are really sus. And we also have Maxwell Hill openly admitting that they were born in the last nine days of December. And we know that Ghislaine Maxwell was born on December 25th. That's also very fucking weird. And there's another thing, okay? Which is, uh, we have the birth date, which is a very weird one. And we have these very, 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 very specific empties, like empty spots that correspond with real world events that we can confirm, um, uh, that we can confirm, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell being at, oh, wait, 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 that lots of people are born in the last nine days of December. Yes. But lots of people are not born in the last nine days of December also a public figure who we know what their birth date is and also happened to ha happen to have stopped posting the same day that the person who was born in the latter half of December was arrested. It's really close. During the time she was busy, how close was the Reddit activity? We're talking like daily six times a day and then a uh, 48 hour stretch where she was at a conference confirmed at a conference IRL on video at a conference and no reddit posts and the final thing that really weirds me out okay this is the one that weirds me out the most okay Beside, uh, I mean, this is the this is the piece of like circumstantial evidence that weirds me out the most, and that is the weird the mods that were defending Gislaine Maxwell with misinformation. Isn't that that is very weird to me, like the mod disinfo that is just obviously false, is super fucking weird. Okay, like super weird. Why would any, why would a mod put, why would a mod go so far as to make a statement that specific? And then we go and look at that and it's just completely implausible. Yeah, why would they lie? Why wouldn't they just say like, this is crazy? Why would they lie so specifically? Doesn't that seem like an, like a pretty op, like a, and both of them lied about the same thing. They both lied the same lie that nobody else knows where it came from. Nowhere in these posts does does Maxwell Hill indicate being from Malaysia. It is only these two random mods who both had the exact same claim. And then they didn't provide any clarifying info and the claim that they made was absurd. And yeah, exactly, especially when psycho, exactly like what psychosocialism says over here, especially when Maxwell Hill had already given indication that they lived in the UK. Very fucking weird. That really rings a lot of red flags for me. As a piece of information, that screams, wait a minute, there's something going on here. Why would two people per say the same absurd lie when trying to publicly defend this person who they were closely associated with, weird. I find that that is the sort of thing that makes me go, oh, there's definitely more to look into here. Um, and yeah. Oh yeah, there's the Kleiner Perkins party too. The Kleiner Perkins party is really weird, okay? We, we, kinda, we kinda rushed over that one, but let's look at that again. Ghislaine Maxwell worked for Kleiner Perkins in 2011, or sorry, no, 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 sorry, my mistake. <clears throat> Ellen K. Powell, the, the later Reddit of C, uh, CEO of Reddit, uh, worked at Kleiner Perkins and on Twitter said that she saw Ghislaine Maxwell at the, at the Kleiner Perkins party, the Kleiner Perkins party where for about 24 hours, 
Ghislaine Maxwell, or sorry, Maxwell Hill suddenly stopped posting again. Randomly. Just so happens to line up with an event that Ellen Powell confirmed Ghislaine Maxwell being at. Another very, very, very weird piece of evidence. My only thing, I guess, is that I think the post mentions that the account has been scrubbing pedo stuff in recent days since their post, but the poster stopped posting, assuming it's it's uh, it's um, Ghislaine Maxwell who's scrubbing the post. I mean, it could be anybody, right? That could be, uh, the post could be getting scrubbed by, by moderators who are favorable to Ghislaine Maxwell. Yeah, we don't know. It could be anybody who has login info. It could be other mods that are scrubbing the posts. It's really hard to say. Hey, thank you, the Canuck 96 Thank you. Appreciate that. When was the post scrubbing going on? Let's see. Here we go. Let's see. The post scrubbing occurred. Let's see. Occurred. Sh oh, it occurred after after the arrest. So if you look at this post, this post was made a year uh, over a year ago. Let's see what the exact date was. This was posted on July on July eighth of last year, six days after she was arrested. So six days after she was arrested, a bunch of deletes a bunch of deletes went through. Now to be fair, this is these are this is a post that was made by a four channer of threads on 4chan that were keeping track of it. But, six days, this post was made six days after the arrest, and they have evidence of the deletion. A lot of evidence of the deletion. A whole archive of deletion. Guys, that's pretty fucking weird. So what's the what's the demon mama take take away? Are we ready to do that? Do we think we've gone through the evidence and talked about it enough? I want to do the takeaway now. Are we ready? I think we're ready for the takeaway. I, I kind of buy it. You know? Like I, I buy this. I buy this one. Uh, there is enough circumstantial evidence that is so specific. And it would be, it is true that the, the, uh, the motivation is there, right? The motive is absolutely there. If, um, can you imagine, like, that is so powerful. Uh, putting yourself in a position of one of the most important sites on the internet and literally one of the number one news sites in the world, Reddit World News, Reddit Politics, Reddit Technology, these were three of the most popular websites for news in the world because they were aggregators. People would go there to get their news rather than going directly to the website of news websites. And that the, the motive is there. The... Absolutely, right? If you are the if you are the fixer, if you are like the, the assistant of one of the world's most uh sinister figures whose entire job is maintaining secrecy for powerful people to do fucked up shit. Uh, a thing, by the way, which we of course we're not getting into the actual Epstein situation, but we know that all happened. It would abs it would be not just advantageous, it would be the logical solution to have an agent or to be the agent that can potentially influence the presence of stories. I mean, it's not just practice for the real thing. It is the real thing. This is what I was talking about, about social media. Social media is, is currently where people get their news. It is the real thing. If you control what news can get out into social media, you control, at least to some degree, 
the narratives that are allowed to populate. You are the one who is assisting in the manufacturing of consent towards anything. You are the one determining the narratives. And remember, Ghislaine Maxwell grew up in a family of news moguls, okay? This was her life. She grew up understanding the narratives that can be pushed through print. Literally. This would be the literal logical thing for someone like Ghislaine Maxwell to do. So that is a big deal, okay? And I think that's something that we need to take seriously. Now, it is possible. The cool thing about this conspiracy theory, everybody, is that we might have the answer very soon. This might be one of the unique times where we will get we might get the answer. This might come out during the trial. Wouldn't that be wild? Robert Maxwell was Robert Maxwell Mossad? I don't know. Let's look it up. Was? Was he? Let's see. Let's take a look. The Foreign Office of the UK... Uh, suspected that Maxwell was a secret agent of a former, former foreign government, possibly a double agent or even a triple agent, and a thoroughly bad character, almost certainly financed by Russia. He had known links to the British Secret Intelligence Service, MI6, the Soviet KGB, and the Israeli Intelligence Service, Mossad. Six serving and former heads of, Isra of Israeli intelligence services attended Maxwell's funeral in Israel, while, where, uh, while Israeli Prime Minister uh, Yitzhak Shamir eulogized him and said he's done more for Isra Israel than can today be told. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie. Shortly before Maxwell's death, a former employee of Israel's military intelligence directorate uh, Ari Ben Menashe approached a number of news organizations in Britain and the U.S. with the allegation that Maxwell and the Daily Mirror's former editor, Nicholas Davies, were both longtime agents for Mossad. Ben Menashe also claimed that in 1986, Maxwell informed the Israeli embassy in London that Mordecai Venunu revealed information about Israel's nuclear capability to the Sunday Times, which was then... Uh, and then to the Daily Mirror. Vanunu uh, was subsequently kidnapped by Mossad and smuggled to Israel, convicted of tre treason, and imprisoned for 18 years. Ben Menashe's story was ignored at first, but eventually journalist Shimor Hirsch of The New Yorker repeated some of the allegations during a press conference um, uh, to publicize the Samson option, Hirsch's book about nuclear weapons. On 21 October 1991, Labor MP George Calloway and Conservative MP Rupert Ellison, also known as espionage author Nigel West, agreed to raise the issue in the House of Commons under parliamentary privilege, which in turn allowed British newspapers to report events without fear of libel suits. Maxwell claimed, called the claims ludicrous in total invention and then sacked Davies. A year later, in Galloway's libel statement against Mirror Group Net, Net were, uh, newspapers, which he received substantial damages, Galloway's counsel announced that the MP accepted that the group staff had not been involved in the abduction. Galloway referred to Maxwell as one of the worst criminals of the century. Whoo! Woo, boy! That's, uh... That's really sus, isn't it? That's pretty fucking weird. Okay, sick. Oh, that's interesting. <gasps> okay, let's see. Oh, you can go through these. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'll have to look through those. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, 85 d Derek. Holy shit. Yeah, but look, who was it who reported this? You gotta... You, who cares about the politicians? The politicians don't fucking matter. It's the reporters. An American investigative journalist and political writer contributor to the New Yorker who was the one who brought it up, which then led to the politicians looking into it. Yeah, he is reputable. Repu yeah, Seymour Hersh is, as far as I understand it, a, a relatively reputable journalist. Like, the New Yorker has its problems, but the 
sorry the the new yorker has its problems but but the new yorker is uh is also like like they 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 can't just publish libel like that they have to be creative if they're going to push propaganda ah oh, boy so what are the points what are the points that we want to say against it for fairness okay uh it is possible that this person is just you know um you know uh that, it, that this person this is just a bunch of coincidences look at maxwell's death all right let's read maxwell's death all right we'll read maxwell's death we'll see how sus it is okay on november 4th 1991 maxwell had an argumentative phone call with his son kevin over a meeting scheduled with the bank of england on maxwell's default of over 50 million loans maxwell missed the meeting instead traveling to his his yacht which was called the lady jizz lane in the canary islands of spain on november 5th maxwell was last in contact with the crew of lady jizz lane at 4 25 a.m but was found to be lit missing later in the morning it has been speculated that maxwell was urinating into the ocean nude at the time as he often did he was presumed to have fallen overboard which was cruising off the canary islands maxwell's naked body was later recovered from the atlantic ocean and taken to las palmas Besides a graze to his left shoulder, there were no noticeable wounds on Maxwell's body. The official ruling at an inquest held in November, in December 1991 was death by a heart attack combined with accidental drowning. Although three pathologists had been unable to agree on the cause of his death at the inquest, he had been found to have been suffering from serious heart and lung conditions. Murder was ruled out by the judge, and in effect, so was suicide. His son discounted the possibility of suicide, saying, I think it's highly unlikely he would have taken his own life. It wasn't in his makeup or mentality. Max Meltwell was afforded a lavish funeral in Israel, attended by the Israeli Prime Minister Yishak Shamir, Israeli President Ch Shaim Herzog, and at least six serving former members of Israeli intelligence and many dignitaries and politicians. And he was buried on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. Herzog delivered the eulogy and the Kaddish was recited by his fellow Holocaust survivor, friend, and longtime attorney, Samuel Pissar. British Prime Minister John Major said Maxwell had given him valuable insights into the Soviet Union during the attempted coup of 1991. He was a great character, he added. Uh, Neil Kinnock, then the Labour Party leader, spoke of him as a man with a zest for life who, who attracted controversy, envy, and loyalty in great measure. A production crew conducting research for Maxwell, a, bi a biographical film by the BBC, uncovered tapes stored in a suitcase owned by his former head of security, John Pohl. Later in his life, Maxwell had become increasingly paranoid about his own employees and had the offices of those he suspected of disloyalty bugged so that he could hear the conversations. After Maxwell's death, the tapes remained in Pohl's suitcase and were discovered by the researchers in 2007. Maxwell's death triggered instability for his publishing empire, with banks frantically calling in their massive loans. Despite the efforts of his sons Kevin and Ian, the Maxwell company soon collapsed. It emerged that without adequate prior or authorization, Maxwell had used hundreds of millions of pounds from his company's pension funds to shore up the shares of the Mirror Group to save his companies from bankruptcy. Eventually, the pension funds were replenished with money from investment banks, Shearson Lehman, and Goldman Sachs, as well as the British government. This replenishment was limited and supported by a surplus in the printer's fund which was taken by the government in part uh, uh in as part of the payment of 100 million required to support workers pensions the rest of the 100 million was waived maxwell's theft of pension funds was therefore partly repaid from public funds okay that's fucking so shitty that has nothing to do with the conspiracy or anything like that but holy fucking shit is that shitty government always saving billionaires asses the result was that in general petitioners received about half their company pen uh, pension the maxwell companies filed for bankruptcy protection in 1992 kevin maxwell was declared bankrupt with a debt debts of over 400 million in 1995 kevin ian and two other former directors went on trial for conspiracy to defraud but were unanimously acquitted by a 12-person jury huh 
In July 2020, Maxwell's youngest child, his daughter Ghislaine Maxwell, was arrested and charged in New Hampshire, U.S. with six federal crimes involving minors' trade, travel, and seducing to engage in criminal sexual activity, conspiracy to entice children to engage in illegal sex acts, allegedly linked to her regular activity with a sex trafficking ring, and for the equally arrested and charged therein, Jeffrey Epstein, who had already died. Yikers. Yikes. Yeah, and New Hampshire was indeed where Maxwell Hill was redditing about the age of consent. <sighs> Oof. So, we might actually get to find out about this. We might get to find out as the trial goes on whether or not it's been determined whether Maxwell Hill was Ghislaine Maxwell. And also, won't it be odd if Maxwell Hill just never starts posting again, right? They'd subpoena all of that. Well, you would assume so. You would assume so. So we might find that out. Until then... Until then, I think it's plausible. I think this conspiracy theory is genuinely plausible. You, it, you can never say for sure. But the motive is there for sure. Obviously, the motive is there. Being able to control or at least have a major say. Not, I mean, we already know from this fucking article. Look, this is from an article. Oops, sorry. This is from an article right here in Daily Dot. From 2014, we already know that Maxwell Hill did indeed control, to a great degree, politics, technology, and world news. I think this goes into the we have questions category, like the lower end of the we have questions category. If we go back to that, if we go back in, in, in the past to our little image that we had here, wherever it went, oh no, where'd it go? Oh, no, I lost my link. I have it here somewhere. It doesn't really matter. It's not all that important. Point is, yeah. She hid herself in New Hampshire, too, after all the Epstein stuff came out like eight years ago. Yeah. There's a post in the spreadsheet shilling a company that was later bought out by Gil Bill Gates and George Soros. Oh, no. Oh, no. Which is the one? Oh, no. Oh, you got this. Oh, shit. Do you have the direct link? Oh my God. If for some reason, that link isn't working. Holy fuck. If this is true, and it's so circumstantial for me to latch on, it will be funny for this to show up in a docket. On 25th of December, you posted that New York sure has a funny age of consent laws. And I want you to be clear about your opinions on that. Sex monster, Maxwell. There are big holes in this, and that's something that everybody should be aware of. Uh, I wouldn't go around claiming this to be true, but this is the sort of thing where, personally, I think that there is enough evidence and uh, and that, that like Reddit should look into this, right? Don't you think that this would be advantageous for Reddit to at least look into to determine whether uh, their website was being used? It's the link on line 95. Let's take a look. Yep. I see what you're saying. Oh, no. British company behind the tent, the ver corona. Oh, God. Oh, God. Reddit won't look into it. They were involved. They'll sweep this as far under the rug as they can. Well, yeah. But um, but the problem is, is it's, it's getting negative attention. And if it comes out, here's the deal. Here's the thing. I mean, that's true. That's true, RG, grit. But, but here's the other thing. If it comes out in the trial... That's going to look even worse, isn't it? If this comes out during the trial that Reddit was Reddit was knew about this the entire time, that the admins were hobnobbing with Ghislaine Maxwell, holy fuck. Also, Ellen Powell is in the clear. 
I know Ellen Powell is not in leadership there anymore, but Ellen Powell was like, I don't like Ghislaine Maxwell. Fuck that shit. Smart, f smart fucking move. Okay. Yeah. Smart fucking move by Ellen Powell. You know, props to Ellen Powell. Fuck that bitch. That was a good call. I'm sure it could be proven, right? They probably do know about this if it's real. Ellen knew something. Yeah, I mean, that is weird, right? It is weird that the CEO, who would have probably been aware of that, would just be like, I don't want anything to go. I don't want anything to go. <laughs> I don't want anything to fall back on me. Fuck that bitch. I'm out of here. Oh, so yeah, weird story though, right? Everyone, was that not a wild ride? Isn't that fucking wild? See, this is why it can be very interesting. If you can if you can responsibly parse information and not get too caught up in the narrative, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of interesting things to research there. And there's a lot of interesting information to be looked into there. And also another takeaway is that Let's just pretend, let's just pretend that Maxwell Hill isn't Ghislaine Maxwell, okay? Let's pretend that it's confirmed tomorrow that Maxwell Hill just happened, that all this was just circumstance. That doesn't change the fact that Maxwell Hill had, a, had an iron grip on three of the most popular news sites in the world. A single person. A single dude, maybe two, had a had so much influence on that. Isn't that wild? Isn't that terrifying to think about? That Reddits, like that Reddits become the most popular place for people to get news, and it's run by a bunch of egomaniacal fucks with no oversight, no accountability whatsoever. Can you imagine if my Discord like, my Discord has more stringent moderation than any of these Reddits did. Can you imagine if my Discord just overnight became the most popular news site in the world? How bad that would be? How unethical that could become? Yeah, and of course, it goes further, Mental Ben, when you talk about the actual news companies behind it. But this illustrates very clearly how carelessness... You know, how, how carelessness in information uh, curation, how, how uh, unwavering uh, popularity of large websites is not a good thing. How this centra these sorts of centralization is not a good thing. I mean, of course, Dig also had disasters with this. Yeah, yeah. In a uh, uh, Duvarian from Twitch chat says there was a documentary um, that I was watching about Ghislaine Maxwell, where she wanted to be a part of her father's media empire, but her father, but misogyny literally kept her out. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Isn't that weird? Like, simul like interestingly, Ghislaine Maxwell is blocked out of the family business by misogyny and finds another way to greatly influence the news. I don't know. Decentralization of news gathering is really going to ramp up the alternative facts. That's not true. That's not true. See, this is where I disagree with you. See, here's the thing. If if humans can be taught to critically think, if you all who are listening right now and learning right now can, and I believe that all humans can do this. I believe all humans can learn to be rationally skeptical and to, uh, and to, uh, to, to discern information. If, all, if people like yourself are able to do that, there is a check in place. You understand? Decentralized news is, uh, centralized news creates alternative facts. Centralized anything creates an alternative reality that is enforced by a top-down structure. Um... Yes, obviously there are huge issues with people getting locked, lost off and siloed into echo chambers, but that doesn't mean that the answer is to give power over to giant corporations like CNN. Like, you guys realize that, like, CNN and Fox News basically made the Iraq war happen, right? Like, they literally, 
whipped an entire country's population up into a frenzy that later resulted in the deaths of millions of people. That's not a good thing. I would rather have a bunch of misinformed idiots in a hundred thousand different directions because they're all reading a blog that's from their local town um, than have an entire country be able to be whipped up into a murderous frenzy that results in a million deaths because of, uh, because of centralization. Yeah, we know Fox News is highly centralized, highly hierarchical, and a huge disseminator. Yes, there are problems of unreliable random news sources, but the answer is not centralizing media. The answer is, is equipping individuals to determine truth better. That's the answer. That's the answer. It's all CIA bullshit, and if we all find out what actually happens, it's a sign something much worse is happening. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know if I agree with you. That sounds a little conspiratorial. Uh, the CIA is indeed a very powerful and terrifying uh, institution uh, that I strongly disagree with its uh, principles and foundations. Um, but the idea that it's all powerful is is simply not true. They are not at all. There's a lot of incompetence and a lot of inability. Um, the CIA has certain types of powers. The CIA is particularly powerful at uh, instilling civil unrest in other countries. Um, but yeah. 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 So do you see what we did today was an exercise in, in carefully discerning information. You notice how there were multiple points where we stopped to say, hey, that's a claim that somebody is leaking in that they haven't provided evidence for. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. See, what I was doing here was drama mamas help you teach. They, they help you learn by example. I tricked you all. You thought you were having fun, but you were actually learning. Good job, everybody. The truth is, uh, it would be very irresponsible to come to any hard conclusions about this particular case. But having gone through and looked at the receipts, there is certainly a lot of sussery going on. So, personally, I think it's plausible. I don't think it's confirmed. But it is very sus, and I sure hope that we can find out a solid answer. But a solid answer is going to require more people actually researching it and finding hard evidence. And that might be very hard. Yeah, it might be very hard. And that concludes this episode of Drama Mama. Wasn't that fun? Like, subscribe, throw me your cash. We're going to read donations very quickly. And then, guess what? We got another thing to do. Actually, we have another two things to do. So don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere at all. At all. You should stay here and watch my show and join and become an imp. Being an imp is awesome. We have two more, two more big things to do. The one is we're going to talk about the end of giving a shit. Okay? The end. We have entered the era of no longer giving a fuck. And we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to do some petty drama because that sounds fun. It's the anti-black pill. Oh, okay, so here we go. Let me just open up our, our, our feed of donos here real quick so I can check on the dono feed. Uh, cause I heard that I had, uh, I heard I had some donos that I need to check. Yeah, we're gonna do, that's the, that's the petty drama is the Vosh Ico one. Snuffison, the semester is finally slowing down so I can return to actually watching more streams. Glad to be back. Glad to have you back, Snoffison. Thank you so much. Lena Lux, hi DM. Hope you're doing well. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, Lena Lux, as well. I am doing great. I hope you're doing fantastically. Val9000 with the incredibly generous tier four sub back home from the conference. My presentation got voted the best in the session. I'm very proud and refuse to top stop telling everybody about, about it. Val9000, that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. You are a... a awesomely verbose and really cool person from every engagement I've had with you. Fucking great job. You're brilliant. You should feel proud of yourself. And just know that, you know, non-parasocial, but I feel proud of somebody of my community kicking ass because it makes sense because imps are fucking poggers. Okay. 
Decoy Duck with the gifted tier one sub. Thank you so very much. And of course, then we had the Capo one. Thank you again, Capo. Thank you very, very much. Thank you all so much for your generosity. <sighs> Wait, what? No, what? What, what pro again? Oh, Val9000, you've been really sweet to me and really kind, and you sent me a really nice gift, and I appreciate that. You've been a member of my community for quite a while. Uh, I really, really genuinely appreciate that, and I think you're poggers, and you should be proud of yourself. Wait, did I see yours? Did I miss your dono? Did I miss a dono? I That one was, those ones were ones I already read. Hold on, let me double check. Where's Pos oh, Posadas John, here to help a fellow Gobbo enjoyer with her move. Yo, Posadas John, I am indeed a fellow Gobbo enjoyer. I love goblins. I love, love, love goblins. No anti-goblin anti sentiment will be permitted. Um, I uh, would marry every goblin on the universe if I could and protect every single one of them. I would be the queen of the Gobbos. I love them. I love goblins. Goblins are the best. Um, everyone in my life is a goblin secretly. Um, perhaps even me. I would not watch Goblin Slayer because I don't like thinking about goblins getting killed. Yeah, I racist. prefer, it's I prefer to think, racist. um, about people getting killed uh, by goblins is what I like. The goblins. What the fuck is this? What, what, what the fuck is this? Why would you, what the fuck? 85D2D Derek, what the fuck? Goblin Lair? Now that sounds much more along my line. Ah, yes. Yes. Uh huh. You pho you photoshopped the Reddit. Oh, you photoshopped the Reddit over the, the rest. Of I thought this was legit. I thought this was legitimate. Oh my god! I just thought that like, <laughs> I just thought somebody actually put the Reddit in there. <laughs> oh my god! This is incredible. The rabbit hole. The ringmakers of Saturn. B rings reveal ruins of 70 foot tall giants. Ah, yes, yes. Rings created as a Death Star resonance weapon. Ooh, 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 beautiful. Draco and Reptilian Alliance. Black wedge and pumpkin seed seed shaped craft. Pumpkin seeds. Ooh, 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 moo, moo, ma. Ancient builder race. Derelict ship, 18, eight, eight, 1 billion years old. Enters through outer energetic barrier and is intercepted by the SSP Alliance. Oh my god. Oh my god, this post? Guys, I'm sorry, we gotta do something petty. I'm gonna be really petty, okay? This is so petty. I can't believe I'm about to do this. This is so mean, but I have to. I absolutely have to. This is so funny, it actually hurts. Hold on. I discovered the un most unreadable, wait, how do you fix this? How do you make this thing? Hold on, name equals large, right? Is that how you do it big? This is, uh, I can't even believe this is a real thing. The Social Democratic Policy Terminate, Tournament Finale. I that one. Oh my God. This, I, I want you to know, okay? I want you to know, everyone makes fun of lefties for uh, mucho texto, okay? Everyone makes fun of fucking lefties for mucho texto, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? I'm telling you right now, it has always been the sock dems who are the mucho, mucho textos, okay? Look at this fucking motherfucking shit. I don't even know, like, how do I even, how can I even show you this? This is a debate bracket. Wait, hold on. Let me, wait, hold on. Can we just, can we just, hold on. Let's put this over here and then let's do this. One third worker board membership versus 50% worker board membership. <laughs> then yielded a win for the 50% board membership. Industry wide worker board councils, universal jobs guarantee, 
the industry-wide worker boards councils have won. And now the 50% worker board membership is competing against industry-wide worker board councils and then will go up against the right to speedy arbitration for workers who want to unionize and a localized minimum wage. Down here, we have abolish all zoning rules, something so small I literally can't read it, abolish most zoning rules except things like the Orgomonskonsky inaction housing uh, PC subsection 245. Fucking what? Down here, we have a battle of uh, the fierce debate between universal free, free pre-K and free... Free something based fair pricing. Um, sorry, everybody. I'm trying my best. Here we have codified equal pay between each gender versus the right to gender affirming health care. The right to gender affirming health care won over equality in pay between the genders. And then the social wealth fund is now going up against the right to gender affirming health care. Okay. Do you guys remember when I said, wait, do you all remember? Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Does anybody remember in my conversation with two separate sock dems where I talked about how policy just becomes like basically Pokemon cards that you're like, I choose the, the X policy and it will defeat your Y policy. And, and it's just, it just becomes a meaningless thing that doesn't actually do anything and doesn't advance any conversation. It's just a word that means nothing. That's what this whole thing is. Like, how, first of all, I can understand wanting to do like a debate club style bracket, but how the fuck, excuse me, I want to know like how the actual fuck you're supposed to, wait, how do I do this again? Here. Here we go. How the fuck are you supposed to, to, to debate these, com these completely unrelated things? How are you supposed to debate banning of single family zoning versus a land value tax? How do you debate 1% of GDP investment in public housing per year versus banning single family zoning? How do you, these aren't against each other. How do you debate those things? Is it about which one is more important? And also it starts to get gross. You know what I mean? Because like, um, look at this, look at this. Over here, you have a contest between whether we should legalize soft drugs or offer jobs training for imprisoned people. Like, like, do you realize where this starts to get a little bit, uh, fucked? You know? Ah, uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's get the jobs training for the imprisoned people. The Think of the Children classic? Universal free child care is going to go up against jobs training for imprisoned people? Or something? It's so... This is the most... Sock dem brained thing I've ever seen in my entire goddamn life. And when I say that, I mean quite literally it's just it's intolerable isn't it isn't it disgusting that like for for a lot of sock dems it literally does just boil down into a bunch of memes they don't care it's all numbers on a page for them like a gender affirming care a thing that literally affects in like people's lives every single day is is actively killing people it just becomes like a, a a a stupid joke on a on a 
policy March madness. Oh, it's so bad. It's so, it's so bad. It's so offensively stupid. Sorry. Sorry. This is offensively stupid. And it does look like the Reddit insanity chart. Desert Fox 559 it's like all these people uh play uh, EU4 you press the you press the button and it does the things because they are guys liberals treat politics like a video game it's a passive thing it's a clicker game you click on the thing you like and that's politics that is that is why i clash so hard and always have since you all have been watching this channel, I have clashed with social Democrats for two years. Back two years ago, when I was arguing with the social the, the, the social Democrats of the of the tiny G, DGG accounts. Do you remember that? Do you guys? Some of you, of course, some of you don't. Of course, many of you were not here when I first started my stream. I debated against so sock Dems and liberals all the time. I have a video on my channel called "Demon Mama versus Six Liberals." gamified political engagement i swear to god demon mama it's like they jack themselves off on being slightly more right than like warhawks and they think that makes it okay when we gamify politics yeah it is it's alienation they are deliberately making politics into a game so that you can have hilarious you can have hilarious hot takes and you can generate clout despite the fact you're actually talking about real people Oh my fucking god, it's so stupid. Oh my god. The democracy games literally do a better job of being like real life than how sock them see things, I swear to god. I mean, yeah. This is basically Squid Game. Yeah, <laughs> it's Squid Game. You get to debate for the pittance that you get from the government, and if you die along the way, well, too bad. You just saved the government money. The gamification of modern politics is actually a banger title. Why watch on Twitch if she just ignores the chat? I only ignore morons in the chat. That's the easy answer. This is the simple answer. Capo says, crazy how this is not exclusively, but by far the most, mostly a pastime of middle class, a middle, middle class cishet or cishet passing white men, i.e. people who would not be impacted by the results of any election anywhere. Yeah, of course. No, I I don't always ignore you, Soberflot. I I read your comments all the time. I mean, to be fair, I did respond to Kinja Khan, but I already know that Kinja Khan is a moron because I've seen Kinja Khan in chat before being a moron. I just felt like it would be funny to respond there. Eighty five D two D Derek says the trans affirming healthcare versus workers' rights bracket is a perfect microcosm of everything wrong with liberal politics. It really is, isn't it? Yeah, listen, listen, we don't have time. We gotta just we gotta be efficient here. Biden Biden can as the president of the United States that we made people sacrifice their lives and walk around in fucking winter doing canvassing to get an old like a geriatric guy who can't stay awake through a single meeting elected as president while you guys were out there working so hard, he can only choose one thing. You either get a uh, twenty five cent pay raise over the next twenty five years, uh one cent per year, or you get uh uh uh, the risk, the, the, you know, then we'll, or we'll ban discrimination against trans people. What? Oh, trans people represent only 1% of the population and therefore they don't have the voting rights to fight for their own rights. Well, I guess you're getting a one cent raise over the next 25 years. Why did I vote for Biden? Because it took me five seconds. That's why I voted for Biden. I voted for Biden because it took me five seconds to vote for Biden and Biden is much, I'd much rather deal with Sleepy Joe than the fucking unhinged syphilitic moron that was Donald Trump. You can probably remove the CW. Oh yeah, I can remove the CW now. Good call. Thank you. Appreciate that. He is a syphilitic moron. I'm sorry. Any predictions for 2024 at this point? Uh, I'm dreading it. Uh, hmm. Let me see. Hmm. Oh. Oh. 2024? 
No, I have no fucking predictions. You want to know what my predictions are for the next fucking decade? Uh, dude, fucking get fucking ready. Because it's going to get really weird. Yes, is the Omegalol Dennis Prager? Yes, it is. It is a modified Dennis Prager Manticore. Uh, 2024. It's going to be a wild ride. Guys, okay, this is what we're about to talk about. L let's take a second, okay? We're going to take one moment here, all right? Are we ready to take a breather for just a second? Because I need to go to the bathroom. And then I want to talk about the next subject, which ties in perfectly to talking about predictions for 2024, okay? So here's what I want you all to do, okay? I will play the bathroom song while I go to the bathroom. But I, what I want all of you to do is go and fucking like my YouTube video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and put the bell on because I really would like to grow. Uh, please, please. So let's play the bathroom song while I run to the restroom real quick and get a drink because I'm thirsty and I need to pee. But I'm gonna play bathroom song first. Hold on, here we go. Actually, no, we're, we're doing bathologic. Fuck it, we're doing bathologic. We're doing bathologic. Enjoy. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I'm coming back with content, bitches. Hey chat, Demon Mama has to go to the bathroom, so listen to the Demon Mama bathroom song. She streams 20 hour days and 9 days a week, so let's give her and her bladder a little fucking break. Christ, can Fawn go check in the bathroom? I hope she doesn't lock the door when she uses it. But if she does, you might need a little running start and hope the door hinge is weak enough to break. back everybody my partner had a tire blowout sad 
unfortunate. But she's safe. So, yeah, they're fine. Uh, we had a tire blowout. Uh, it sucks. It just happens sometimes. So, yeah. You know, but thankfully safe and all good. Yeah. So, we, well, with cars in the shop now, but no, 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 no. The car's in the shop. And uh, my partner took an Uber back home. Yeah, they're they're safe, thankfully. Uh, my partner's a really good driver, so actually, uh, all of my partners who drive are a good driver. Fawn is not allowed to drive because Fawn would um, Fawn would uh, terrorize the the streets. <laughs> Fawn would commit bad acts if given if given the right to drive. Yeah, it just happened. It just happened. Oh fuck! The tire literally fucking exploded. Oh, shit. Holy fuck. Look at what happened. Hold on. I'm going to show you. Holy shit. What the fuck? Look. What the fuck? What? How the fuck? Yeah, the sidewall blew out. That's scary. I'm so happy my partner's safe. Oh my fucking God. That's my Toyota tire gone. It's funny because yesterday I literally, yesterday I literally was like, hey, we got to get the tire filled because it was looking low. And I thought it was just because it's been freezing, but I guess it's been done. Holy shit. That's actually somewhat typical for a sidewall rupture. Yeah. Oh, they're good tires. Um, I, I think they're, um, Fuck, I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, okay, okay. It's time. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Everybody, I'm back. Everybody, I'm back. I'm back. Oh. I'm back. I'm back, everybody. Oh, that was sick. That timing was sick. That was sick. That's, you got to save that. Oh, my God. Send me that link because that's fucking great. Please check my tires. I do. Don't worry. Uh, the t last night I had to drive a fuckload and one of the tires was low and I'm guessing that it sustained damage on the way home. Um, we couldn't, I didn't have enough time yesterday to go and fully refill, refill it, but it was just low last night. So there must've been something that happened yesterday. Probably ran over a nail or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. You leave it in the discord clip channel. Fuck. Yeah. You just noticed binding of Isaac back there. Guess what? We're about to get a whole bunch of new, uh, binding of Isaac stuff. In the next couple of days, right? No, I thought it was supposed to be summer. Is it summer? No, for the plushies? I don't know. The plushies came so much faster last time. Where's Mini Mama? Mini Mama's sitting over here right now. You can't see Mini Mama right now. I want that so bad. Does anyone have a link to the regular bathroom song? Ask Gayfesh. It looked to me like the air pressure in the tire was too high. It was too low. But yeah. yeah that's a good idea. Yeah, we're getting a whole bunch of stuffies. Uh, it's a long story. Check the Discord DM. Okay, let me check your Discord DM real quick. Thank you. Thank you, Posadas John. Deeply appreciate that. All right. So, uh, there's no D in pigeon. Oh, I can, I can fix that. A nail through the tread will not cause a sidewall blow. That's either obvious damage to the sidewall or age. Um, it is possible. Wait, it is possible. The sidewall got damaged last night. Um, while we were driving around, we hit a, like, fucking horrible horrible uh frost heave next to a uh a speed bump in a parking lot and that could have done it it's actually possible that could have been what did it but it just didn't blow out immediately so it probably weakened it we were going really slow but it didn't matter we bottomed out it sucked anyway this is a long story and we're getting distracted 
I have a 750 mile trip every time I want to see my family. There's a good chance at least one tire doesn't make it. Yeah. What what model car do we all drive? Uh, do we drive? We have a um, Prius Prime that was uh, very 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 kindly gifted gifted to us by um, a relative. Uh, we're very very lucky to have that car. We take very good care of it. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a it's a Prius Prime. Uh, I cherish it. It's amazing. It wasn't really, I mean, it wasn't really, I mean, it was a gift. It was, it was left to us when, um, it was left to us when one of our family members died and they said, Hey, we have this, this car, you can have it because you guys don't have a car. We didn't have a car for years. So, um, like a Faye, thank you so much. First time I've ever donated to a streamer just because you're so based. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The Prius, it, the Priuses are amazing. I fucking love Priuses. Yeah. A Prius is the car, the one car I make recommendations uh, for. It's the only, it's like one of the few cars I will recommend to basically anybody. First Starbucks Union, that's great to hear. All right, everybody, it's time. We have to talk about, we have to talk about more Reddit stuff, okay? But this is more important, well, it's not more important Reddit stuff, but it's also important Reddit stuff. Let me just see. Um... Here we go. This is the post. Okay, everybody? It's time. Let's focus. <gasps> it got deleted. Why did it get deleted? Is there a... Is there a... Hold on. There's got to be a Wayback Machine. I didn't archive this because I didn't think it would get deleted. That's weird. Let me just see. I'm sure it's archived. It's got to have been archived. Yes, it has been. Of course. Of course it has been. Where's the delete? Here we go. It was from a couple days ago. Yes, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, here we go. Let's look at this. This is a post on anti-work. Just a week in, week or two ago, we did a, a stream where we talked about the anti-work uh, subreddit, which has now added another 300,000 users since the last time that we checked in, okay? Since when we, when we did our segment on anti-work, there were 1 million uh, users on anti-work. There are now 1.3 million. There are 40... 0.1 thousand people currently browsing the anti-work subreddit and we're going to talk about this and a bunch of stuff related to this because as you know i am one of the more vocal streamers who's very anti-work and a lot of people are going to go but wait a minute mama don't we have to do things well yes but that's not work okay and we'll get into that but first we need to read a story we need to read a story that is now deleted that has gained a lot of attention, okay? So let's read it. I think my employer literally worked my coworker to death. I have a coworker who recently passed away from breast cancer. She was an extremely hard worker and the sole wage earner for her family. She would pull 12-hour shifts six days a week. She recently started doing chemo for breast cancer while maintaining that level of work. She was clearly not doing well. Me and my coworkers tried to donate some of our PTO, PTO, which is paid time off, to her so that she could just go to her chemo and not have to worry about money. Corporate told us that that is not allowed. And that is true. Many corporations do not allow you to gift or donate paid time off, which is disgusting, frankly. They dragged their feet on approving her medical leave, and she ended up working several weeks while in chemotherapy. By the last shift that she worked, she could barely walk and was having trouble speaking, and she still worked for the 13 hours shift required of her. We recently re heard from her family that she passed away due to complications from chemotherapy. I am really sickened by this situation. I cannot say for sure that she would have survived if uh, if she didn't feel like she had to work, but corporate should have immediately approved her medical leave so that she could have just focused on her chemotherapy treatment. I'm sorry about that. My first instinct would be to contact the family and let them know what was happening at work and offer to be a witness if they seek legal remedies, but I also think it could be insensitive. 
They might have a wrongful death liability on their suits. Honestly, I agree. And insensitive or not, they should see a lawyer ASAP in case there's a time limit on this sort of thing. Get your coworkers to send any emails, texts, even just a document stating what was said when to the uh, so that the family can show to a lawyer. If she's the sole breadwinner, they'll need the money and complications of chemo sounds like a woman who couldn't breathe and was told she couldn't seek medical attention dying of pneumonia, for example. So this would be a workplace. So workplace policy would be incredibly relevant here. Maybe employees could email to try to get a paper trail. I was so sad with XX that we were told we couldn't donate her PTO to her. Is there any chance we could change this for future employees? I remember XX saying there was some delay in getting her medical leave approved, and I'd love to be able to support a coworker to get PTO approved quickly if such a situation arises. This is a really good idea, by the way way it's a really really good idea just so we know now a lot of people have been talking about this post in fact i think that um i think even merrick had a viral post on twitter about this today this happened in the u.s as far as we know yes um as far as we can tell this happened in the u.s um oh my god uh though there's somebody in in twitch chat right now defending this the aforementioned moron um but yeah uh Guys, what a sad state of affairs. What a horrible, horrible state of affairs. Yeah, Nova4 from chat says, yeah, I got a Twitter notification about this, this post being reposted on an account I barely use. Yeah, yeah. Every, a lot of people are talking about this. This thing has, as of right now, let's see, 28, look at this. This is the current post with the deleted details. 28,000 upvotes over the course of one day. This thing is doing fucking numbers. My mom recently passed from cancer and I absolutely believe that stress played a factor. Near the end, whenever she experienced stress, she said the pain was so much worse. My dad also passed from cancer and he was the most overworked man I know. He was so close to retiring. Our immune systems simply do not function properly when we're under stress all the time and our, our immune system is vital when battling cancer. Fuck the system that makes people suffer like this. When they say labor laws were written in blood, they weren't lying. Yep. So guys, what the fuck is going on? What the let's can we take a minute and take stock of uh of of things just real quick? We are now at the end of the second year of a pandemic, okay? A lot lot of people have died from COVID. Now, the Omicron variant uh, is in California, has just arrived in Washington, and is likely to be spreading around. So we're all going to need boosters very, very soon for the Omicron variant. The economy is falling apart completely and utterly. I don't know about you all, where you are, what you've noticed, but, um, but, um, Every time I go out, I notice a new business closed. Uh, there was a, from the moment that I've lived here, there has been a, uh, a, an ancient tattoo parlor right near our place, gone, obliterated. It was the pandemic that finally killed it. Uh, restaurants around here are totally fucked. There has been multiple times in the last few months where we have gone to get food and the restaurant that is normally open is just closed with no explanation. There's just nobody there. The windows are closed. The store is closed. Nobody showed up. There have been times we waited once in line uh, for a uh, for a fast food place one night. Only to when we reached the, the speaker, there was a piece of paper ta ta taped up to the speaker that said, No new orders, DoorDash only. So... Even though there was a line of people that everybody was trapped in because once you're in the queue, you can't get out with your car because it's a reg regulated queue. Uh, nobody could actually get food because they were only taking orders from DoorDash, but there were so few people that they couldn't tell anybody that until it was too late. Do I say what metro area? I'm in Seattle. Yeah. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I went to get a sandwich at Jimmy John's. 
and uh, there was one guy working on a holiday. It was, it was literally, wait, when was, was it Labor Day? Was it literally Labor Day? There was one guy working and he, and when we got up to the drive through thing, he was like, please. He was like, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry in advance. I'm the only person here today. You're just going to have to wait a little bit. I was like, oh, hey, no, it's, it's all good. Don't worry. You're, you're good. We'll, we'll wait as long as you need. Um, there are, uh, like the, the, the state of affairs is so bad. Okay. And one thing that you've probably noticed personally is that customer service right now absolutely sucks. You, everything goes wrong. Everybody's orders are wrong all the time. Your food is always wrong. There's fucked up things in your food. Everything is fucked. The, the stores close early. You can't find an employee anywhere. The stores are disgustingly dirty all over the place. Things are out of stock. Increasingly, there's more and more things out of stock. And guess what? That is completely understandable. Literally knew that that was going to happen. I have been talking about this for two years on my channel. And the answer is because we are in the year, the era of no longer giving a fuck. And thank God for that, to be completely honest. As, as obnoxious and annoying as it's going to be, the truth is we have entered the era of no longer giving a fuck. And I can't blame. No, 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 no. Like a fay. I'm about to tell you, don't worry. You are not to blame for this. You are not to blame for this. You are not to blame. I know you've been working your best. Don't worry about it. Don't even bother. Don't try your best, please. Don't try your best for me, okay? You don't need to. I don't need your best. I know what I'm getting myself into if I go to fast food. Sometimes I don't got any other options, okay? But whatever. It's all good. Gig economy. Everybody's working for DoorDash. Everybody's working for uh for Amazon. Um, the the fact that we have entered into the era of no longer giving a fuck is a good thing, in my opinion. I know, right? Oh, but our convenience. <sighs> you know what else has gotten really lax? Security. At basically every single store, no one cares. No one cares. Nobody cares. They don't even have people watching the doors anymore. The other night, uh, I was walking. I, I we, we bought a uh, a Christmas, uh, a you know, rather expensive Christmas tree stand. Not me. It was my friend. I was at the store with my friend. Bought a rather expensive Christmas tree stand. And when we walked outside, they didn't take the security thing off. And the alarms all went off twice. And nobody ever came and looked. Not, they didn't even give a shit. They never even bothered to come check it. They just remotely turned off the alarm. They don't even care. We could have literally just stolen it and they wouldn't have given a shit. Holy fuck, Soma, that sucks. Yeah. So. And there's a reason for this, right? The play is, yes, the play has entered the streets. But but I want I want to talk about the reasons for this, okay? Um uh, Life is short, guys. Being a human, being a bag of flesh is actually kind of a hard thing to be, okay? Um I know. What a surprise, right? that like we have to cope with what we are that you wake up one day and you are trapped in a in a painful squishy weird blob and then you spend your entire life trying to figure out how it works and what to do with it and then you as you grow up you discover that a bunch of people want you to do things that you don't want to do all the time for the rest of your life and currently it's extra difficult because as it turns out, most humans are willing to kind of like be like, okay, yeah, all right. I woke up in a strange planet. I'm a weird primate, hairless primate. And, um, you know, uh, there's video games and there's movies and music and, and food and stuff. And that stuff's all cool. And I guess I got to do some stuff to get the nice stuff that I want. But then, you know, 
most people are willing to play by like some sort of rules like that. But then when you get to a situation like now, where it's like for like the last two decades, there hasn't even, and honestly, it goes longer than this, but for the last two decades, there's barely even been a facade of anyone who is telling everybody else to work, even giving a fuck. You have at the top a bunch of lazy, uh, f like fucking French prince looking motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, oh, yes, I'm golfing. You know what I mean? They're like, like, literally, like, Donald Trump lives in, like, a golden, a golden, uh, a, a fucking gaudy golden apartment in New York. And he's like, ooh, can I have my McDonald's and Diet Coke delivered on a golden platter? And then they're telling you, you got to get out there and be, be human capital. And, and then you have Jeff Bezos who's now richer than he ever was while everybody else is dying and suffering, I know for a fact every single one of you has suffered through this pandemic. Every single one of you. I know. I know we all have. Every single one of us has. Um, but guess who hasn't? Elon Musk. E Elon Musk. Uh, guess who hasn't? Jeff Bezos. Donald Trump. Well, okay, Donald Trump did get COVID, but it was literally his own fault, and he got multiple other people sick. So I can't count uh, Donald Trump, okay? What are the odds you, ha you haven't lost somebody? Basically pretty low. Pretty fucking low. And we're not the only place that's having this, by the way. Other countries have it even worse than the United States. Uh, in other countries, the deaths are so high that they can't even uh, dispose of corpses outside of giant corpse fires. Um, so isn't it, um, isn't it weird that like, there's still even a semblance of, of the everyday anymore? <laughs> That's for you, Posadas John. Isn't it weird that like, um, Actually, let me reword this. Let me reword this, okay? Let, let me reword this. Can you sense it? Can you taste it? I bet you can. I can. Every person I know from diverse social backgrounds, every single person I know, you can sense it. You can, you can feel it in the air that people don't have anything left. They don't have any uh they don't have any backups left. They're running out of contingencies. They don't have pa their parents are out of money now too. Their buddies are out of money. They've they've dipped into their savings. They've they've taken out t payday loans to pay their rent. Uh more and more people are getting evicted. The uh the pandemic aid is not coming. The the next month your student loans are going to come active again and you're going to have new bills even though you've probably lost your job or lost money do you think we're living in capitalist accelerationism caused by covid i think that we are living in the p possibly the most rapid period of acceleration that that you can even imagine i don't even think we can i don't even think that my prognostications are aggressive enough the eviction ban is disappearing My mom gave up staying afloat and now just accrues debt. Well, what else? You don't have much other options, do you? And, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me say, uh, I get it. I get it. I'm going to be completely honest. You guys see how hard I work on this channel, right? And, and you, and this channel has been very difficult for me. Okay. Like making this channel is not easy. People think being a streamer is super easy. It's not. In fact, there's a lot of times where I have legitimately wanted to just retire and not do it anymore. This, this is, I've said this many times. I love this job because I love what I create, but it is the hardest job I've ever done. It is 
and and I've done manual labor. Look at this fucking shit. Look at these fucking big strong arms. I used to fucking lift shit for a living. That was my job was to use my body to carry shit. And I used to work in sales. I've worked a lot of different things. This job is fucking difficult. And and I love it. Because it's cr it lets me have a modicum of creative control. Yeah, the blueberry farms. I used to, I, I only did that for a little bit. Um, but, uh, but if even I have gotten to the point where I've said, uh, what, what really is time? What is my life? What am I, what am I, what do I do? What am I, what am I doing with my time? And I've said, and I've sat here and I've thought, I've literally sat up at night in the dark looking at the ceiling and thought, I think I would do almost anything to make sure that I never have to work at a corporate America job again, that I never have to be feel that dehumanized. Because the psychological experience of working in American jobs is so bad that I think I would actually rather become a forest person. Unironically, like I'm at the point where I'm like, I think I would actually just, if, if I can't make a comfortable living doing streaming, maybe I'll just go and be, and literally return to monkey. Um, because the thought of it makes me want to die. The thought of of spending the one life that I have laboring for some moron, some some white collar moron who makes twice or thrice or quadruple or a hundred times what I do, while he gets to micromanage every instance of my life and decide that I can only piss for five, for five, for three minutes and only shit for ten, that is just it is so fucked. It's so fucked. Return to monkey. I've never heard that phrase. It's a it's a joking phrase that re re refers to like l returning to an earlier stage of human life where you go and hunter gather and stuff. It's it's just a joke. It's a joke. That's why I said unironically though, because um, I'm not an anprim by the way. Just so you all know, I know people meme about it because I make return to monkey jokes. Um, I'm not an anprim. I do believe, uh, I do believe that there is a need for, um, uh, a need for, for, how do I put this? There is a need for people to learn survival skills. There is a need for people to learn self-sustainment and food and, and material skills. Um, I think that's really important. I just don't think, I just don't think the answer is like return to primitivism. That is not what I believe in. Um, uh, I just, I do believe there's a lot of value in looking to different ways of life. In fact, I think it's necessary. Um, yeah, I'm not an, I'm not an anprim. I very much, um, I have very, very, very much, uh, uh, I sound like a right winger right now. What? Kinja Khan. Hey, I gotta, I gotta, hey, you know what? I haven't done this in a long time. Hey, Kinja Khan, you want to debate? Do you want to talk? Do you want to just have a talk? I haven't done this in forever. Do you want to just come on and have a little talk? Let's talk. No, let's just talk. It doesn't even have to be a debate. Let's just let's just have a talk. You've been sitting here in chat making the weirdest allegations. I just want to hear what you want to I just want to hear your voice. I want to hear what you have to say for yourself. Why are you why what is your purpose in sitting in my chat and saying stupid comments like that? Like I want to know. I want to know where you're coming from. Uh, it's already getting the excuse. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Just offering you a better view. Your idea of a better view is you sound like a conservative right now. Okay. <sighs> okay. Yeah, yeah. If this guy, if this idiot doesn't doesn't pop into the chat to talk, just get them out of the chat. Just mute mute them. You don't need to ban them. Just mute them for a while. 
You did what you did. I was waiting for you to join a militia for the apocalypse. I don't think that's the answer. I, I don't know where the hell. <sighs> okay. Uh, okay. 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 Survival skills. Are you an idiot? Okay. Okay, 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 guys, 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 guys. Okay, I'm muting this person. I'm not wasting any more time. I'm gonna mute this person, and we're gonna use their we're gonna use their time as a uh, as as a, in a better way. Okay, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay, look at me, imps. <laughs> Fucking look at me. Okay, see this face right here. See this face right here. I grew up in one of the most rural places in America. Okay, I'm talking rural. Fucking rural. I had, I learned survival skills in school as a part of my curriculum, because when you live in a rural area, it's actually important that you know how to not die if your car goes off the road in the woods, okay? I learned to catch animals. I learned to fish. I learned to safely uh, d disinfect water. I learned how to build shelters. I learned how to chop wood. I learned how all of these things, okay? And I didn't have to use that. I didn't have to use those skills outside of choice until 2019. And in 2019, I was trapped in a disaster area. And it turned out that because of the way it happened, most of those skills weren't even, I wasn't even able to use them. Instead, I used the few things that I knew to keep everybody warm. In 2019, there was a period of five days where my house had no heat and me and my partners laid in bed eating the remaining food that we had that we kept cold by putting it out in the snow and and snuggling under blankets and eating fucking uh, edibles that we had so that we weren't, weren't going out of our minds. This shit is right around the corner. I'm not talking about everybody becoming a fucking Bear Grylls survival maniac, but you need these skills. It is fucking desperate. Okay? It is not conservative to believe, to know how to take care of yourself if a natural disaster happens in your area because there's a lot of them. I don't know if you've caught this, but natural disasters all over America are fucking through the roof because climate change is fucking us up. Is it conservative to learn how to bow hunt? No, actually. B knowing how to use a bow is super, super, super empowering. Because guess what? Bows are actually pretty fucking op. As it turns out, even in the modern day, bows and crossbows still up, still up a thousand years later. It's totally normal in rural areas to lose power and heat for a few days. Yeah. And guess what? It's becoming normal in urban areas. And guess what? If you lose, do you know how much, do you know what? It fucking sucks if you lose shit in an urban area. You want to know what happens when your when your bathroom stops working in a rural area? You piss outside. You go outside and you piss wherever the fuck you want. Where the fuck are you going to piss when your water and fucking power and heat goes out and your fucking toilet has a block of ice in it? You're just going to start like pissing in your in your like well, you're just going to piss in your own mouth? You're going to piss on your floor? You're going to go piss in the hallway of your shitty apartment? Idiots. Okay? I've talked about this on my stream a million times. Okay? Yeah, Bo of the Fifth Column is fucking fantastic. Huge shout out to Bo of the Fifth Column. Both of his channels. Great. Um... Yeah, yeah, urbanites get jacked because nobody knows how to help. Nobody knows what to do. Nobody even knows what to do, and nobody has any backups. Urbanites don't even fucking have light, light, fucking flashlights. So 
So there's a lot of issues. And let me tell you something. There are some really scary things on the horizon at the moment, okay? I don't know how much you all have been keeping up on like supply chain failures, but like we are already starting to see the beginning of supply chain failures resulting in people not being able to get certain types of food. And right now it's luxury items. It's fucking goofball things that nobody cares about like chicken tendies and cheese sauces and stuff like that. And chips for uh, like not potato chips, like computer chips and stuff like that. But what happens if one day you just can't get something for like a staple for something that you get? What happens if the pasta has gone? What happens if all of a sudden all of the beans are gone and it, and it gets bought up and you don't have beans anymore? What are you going to fucking eat? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever gone hungry in your life? It sucks. It's terrifying. And in the moment that it happens, it is, it, you never forget it, okay? As somebody who's gone hungry at multiple times in my life, seriously, I don't know how bad the supply chain issues are going to get, but I can't imagine they're going to get better anytime soon. Because keep in mind that workers have been dropping like flies. Essential workers have been dying a lot. Essential workers have given up. They don't give a shit. And I don't blame them at all. I don't blame any fast food driver, any type of worker who's giving the fuck up. They're burnt out. They're getting paid minimum wage to do humiliating work. And the only thing motivating them is not being evicted. And they might be getting evicted anyway. If you're working at McDonald's, there's a good chance you could be facing eviction. And I know a lot of this stuff is really fucking terrifying to think about. And it should be. Your fear was designed to uh, to help you avoid situations like this. But the problem that's happening is that Americans have uh, Americans do not confront crisis ever. They imagine that crisis is a thing that you watch on TV. But guys, it's getting bad. There are a lot of hungry people. There are a lot of unemployed people. There are a lot of businesses closing right now. We haven't even ended the pandemic. Do you guys remember some of you who watched me a year ago um would have would remember when I said that like guys, can we even imagine the employment disaster if this pandemic goes on into 2021 and isn't stopped? And then it did. And now we have this we have massive infection numbers going into 2022. Take it from a retail cook in the supply chain, says Hippie Punk. It won't be getting any better and prices won't be returning to pre-pandemic levels ever. We are having issues getting packaging even for sandwiches. Yes, it is bad. And guess what? When your cost of living, when everyone's cost of living goes up, you people just start, I've talked about this, the bar, okay? Maybe you're here right now. Well, the bar for living like a comfortable person is going like this. And soon you're below the bar and you can't get any, unless you know how you can get more money, you might never get back up to that bar again. You think you're sitting pretty right now? All of a sudden, your income isn't enough to buy everything anymore. <sighs> However, However, guess what, everybody? You want to know what you do have? Time. Do you know what you do have? Other people. Do you know what you, you do have? Your skills. Your will. You have your will. You have the ability to say, actually, I'm not going to do things the way that I used to. I'm not going to live the way that I was told I was supposed to live. I don't have to treat my boss as a holy person who can tell me anything anymore. 
if I want to, I can slack off at work. I'm not even being paid enough to live. So maybe I should just collect a pay. I should just do what they're paying me for and be a warm body. Maybe you say, fuck it, I'm out of here. I'm going to come up and make something myself. Maybe you start putting together something. Maybe you start, um, maybe you are in a lucky position where you've got some woodworking skills or maybe you got a workshop and you can start working with somebody to make something that's needed. Maybe if you're very lucky, you have a garden and you can start growing things that people want and need. We have to start thinking about how we are going to make our lives good as more and more of us fall below that rising line. You see, this line rises, you're not getting above the line in all likelihood. A handful of people in my audience might find a way to break the bank and be, be safe above the line. But the reality is that even people you consider rich right now are gonna fall below the line as the prices go up and up and up and more and more people fall below that line. So how the fuck do you, so then, then there's a scary question, which is how do you live nice when you're denied modern luxuries? How do you ensure that you get the things that you want, the things that make your life happy? How do you get music? How do you get art? How do you get supplies? How do you get stuff to live a human existence when your system, your society is trying to deny you that. And there's a lot of answers to that. A lot of answers to that. Are you a prepper? You should promote that content more. I am not a prepper, okay? I'm not a prepper. Uh, I don't really I don't really think that doomsday prepping is a good uh, is a good uh, like framework. I think it's a um, I think it's a mostly paranoid framework that doesn't actually um, doesn't actually do a very good job um, of addressing the problems. However, I will show you something. Do you want to see something really interesting? Look at this. Watch this. See this? Got my knife. Gauze. Rubbing alcohol, 91%. Wound dressing. Absorbent, uh, absorbent sticky pads. Butterfly bandages. I have a flint that's in another box that's nearby. I have a, uh, Oh, because I'm talking about things that are good to have, oh, uh, like and I have, bad. yeah, and and I had, um, I have in my uh, on my purse, I have the flint, I have lighters, I have pens, hand sanitizer, cloths, uh, IDs, rubbing alcohol, uh, wipes. I have a whole bunch of things that are very very helpful. I don't think um, that being a prepper is like what matters. I think what matters is thinking about your environment, thinking about what you might need, um, and thinking about uh, actively, thinking about what you could do to be helpful to one another in a time of duress. Because let me tell you, we live in a time of duress right now. You are living in a disaster right now. Now, the disaster might not yet be affecting you to that degree. Can you see the knife? Yeah, absolutely. Where did I put it? Here you go. Ping. Nice, solid, full tang, very sharp. Nice and balanced. Very easy, simple, sharp. Easy to sharpen. It was a gift. Um, I have actually two knives. Um, one is an old hunting knife and one is that one. Oh, yeah, uh, I can do that. Sure. Leftist owl. Sure. 420 likes. I know. It's been really good, huh? Um, let me let me do that real quick. I'll add that that uh, notable. Didn't you have a debate recently, leftist owl? Like a pretty big one.
Yeah, I heard you had a pretty big debate. Well, there you go. There's your creator badge, Leftist Owl. Yeah. Likes God. Leshy. We love Leshy. Have you ever tried to grow food? It seems unrealistic unless you do it on a very large scale. Uh, here's the thing. Um, it's not about, uh, it's not about growing enough food to be sustainable. That is very difficult to do. Hey, thank you so much, Hypergressive. Great to see you. Uh, growing food is sick because here's the thing. Um, yeah, gathering is very valuable, of course, obviously. Very, very valuable. But growing food is not about, uh, growing enough food to sustain your whole family. Growing food is about, uh, engaging in an increasing, uh, collective effort to make food more prevalent in the United States. Did you know there were times in the past in the United States where food was plentiful? If you walk down the street, there would be a garden in every house. There would be um, wild vegetables, wild fruits, uh, fish, all these sorts of things were all over the place. It is only in the era of, of fucking lawns, uh, and, and parking lots that we have made food very, 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 uh, uh, hard to find. The goal is not to be able to grow enough food to feed your entire family. The goal is that there's food everywhere so that you and others can share food, so that you can give things to one another, so that you can have the things that you want, so that you can have an herb garden. Life is better with herbs. I just need to know how bad you think it's going to get. I feel like people imagine it as a full-on zombie apocalypse. No, I don't. No, no, no. Zombie apocalypse is silly. But, like... Do I expect that, like, in a couple of years' time, it will be very hard to get a computer? Yes. Do I think in a couple of years' time, it will be very, very hard to get a smartphone? Yes. And therefore, do I think it will be very, very hard to get a job? Yes. Do I think a lot of people are going to become homeless? Uh, yes, I do. I think a lot of people are going to either start living with a lot of other people, um, have being forced to flee into rural areas where the rent is low, where they're not used to living out there, where they're going to be depressed because they don't know how to have fun in a rural area because, um, you know, they can't afford a gaming computer anymore. And so nobody knows how to do anything. Um, will other countries handle this better than the U S some will and some won't. I think a lot of people, well, here's the thing. I don't, I, I think a lot of people, more people will have mega beds. I hope so. That's what I hope to encourage. I hope, pe I want to encourage people learning to live in harmony with one another, learning to live in semi-communal or full-on communal environments. Do you know that like, you're going to have, like, there's going to be a lot of roommates in the future. Everybody's going to have fucking roommates. It's not going to be good. Okay. You guys got to learn, like, eh. oh, I think they will. I think people are going to make the changes, but it's going to be, but I want you guys to be the ones who are happy when the changes come. I don't want you to be the miserable ones who succumb to a changing society because you can't adjust. I want people to be ready. I want people to think about this stuff and be ready to like do things differently because we are going to have to do things differently. We really really are and yeah you got to be comfy with listen guys i'm sorry but uh space is is rough okay you're gonna hear people fuck okay you're gonna see some bare feet okay it's gonna happen yeah we're gonna watch the Ico vosh thing after this segment because i wanted to yeah of course of course grumble about it Sure. Um, what soda is that? This is triple cola. It's a local soda. Fucking great. Yeah, Patreon. Listen, my Patreon is cool. You get free updates about what I'm doing with my tech. And someday I'm going to upgrade that. Soda looks yum. It's the best. It's the best cola in the world. I've never had a better cola than triple cola. Um, hold on. Listen to this though, guys. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys a comical. Are you ready? I'm going to give you a comical, but important thing. What happens? What happens when your favorite type of porn starts becoming like hard to get? Uh-oh.
What happens? Um, maybe you got a kink that there's only a couple of artists or a couple of, uh, maybe you got a bunch of sex workers you really like. What happens when those sex workers can't make stuff anymore because they, you can't afford a house or they can't afford a, a, a camera. And so all you get, yeah, you might want to, you might want to fucking, you might want to fucking back up your shit. You might want to consider printing out your furry porn folder, putting it into a, no, I'm dead serious. Jay Fiegel, are you fucking kidding me? Listen, let me tell you something, okay? Listen, 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 listen. Hold on. As somebody who personally experienced this, okay? Wait, we got a comp, we got a dono? Wolfie Universe. Eliza's a very good, surprisingly well-written game with top-notch voice acting, the most realistic takes on crunch culture, worker capitalism, and realistic characters I've ever seen. It's educating. I will have to check that out. Thank you very much, Wolfie Universe. Um... Let me tell you something, okay? When when the uh, housing crisis happened, okay? When when the housing crisis happened, multiple artists that create a type of porn that I really like stopped doing it because they had to work more, and all and then many of them just deleted their websites because they couldn't afford the hosting costs anymore, and those things are gone gone fucking gone you will never find it again it is it is gone just saying if you don't think that economic hardship gets rid of all of the nice little luxuries that you, it, it does it absolutely does back up your shit get high quality stuff get physical media if you can And learn to be creative. The reality is, I think I don't think the internet is going to go anywhere. But here's what I do think: I do think that um, the internet is going to become increasingly premiumified. And as people have less money, you will have less access to the good stuff on the internet because that's how it always goes in capitalism. Always. Um, uh, there's already a million websites that are doing it. Um, there's a million websites with premium plans. There's probably going to be internet premium plans itself. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and who knows, maybe, maybe you won't even be able to afford actual, an actual internet connection anymore. Maybe you'll only be able to get a data plan that allows you like 500 megabytes of data on, uh, you know, in your house that you have with eight roommates. Yeah, they throttle their speeds already. They already do all this. A YouTube sub for twenty nine ninety nine per week. Yeah, fuck that shit. There's a re guys. There's a reason why I why my show is free, right? Multiple, but there's one, which is that I know nobody's gonna have any money, and I want people to have stuff to keep themselves entertained. I wish we had we still had net neutrality. Yeah, wouldn't that have been sick? But guess what? You want to know what net is neutral? The net that you make. Hey, so what? So what if you can't um. So what if you can't pay for internet in the future? What if you build an intranet in your house with a server that once a year you bring the server online and you download 500 terabits of porn for $500 that you and your friends all got together and then um, and then you go like that. Just some ideas. Uh, just some ideas. Will there be cars that you don't own, but you can rent from Uber? That's already a thing. It's called Zipcar. It's already a thing. And the Apple car and all these other things. There's many of these. Porn is bad for you. Porn is bad for you, you moron. Achilles, thank you so much. Love you. Thanks for looking out for us. There's, okay, this is what I'm, I'm being dead serious right now, okay? Um... <laughs> Gray, Gray, hold on one second. Gray Yeon Wannabe says, Hello, we were just watching your reaction to Milo on Ico's stream, and DM, you're 100% right about the absolute gay energy. Yes. Yes. I know. It, it's, oh my, mm. I, I'm so excited you guys are enjoying that. Tell Ico I said hello. Yeah. So, what I'm trying to say here is that, uh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But the reality is that that shit is going to get rough. 
The economy is fucking buckling, guys. Like, we can't pretend. We can't pretend that it, that like, the, the Biden ignore everything until nothing happens is gonna stick around forever. We have to be willing to recognize that we have to do things differently. We have to come up with creative ways of solving each other's problems directly. We help each other. You got a friend who's a fucking artist? Take good care of that fucking friend. And that friend, take good care of your friends who aren't artists. Seriously. And get on this shit now. Don't fucking dilly-dally. You, if you, you, we want to live nice together, okay? We can't stave off all the hardships, but together you can live a better life. You can live a more happy life. You can live a life, maybe even one that's happier than you live right now. Imagine this with me for one second. All of this started with us talking about work. Imagine, hold on, imagine with me for a second that it was possible for you to never work a job again. And you would still live just as comfortably as if you had. Can you imagine that? Ima would you take that deal? What if it meant that you had to do some chores for you and your friends every day? Would you still take it? I would. I totally would. I would, I would wake up and make, co make coffee and a full fucking breakfast every single morning for every person I knew if it meant I didn't have to work a job again. But guess what? How are people... Oh, here, Manticore. Ooh, good question. Good question. Good question. Manticore. How are people supposed to live when you need medication to survive? If shit collapses this fucking hard, then getting access to HRT medications or autoimmune disorders will be almost impossible. So we're just going to die? Wrong. 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 That's where you're wrong. Guess what? You can make it. We can make it. Anybody can. Did you know that they do it already right now? Just did you did you know that people are already doing it right now? Did there are chemists sitting right now watching me right now? There are chemists who could make half of the drugs right now, and the only thing stopping them is maybe legislation, depending on where you live. Maybe? <sighs> but guess what? I don't know that it will go that far. Okay? But on it, yes, please. If you are a chemist, I'm dead serious. I'm serious. Chemists, please. Zanraid! Hold on a second, everybody. We're just going to put a small pause here. Welcome to all of the Xander Hall viewers. The Zimps. Welcome to the Zimps. So happy to have you all here. Please come over and watch on demonmama.com forward slash live. Demonmama.com forward slash live. Please. We would love to have you over here. We're having a crazy cool talk, and then we're going to do some petty fun drama. So if you're here, please come get comfy. Uh, we're talking about a lot of stuff. It's been a wild ride. My name is Demon Mama. I'm fun as fuck, and yeah. If shit gets that fucking bad, I have a feeling that people will have to revolt at one point. They just have to. That's a weird question. Hold on. That's a weird thing. People are losing it. Do you realize people are losing it right now? You just haven't lost it yet. I thought DIY HRT wasn't good. Like the blood work involved is pretty important to check your levels. How do people check to make sure they don't overdose on it and cause health problems? Okay, listen. <sighs> Here we go. Okay, let's talk about this. We're going to have a quick, a quick tough topic real quick. Okay, listen. First. First, we're going to talk about uh, the reality of DIY. Okay, the truth is nothing can replace having regular blood work done while taking HRT. However, what you will notice is that um, after you start HRT, most people only have blood work once every year or once every six months. Did you know that you can get blood work done independently? Did you know that if you have a friend with access to a lab, 
They can do your blood work for you. Did you know that the tools exist? You can buy, if you have the money or the supplier or whatever, or a group of people, you can, you could make, a, in America, you could make a private clinic where you do blood work just for trans people and nobody else. But you have to work together with people to do that. That's something you can do. Blood work is important, but you only have to do it once every year. But why? The reason why that you would think about these th these things, oh, just I mean, who cares, nuts? If you want to do it for just trans, I was just it was just a hypothetical for fuck's sake. It's mostly to keep an eye on things. HRT is quite low risk. That's just the truth. It's pretty low risk. Okay, it just is. All right. But let me tell you something. We live in, I want, I want you guys to listen for just a second. Um, we live in a country where the vast majority of people are blocked out of medical care at all. Do you know how many people in America take uh, fish antibiotics when they're sick? It's a shocking amount. We're in a bad state of affairs. Healthcare is a, is a luxury in America. And I personally think that even if you follow even the remotest version of the Hippocratic Oath, you have to recognize that there is a process of triage, that, pe that not just triage, but prioritization in general. People will seek help. So what you do is if people aren't getting the help they need, you find a solution to give them the help they need. The haters cannot stop Demon Mama. That is very true. Thank you very much for the tier one sub, Forlorn79. Happy to have you. We all need to work, like it or not, to pay the bills and get and get food. We cannot mooch on our friends. Nobody is asking, who the fuck said anything about mooching off your friends? Are you people... Are you... Oh my god. What is it with Twitch chatters? What is the, pro what is the problem with Twitch chatters? I've never once advocated... For anybody to not do things. I'm talking about people working together. Work. Work. Is a very specific concept. That involves going to a job. And being told to do something. There is labor of many forms. People do labor freely. Right now. Okay this stream. I only. I did this stream for free. Free. Completely for free. For eight months. Before I started making any money, any meaningful money, I did the show for free. Just just because I would wake up in the morning and say, hey, maybe someday this will be successful. Whatever. Work is a forced and coercive project, and I'm against it. How do you make friends if you have no friends? You have to commit to going out and experiencing new things, to going to the places where people are and trying to meet them. I would highly recommend, if, you have, if you're struggling to make friends right now, consider joining a Discord like mine or any other one. Discords are a great place to start networking with people safely and comfortably. And then you can start figuring out what you can do. And our Discord is uh, fun, fun as fuck. Here you go right here. Listen to this. Here we go. Frog Whisperer. Great to see you again, Frog Whisperer. Much love. Hey, been busy working, so I've been a mere lurker, but I ran in to share my info. I'm a chemist that works in a medical lab with med techs. Med techs are also certified phlebotomists that can draw blood and do blood work. Many medical labs do independent blood work for cash. You just come in and get it drawn. If anyone is in the Chicago area or Northwest Indiana, I can help you. Do you see? Do you see what I'm talking about? That's what I'm talking about. E there are thousands of people in America that have the skills necessary to provide the medical care. The only thing that stops them is decorum, rules, maybe in some places certain laws, norms, wealth, maybe. But it's not a lack of skill. It's not a lack of the ability to provide things. We have to share our skills with each other. 
It's not about just breaking the law. It's not always against the law. It's not against the law. Uh, it's not against the law for me to, um, for me to, like, I don't even know. It doesn't even matter, okay? What matters, like, like we're not even talking about legal, legal shit here, okay? We're not talking about illegal things. We're talking about things that aren't, aren't, that exist in legal gray areas or aren't illegal. Would it be a stupid question to ask, where have you been, skew it? Skew it, welcome back. I got banned, wrongfully. And Twitter, uh, uh, Twitch undid the ban. I got, uh, I got, uh, report bombed by some people. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mal, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be back, for sure. Happy to be back on Twitch. It's always good. Uh, t losing Twitch means I lose half my audience. It really sucks. Uh, do I think it was DG Jeers? It was, uh, in fact, I can show you this. Watch this. Ready? Here, I'm gonna blow your mind. You wanna know how I know it was DG Jeers? Watch this. Ready? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna blow your fucking mind. You get fucking ready? Take a look. Take a look. Bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. This was 20 minutes, approximately 20 minutes before my stream went down. Mind waves, and this was retweeted by basically all of the major DG Jeers. Just so you know. At directly directly advocating for me to be reported falsely reported by the way because i was not harassing anybody now, this guy's a partner by the way guy's a motherfucking partner is that the same pixie that's rgr's girlfriend yeah how curious right that is rgr's girlfriend that retweeted that yep fuckers swear to fucking god This was that was after the Doe Riley debate. RGR is a stupid waste of everyone's time, and everyone should forget that acronym. <sighs> okay, but like, who would diagnose and treat people like me with disabilities that are really hard to diagnose? I have a hard time seeing an anarchist world where I don't die. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, let's talk about that, okay? Let's talk about that right there. Who would diagnose and treat people like me with disabilities that are, are that are really hard to diagnose? I have a hard time seeing an anarchist world where I don't die. Um, first of all, okay, there's a couple of things. It, there's a there's a couple there's a couple of questions here that are going on. First of all, we're not we aren't actually talking about an anarchist world, okay? Um, is the first part. We're right now we we haven't mentioned a, an anarchist world at all. We can talk about that in the future, but we're not talking about that right now. Um, however, I don't know if you know this, but right now in America, a lot of people die from preventable things. And in addition, people with rare disabilities often die because the only treatment that's available to them is is uh, behind a paywall. A lot of a lot of people who have rare illnesses end up spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to travel to a single doctor who may know uh what they're what they're dealing with and that single doctor might have is is often the doctor that discovered the shit you see what i mean like this happens to trans people already there are as of right now i think three doctors remaining at the moment in the united states who openly do uh, sexual reassignment surgery, aka a vaginoplasty or a phalloplasty. There's about three doctors, three, and they are expensive. And most covered, and well, now in some places, in most states, it's not covered by insurance. In some states, it is. Um, there are only a cup. There are a handful of people, three, and now they have. Now listen, they have uh, some apprentices that they've been training. But guess what? It's considered high risk. So a lot of the apprentices will learn and then never actually do the surgeries because it's considered high risk by insurance. Three people, three doctors in an entire country of hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of people. Three doctors. You have to go and find them. And that's only really possible because of networks of trans people who tell you about it. 
No, three. In Canada, there's two. There's more surgeons than three. Yeah, there's more now. There's like there's like more than three now, but not I'm not I'm telling you, not much. If you go and look for doctors in the US who will do SRS, there it is very small. Incredibly small. So um so like um yeah, Canada has one in Montreal, one or two. I think they have two. One of them's Brassard, Brassard, I think his name is. Um Yeah. And now hopefully that's changing. But the problem is that we already exist in a world where people with certain conditions and keep in mind being trans is, is not rare. There are as many trans, there's more trans people than there are redheads. It's not rare. And, uh, and it's already almost impossible to find those people. So that's a separate problem. We need free, we need to build systems that distribute information. Hey, imagine this. Let's, let's for a second. Uh, let's for just one second imagine um, a uh, let's imagine a world an anarchist world where there are no more centralized medical institutions but instead there are tools that are maintained by communities what if there was basically a a giant global anarchist uh, wik Wikipedia but for medicine where any doctor in the world who was trying to help people could go and educate themselves, talk to other doctors easily, connect with doctors across the world with no central authority, but with the goal of helping people and teaching them. And there could be even people who are deeply involved. Say somebody appears on the Wikimed forums and is like, uh, hi, I live in a remote community in Alaska. Somebody here is having these symptoms. Can anyone help me? And then somebody responds and goes, here's what I know about this. Do, 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 do. Do you need, do you need this? Do you need that? Blah, 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 blah. And then they work it out. We already do that now. Do you know that, that WebMD has completely changed medicine? You know that? WebMD is actually, literally, WebMD has literally helped me. I found, I self-diagnosed um, that I had benign proximal, uh, fuck, what's it fucking called? Benign proximal vertigo. It's where you get crystals in your ear. And I looked that up on, on WebMD and WebMD had a link to a very, very easy at-home exercise that cycles the liquid in your ears. And I was for, for a couple of days, some of you may remember this, um, for a couple of days, I was, I was extremely dizzy on stream and I was saying, Hey, I'm really dizzy on stream. And it turns out wet web MD had a link to a physical, a real physical therapy thing you can do where you lay down and you move your head in a certain way. And it forces your body to cycle out the liquid in your ears, which flushes out the crystals. And I didn't have vertigo anymore. I would not be pursuing an EDS diagnosis unless I had access to the internet. My doctors have been utterly stumped. Yes. Listen, guys, doctors, the centralized doctor shit is not as good as everybody thinks it is. I remember, oh my God, guys, I've told this story on stream before, but I remember when I moved, when I moved to California, I was talking to my doctor and I was telling my doctor the HRT prescription that I had been on for years since my orchiectomy. And my doctor said, well, don't you need to be on Spiro, Spironolactone? And I said, no, I don't need Spironolactone anymore because I don't have balls. And Spironolactone is, suppresses testosterone. And they were like, hmm, hmm. And then I looked in the, I saw in the window behind them of the, the little door behind them, they had Wikipedia open for Spironolactone. They were just looking at Wikipedia and arguing with me about the, the prescription I had had for five years. I'm not kidding you. Yes, Wikipedia. Yes. They do it all the time. Like, if you know anything, I'm not kidding you. This happens all the time. My, my fucking amazing, my fucking amazing uh, clinic that I go to here in Seattle. Do you know what they have up? on every computer, a shortcut, a WebMD. WebMD for doctors. They have 
a built-in shortcut. I've looked on the desktop while I was waiting. I just looked at the desktop they left there and they have a WebMD app that just helps them look up symptoms. Doctors do this fucking shit. It's art. They already do the shit that I'm talking about. It's just there's a whole bunch of other bullshit on top of it that is designed not to help patients, but to facilitate health insurance. To facilitate health insurance. Spironolactone doesn't suppress testosterone. It washes out of your system. Spiro is a water pill. You're a moron. It does. You're an idiot. I need this person to shut the fuck up. They're so annoying to me. Holy fucking shit. I need this person to be like long time. Here we go. Time out 24 hours. There we go. <sighs> Yes. Okay. Yeah, bicalutamide is the one that prevents uptake. Uh, listen, there's a lot of things I could talk about. We're not going to do it right now, okay? Yeah, I, I don't I don't like Spyro. I got an Orky because I didn't like Spyro, okay? There you go. But let me tell you something, okay? This is the sort of way that I want you all to start thinking. I want you to get creative. Every single one of you who's in my audience, all of the hundreds of people who are watching my... Um, my show right now, uh, much, much love, follow, subscribe, like, throw some donuts my way so I can keep making this and not, uh, you know, and, and buy nice things and whatever food and whatever for my family. Um, but what I'm in in encouraging you all to do is to th begin to think about life in a different way, okay? Think about the things that you need in your daily life. If you just, just take a little, as a little exercise, just think about the stuff you feel you cannot live without. And if there are things that you cannot live without, that you don't know how you would source it if there was a societal issue like a supply line interruption, for example, maybe you should think about what steps would need to be taken so that you would have that thing that you need. For me, Hey, right said Rob. Thank you so much. Right, right side Rob. Thank you very much for the tier one sub. Deeply appreciate that. I would have to build my own Fortnite. Yeah, well, okay. All right, I can't help you with the Fortnite. Well, maybe I can. Listen, mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll have to figure about figure that out. Okay, let's figure that one out. Maybe the world is better without Fortnite. I have a book on local plants that grow in the wild. Uh, in North America that are used medically, like a plant you can use to prevent fr frostburn. Weren't you planning to do a sort of HRT 101? Yes, I'm, I want to do that at some point. It's just, the, the thing is, like, I already get a lot of heat for doing, like, uh, for, for uh, I don't want to do, I don't want to substitute people's medical advice. I can't. Like, I'm not that good. However, I can give people advice, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but, so, uh, of course. We need to go on a speaking tour? Hey, maybe someday. Yeah, maybe someday. Um, what I want to see is I want to see that if the, uh, oh, oh, for sure. Oh, Kropotkin, if, if the, if internet fucking sucks, I'm going to still do this shit. I'm not fucking giving up. You think I'm going to stop putting my words out there? I'm a, I'm a blabbermouth. Nah, I'm not giving up. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm going to keep going. I'll find a way around it. I'll do radio. Yeah, do radio. That's about, that's the next thing. Guys, you know why radio is successful, right? Um, you know why radio is fucking successful, right? As in right now, why it's successful? Right-wing radio is successful because everybody has radio. It's free. It's fucking free. Everyone and their mother has a radio. You can listen to it anywhere and it's free. That's why the right wingers fucking kicked our kicked the everybody's ass and took over America because they gave away their shit for free. What type of professional should I speak with if I'm considering HRT? Talk to your GP. 
a lot of GPs, depending on your GP, a lot of GPs are very open with HRT. Some general practitioners will give you G will give you HRT outright. An endocrinologist, an endocrinologist is not where you need to start. Uh, an endocrinologist, you want to start at a GP. And then they'll probably refer you to a therapist who will then maybe re refer you to an endocrinologist. It depends. You never need to go to a specialist first. Just talk to your GP. Yeah. Some GPs will send you to an endocrinologist. It depends on the GP, but you don't have to start by going to a, a one. Yes. And Gray Yeon Wannabe says, look up informed consent clinics nearby. Um, not every state has informed consent clinics, but those are the best place to go. Those are the best place to go. Yeah. Planned Parenthood. If you have a Planned Parenthood near you, chances are they offer uh, informed consent uh, HRT. Uh, informed consent lets you skip all the hoops because guess what? HRT is not that dangerous. The reality is most people do not ever need to go to an endocrinologist for basic hormones. Did you know that cis people get fucking... Cis people get testosterone and estradiol pills daily and they never have to go to a fucking end, uh, endocrinologist. It's ridiculous. Literally daily. It... I've told this story before on stream. I've told you about the HRT ad that blew my mind when I was like a when I was just when I had just come out. I was dry. I was uh, working in upstate New York, and I listened, and there was an ad for HRT for old men. It was specifically for old men. It was like, have you are you having trouble in the bedroom? Are things just not as spicy as they used to be? You should talk to your doctor about getting HRT today. Hormone repra replacement therapy can get your testosterone levels back up to where they should have been not kidding you a fucking ad the truth is the the the, the hard truth is that the american medical system has been built to facilitate insurance because guess what if to do anything you need to go to a, a specialist well guess what specialists cost a lot of money because they're specialized and so a gp sends you to a specialist and the specialist gets lots of money from the insurance company which ensures that you keep paying for your insurance premium because you wouldn't be able to afford that specialist if you didn't have your insurance horrible just fucking horrible Yeah, the informed consent clinic I went to still mostly served older cis women dealing with menopause. Same thing. When I was in my home state, the really rural state, I had to drive two and a half hours to go to the only doctor in the state who did HRT. And that doctor was in charge of a fertility clinic. Most of the patients he saw were people struggling with fertility needing to balance their hormones. Yep, 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 yep. So, this segment, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, okay. So, this segment, uh, has been really fun. We definitely got off rails a little bit, but the point is, we are at a point where a massive amount of people, to wrap it up, we are at the point where a massive amount of people have stopped giving a fuck. And what that means is that a lot of shit is going to start falling apart really fast. When people stop, when workers stop giving a shit, shit doesn't get delivered on time. Things don't show up when they're supposed to. Stuff gets forgotten. Things get, things spoil. Uh, stuff gets overlooked. And when there's thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people not giving a shit anymore, shit gets very chaotic very quickly. We need to get serious. Yeah. People got to get serious. Taco Bell, speaking of of the lucky the lucky remaining blessings of modern life, Taco Bell. Some of these were supposed to have potatoes in them, but okay. I don't I think they might have just not. They might have just not. Uh that's okay. Uh is there is there a drink or anything? No, no drink, sorry. Okay. Did are you going to order the Bevmo thingy? Mm -hmm. Okay, sick. Did you like one of those? 
Oh, is it here? Oh, yeah, I would love one of those, please. Taco Bell. Listen, the last... The, I, I This is the safe Taco Bell. I got food poisoning from another Taco Bell. I got June Shine. Yeah, I got June Shine. I gotta show you this shit. This shit's fucking sick. And now... Um... Taco Bell, no, 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 Taco Bell is generally good, but this is the better Taco Bell. We went to one that was not good. I got real sick. Yeah, I'm back on Twitch. Oh, sick. Wait, oh, if you have, if it's this one, oh, can I have this one? But can I have, yeah, can I have a cup to show, show it off to the chat? Guys, this shit is fucking sick, okay? I'm gonna show you some magic here. So this is called Midnight Painkiller. This is a alcoholic kombucha. It's Fucking awesome. And I'm about to show you something really cool with it. It's called June Shine. Yeah. June Shine. Alcoholic uh, kombucha. And watch this shit. This fucking shit is awesome. I'm going to show you this. It's really cool. Hi, queer spam catcher. Happy to see you. All kombucha is alcoholic, but most of it is very, very, like literally mini mini minuscule. Oh, sick. Watch this shit. You guys ready? Watch this. Okay. Watch the cup. Watch the cup. Okay. Watch this shit. Ready? Look at it. Watch it. Watch it. See it changing? Do you see it changing? Look at that color change, huh? Give it a second. It's going to keep getting darker. See how it's getting darker and darker and darker? It eventually turns black. And I'll show you when it turns black. It starts clear, and then it slowly turns black. It has a little tiny bit of activated... Has a little tiny bit of activated charcoal in it. See, it's already changing. It's changing again. It's fucking sick. It's so delicious. It's so good. Is it oxidizing? Yeah, it oxidizes when you flip it. It's pineapple charcoal. It's fucking delicious. Oh my god. <gasps> Grilled cheese. Ah. Oh. Home. Mm. Mm mm mm. Home. All right, everybody. You know what time it is? Doesn't char activated charcoal affect hormones? It can, but there's not enough in this to make it meaningfully dangerous. Can we get more prepper segments? Oh, you don't even know. Yes. Yes. Those of you who keep watching, those of you who keep watching my channel, you guys are going to learn so much in the future. Just watch. Watch this space. Keep an eye on it. Subscribe. Keep Follow me. Ico time. Let's watch the Ico one. Where the hell did the Ico link go? I had the Ico link. Hold on. Let me grab the Ico link. Oh, so this is the one. Okay, so... Oh, so it was today. Oh, shit. Vosh talk today with Ico? Hello. Howdy. Oh, cool. All right. So what we are going to review right now is we are going to review... Whoa, God damn it, Malcolm. Thank you so much for the raid. Happy to have you. God damn it, Malcolm. We got to plan something together, buddy. I would love to fucking do something with you. I'm sorry. Uh, my schedule is really bad until like January. But in January, let's fucking do something together. Thank you so much for the raid. I would really, really fucking love it. Um, those of you who just arrived, come over to my website, demonmama.com forward slash live. I promise you it's better than the Twitch chat. Um, we're happy to have you. You can watch. You can sign in with your Twitch. But we'd love, love to have you. Um, this, uh, we're about to just, we're about to vibe and listen to a conversation between Ico and Vosh. Um, I know there's some people who don't like Vosh. I really like Vosh personally, um, but I get it. I get it if everybody has their different things and whatever. This is a cool conversation. I fucking love Ico. So I figured we'd have fun. Um, it's going to be a little drama, but I wanted to see it. So... You know, a Voosh raid? 
Oh, Voosh Rad. I was like, Voosh Raid? Vooshites rise up. Anyway. This shit is good. All right, let's watch this together, shall we? Let's get comfy and watch this. I want to react. It's been a while since I've done some react stuff. Uh, no surprise, I'm sure. Hi. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Ugh. What are you doing? How's stream going? I'm doing okie dokie. Uh, we're currently reading up about how uh, ingrate Hispanic people don't like our woke white Latinx uh, terminology. So we're, you know, we're engaging oh. in that discourse. Oh, well, I'll have to get a link from someone. Sounds interesting. So um, what's on your mind today? So um, I I haven't watched your entire uh, video I was going. I was going to finish it on stream bef right before, but I got a little bit of a late start. But um, I forgot. I like Ico a lot, the most, by the way. Uh, recent uh, gender something about an uncucked gender take. Um, right, you know, right, yeah. You know what I mean. Um, but the I thought at least like the the amount that I saw was, um, I think, uh, maybe being okay. I'm saying this kind of in the wrong order. There's been a lot of the discourse going on, and I've seen you be cited for some hmm. pretty um, yikes behavior. Who is Iko? Oh, yeah, I got to put Iko's. I, I did this wrong. Hold on. Let me correct this. Iko rules. Watching Vosh and Iko rules. Iko is a really cool streamer. We've done a lot of stuff together. We've talked multiple times. I really, really, really like Iko. Iko and I get along super well, uh, even though we have some some disagreements. Uh, Iko's a lot more a lot. I wouldn't say more critical. I'm pretty critical of Vosh, but Iko's a little harsher. I would say, Iko rules. And mm -hmm. I, based on what I had seen, I don't believe that you and uh, those people share the same takes. And since uh, some people were like, "Oh well, if you don't like my take, take it up with Vosh." She, her. So I decided to take it up with you. Um, the fact that I don't, she, they. Okay, I, sorry. I felt like if I, if it were me, I would definitely want to know that someone was saying things in my name. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I get the sort of, um, you know, if if you take issue with what I'm saying, you take issue with what they're saying, sort of thing. Really quick, because yeah. the chat's being annoying. Could you introduce yourself and pronouns and the whole spiel? Oh, hi, I'm Iko Rules, and I go by she, they. And there we go. Yeah. There we are. That's about it. All right, nailed it. Uh all in one. Yeah, okay. So what are, what are what are these takes? I've seen a bit of it. I saw there was um I saw there was some clip you sent me and it was it was it was Hans was agreeing with a person saying that xeno gender people were doing some kind of trans treachery or something <laughs> like that. I <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, I saw that. The trans traitor thing. Holy shit, that was when I was, like, not streaming and not paying attention to drama at all. But somebody sent me it, and it made me laugh so hard. Holy fucking shit. Hans completely, like, talk about a guy. He's he, he's straight up. Gayfesh, that meme that Gayfesh made about, like, he's, like, two weeks away from fighting a, a goose naked in the middle of a public park. That is absolutely true. Fucking ha ham of Harkir is like straight up, right? Like one week away from YouTube video of him punching a goose drunk in the middle of naked in the middle of a fucking field. Completely lost the plot. Hey, hell yeah, Uncle Gumball. Also heard there was a debate. Tra yeah, trans treason. And there was a debate between Hans and the leftist owl who I've talked to. Oh, leftist and, owl. Uh, I did not. Something like that. But I, I have not seen the debate. Is it worth watching? Maybe we'll watch it afterwards. Oh, they take a brief look. Okay, okay. Wait, the goose thing really happened? No, not yet, but... Ooh, okay. Yeah, I should... I should. Oh, they're going to show the relevant parts? Okay, sick. Let's do it. I haven't seen the debate. Oh, okay. Um, If you had happened to watch the intro... Because it's, it's his video, so it's what Hans okay. thinks makes his takes look good. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's a very grandiose uh i will never i will never respect neo pronouns because of you know i will stand up for the rights of trans people by never engaging and you know Stup- so on so idiotic forth. argument do you, do you mind if i yeah. look at that real quick if there's if yeah. there's the intro is kind of indicative once one second okay i have it up um oh boy here we see. go I think I think we might be um, miscommunicating a bit. No, no, no. Um, I'll let you know what it's. No, like. no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna I'm gonna reflect and and talk with. Uh, Absolutely, and, and thank you. Fine. My Get your dumbass out of here. You literally talk of all this shit and you come out. You can't fucking defend any of your fucking shit because you haven't fucking thought it through. I oh. have. My position oh. is completely fucking consistent. I will <laughs> argue for the rights of fucking trans people, and you are fucking <laughs> pathetic. Literal soy rage. Can I can I just be honest? Literal soy rage? Like, it's, it's, it's just fucking soy rage. That you will literally harass me for fucking months with this shit. Come on, get basic fucking questions that you probably haven't even thought about because you're in your fucking basic ass bitch Twitter bubble and you can't fucking answer them. So you sit silently because you can't refund the question. Now you're just gonna fucking dip. Yeah, fucking run away because you can't defend your dumb stupid ideology. I'm really fucking sorry. I'm gonna be your fucking basis arguing for the rights of fucking trans people because people who are trans cannot choose not to be trans. All right. Uh, he used to be so nice. Okay, well, um, all right, now we know, I guess. Yeah, yeah, now we, now we know. Um, so, I, I don't know Leftist Owl, um, I just, I saw a portion of this, and I also, you know, um, I think that this is kind of being very, it's a very confusing subject in general mm. i'm not a gender ex- hans was gay fish says, hans is one of the people calling for me to be banned from twitch what a surprise what a surprise hey hans guess what me getting banned from twitch is never going to help your shit ass numbers nobody watches your stupid show because one you're not funny two you fell off three you rage like a soy cuck and four fuck you there you go bam let's continue expert i just see people getting um, you know, attacked based on like misinformation. And unfortunately, you know, people use misinformation in different ways, like to wield power over other people, some people out of fear to keep them in line, lest something uh, terrible happen and, you know, kind of like sweep you under the rug. Um, uh, Sansol, I think, is probably someone that should get stuff clarified to as well not you know mm. whether it's you or or just anyone that he would listen to because uh he was calling Cringe. leftist owl transphobic for his takes and like kind of seemed very like uh worried about the what impact. the fuck is going on um he said that leftist owls takes um were what leads to conversion therapy um what? okay and, and that is not exactly the case um so I guess it's really just I see a lot of people getting harassed and and uh, I think it's kind of like a there's a gender trinary going on now and people acknowledge that that their non-binary isn't just like one singular like monolith but can I just say Iko is so based? Listen, Iko is so based it's not even funny. Just so you all know, like. Iko isn't a debate streamer, so Iko doesn't really do debates, really. But Iko is consistently one of the most based, uh, consider like considerate, um, and open-minded people I've ever met. It's fucking sick. I I like literally. I've known Iko for like a year and a half. Iko is so fucking pog. What a t- and also hilarious as fuck. Yeah, she does like um. Hans was for a provisional ban. He said I was banned for harassing Riley. Oh my god. It appears Demon Mama has been temporarily banned from Twitch. If this was due to the documented support of harassment of a- RGR. Documented support of harassment of RGR. Okay, dude. What are you fucking... I wouldn't see a problem. However, it looks to simply be from mass reporting. If that's the case, it should be reversed. Cuck. Cuck. 
at the same time, they'll they'll still say it. Actually, you know what I I noticed in um in the the um the chat comment that Hans agreed with the the special snowflakes trans. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah they uh they yeah she they she they um oh yeah people say that I I liked a tweet for disbarment. No, I liked a joke where somebody was like, oh, hey, thank you for telling me uh, about the Maryland bar. This was a good idea. And the joke was literally that people complaining and retweeting. The, okay, the joke was that the original post to the, to the Maryland bar got four likes. Um, got like four likes. And then they, somebody retweeted it and it got like 127 retweets. And the joke was that you just gave more people the idea to do the thing that you're supposedly against. And I and I, I liked the tweet that was the joke about that. And then people said that that was me supporting it. Even though I literally did multiple tweets, my lead mod did, mul did a tweet specifically saying this. I said it on video multiple times that I don't support that path of action. But that I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to actively denounce people who felt that that way. It's so, guys, guys, here's the thing. None of it matters. DGG will make things up. They will either twist things completely, or if they can't twist anything, they will just make it up. Remember when I got banned for something Mel said? I got banned from all of Destiny's uh, domains, from the website, from the Reddit, etc. My username got banned. I never even said it. It was a tweet from Mel that was used as justification to ban me. So stupid. It doesn't matter. These people are just idiots. They are just dis dishonest and toxic. It's that simple. Reason kind of thing. Yeah. So fucking annoying. Yeah, I'll turn. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, I forgot to turn that on. Yeah, okay, so, um... Oh, what I wanted to say was, uh, the, the person who said that, uh, what is it, the thing? I just scrolled up. I'll read the, the tweet. True! It True was, awesome. um, okay, so Hans agreed with this, uh, 100% right. Xenogenders are special snowflakes engaging in unintentional trans treason. There's no reason to go beyond male, female, slash NB. And I noticed that they use male and female and non-binary. And I, um, which is kind of like revealing to me. So what do you, what do you think? Well, I there think it's kind of really stupid because non-binary is an umbrella term. It's not a specific. Yes, non -binary thank you. Not in the binary, right? Thank I mean, you, Vosh. There's, yeah. no, there's no incompatibility between non-binary as a concept and any xenogender. There's no, there's, there's no discord between those ideas. What I, um, hold on. Gender Juice says, if I'm correct, you said it would only be brought, it should only be brought to the bar if she continues your responsible behavior. Otherwise, it's not fair if they change for the better later. No, uh, what I said was, I, I don't care if other people who aren't me come to the conclusion that her behavior behavior was unethical her behavior look hold on her behavior was unethical riley grace roshong lied about someone not only about me but more importantly lied about another twitch partner a colleague of hers maybe she doesn't maybe maybe riley doesn't like doe but it doesn't matter riley lied for months Propagating accusations with no evidence against somebody else. That is unethical. So I don't care. I am not going to write to the Maryland bar. That seems like a waste of my time. But if other people feel like that's the case, I'm not going to denounce them. Why would I denounce somebody for doing something that literally the, the Maryland bar exists to do? Yeah, I'm not going to. Sorry. Anyway, no worries. It's all good. I'm not mad at you. I'm just being clear about what I'm saying. I think... I mean, I, I think the little bit that I saw, the idea trans people can't choose to be trans, that's kind of an odd one to me because it reminds me a little bit of a lot of arguments that took place I agree. in the gay community. I agree, Danny. Where there are people who argue that gay people can't help the way they are and there are people who argue that sexuality is really complicated and that to an extent yeah. you do have some agency over your lifestyle and your attractions, which I think I lean more towards. I think it kind of misses the point ultimately because even if you make the argument that there's some degree of agency, 
in um in 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 what your sexuality or your gender identity or whatever else is that doesn't validate the concept of conversion therapy conversion therapy isn't bad because it doesn't work it's bad because it's torture even if conversion therapy worked perfectly which it doesn't uh right. it would remain torture that's the issue with it you know yeah, yeah and it's against absolutely. your will absolutely um it's like uh, um another part of and i mean it's it's short so it's i think it's worth um you know not not necessarily watching i agree stream, but just getting like a sense of of the the mind the mindset the disconnect um at least within like someone as an example like hans uh the the idea that because something is a choice you don't have to respect it that's another thing that he says if it is a choice i don't why should i respect starshine dub all i care about is that vosh has improved his take that's literally all i that's literally all i care about Vosh has had some positions I don't agree with in the past. All that matters to me is that he's figured it out and is doing better now. That's what matters to me. That's it. You, which is also a I know, strange I get argument. Me too, but... Because know. then, I mean, I, I've i decided that I don't need to respect Hans's name. So, I mean, now well, his it, name is... Well, it's kind of... It's a transmedicalist argument to an extent, That's right? Great. The idea that the legitimacy of trans people is rooted not in any kind of like ideological respect for who they are, but rather you think of them as a sort of, you know, victims of medical circumstance. Like they're 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 legitimized through the pain yes. they feel. Sure, yes. But it's only really. Oh my god! Oh my god! There's an article about this. There's an article about this. Hold on. There's an article about this. My new vagina won't make me happy, and it shouldn't have to. Okay? Incredible article. Okay? By Andrea Long Chu. Andrea Long Chu got totally roasted and, and, and dunked on for this article, but she was 100% right. This is an article about how she is still going to be depressed and still going to be oppressed, even though she finally got SRS. And the entire article is supposed to be about how everyone wants like trans surgery to be this magic bullet that fixes a broken person. But that's not how it works. That isn't it at all. It helps you live a better life, sure. But the reality is that trans people are treated poorly in our society. And that's the, ba the main reason why trans people are miserable. Yeah, here's the link. Here's the link for anybody who wants to read it. I think it's a really good article. I, I stand by it. Anyway, let's continue because they're suffering and we should be sympathetic to that and i think that's like i mean i think it's a it's, it's kind of how turfs think of womanhood too you know like womanhood is yeah. validated through the suffering of the oppression that you go through i think it's a really limited way of looking at things if for no other reason yeah sorry about that srs is sexual reassignment surgery yes oh god oh god that's scary miss nibiru and then because it yeah i heard i heard hunter did precludes them as the minority if trans people or women or whatever or or people of color were ever to achieve social parity they would no longer have the stigma that these people use to legitimize their identities or or advocating for their identities and at that point what do you do right i i was also i was thinking that i i feel like people don't there's a there's a lot of concern about like well like what about the optics of this if we let people behave this way or that way um i i feel for me i don't know about a lot but what really bothers me is when um people tell strangers that they have to like wait till the next generation to be free or something like that when there's no actual harm it's like like, hold on, you're too weird. You're too weird. You stay that. You stay back there. Don't let the normie see you. Like, I. How am I gonna? And this is a conversation I actually had with Sansol, where I was trying to explain, like, that's it's great. You you advocate for the rights of people. Speak to the people that are your audience or your the people around you. That's cool. But don't tell, you know, the person. Don't tell trans people like what their limits are. Um, 
So when, I've when heard. They're not. Good night, queer spam it's catcher. Thanks for coming by. It's it's just asserting their existence in time. Um, I think it's like, oh well, it, in case you have kids, your kids can maybe be free to express themselves and so on and so forth. But yeah. Yeah, no, it's putting a yeah. I go sick, on Lady Hopium. Freedom is how. Um, I bet you guys would MLK have fun hanging out. The Birmingham letter or the, the letter from a Birmingham jail. I think. Um, I, I understand, you know, there are always optical considerations to make, but I've never really been sympathetic to the idea that, like, you know, if you push gender theory one inch further, we're not going to have trans rights, you know? I've just never <laughs> seen that argument where... The thing is, like, you can talk about neo-pronouns or xenogender or whatever, but these Hell things yeah, don't involve Good to hear. any, like, systemic push. Like, there isn't some addis additional set of policy prescriptions that the more woke, xenogender-loving trans people are really going for. At least not that I've really noticed with any real, like, push behind it. It's just kind of like a esoteric element of self-expression people engage in. So when people are like, okay, well, if you go this far, how are we going to argue with the conservatives? The conservatives weren't listening to us anyway. I've been doing this for years and I've been seeing them do it for years before. They weren't listening to us before yep. people took neo pronouns seriously. At no point in this conversation yep, 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 yep. Have, have they been like, oh, okay, I get that as long as you don't go any further. So, yeah. so I, I just don't know how, how that works really. Actually, because I grew up in like fundamentalist evangelical Christianity, um, and so I go and I talked about this in the past of the same conservative arguments against people's rights coming from both sides of the pro and anti rights, um, like like people that are being debated and the people who are debating against them, and um, it's. I think it's very disconnected from actual real life. Like Sansal basically said that he needs he needs to be able to make the most perfect argument to the the you know the people who don't want rights for trans people. And that's really not how it works because that's not their their motivation and there there's no reason for them to ever change their Yeah, there are omni and, uh, uh, some static tons. Yep. So if something just let let people do the thing that makes them i don't know what i completely lost my train of thought well it's um, you can construct an argument which is unassailable from the right but very open to attack from the left really easily right so for yeah. example back in the slave days you know maybe the conservative argument could have been or at least conservative abolitionist argument it could have been okay we should free the slaves but like they're still not like white people, you know, we should keep like, obviously, they're not the same, you know, we should still limit their social facilities and so on and so forth. Now that argument would have been, I imagine, quite a bit more convincing to the slaveholders than a, a radically libertarian abolitionist saying, you know, that actually we're all equal, so on and so forth. But that doesn't make it a better argument. In fact, it creates problems down the line. This is kind of a failure of reconstruction. Hmm. We didn't go far enough after the Civil War. Yeah, the Dr. Jellicle, you bring up a great point. It used to be the main political talking point was born was was born in the wrong body, and that's changed over time. Just so you know, people who used to argue in public the argument you uh, born in the wrong body often didn't actually believe that. Like most trans people would not describe themselves as being born in the wrong body. That's not how most trans people felt, but it was the thing that made sense politically. So a lot of people used it, but it had downsides, right? Because while you're making the argument of, um, while you're trying to make the argument of like, uh, of like born in the wrong body, you're granting credence to essentialism. I don't think that most, I don't think there's a single way that most trans people feel, but if you ask, if you go ask trans people, if they feel like they were born in the wrong body, most of them will, most trans people, and this was studied by the way, will answer differently. They'll say, I don't know if I really view it that way, unless they think that they're going to get uh, gate kept. And then they'll choose the answer that is going to get them the HRT they need to survive. Weird how that works, right? Yeah. Yep, 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 yep,
the fact that we were willing to put freedom on a timetable and say, okay, well, we'll have freedom for black people, but only up to about yay far. After that, it's separate but equal in Jim Crow laws. Yes, exactly. We essentially more. created a following century of, of segregation because we were unwilling to commit to the premise to begin with. Now, maybe we couldn't have had full equality day one, but we certainly didn't need 100 years of Jim Crow. And with the trans thing, like, we need to get our arguments sorted right now. And the fact of the matter is, I don't think the idea that non-binary is a third gender and trans people can't choose to be trans is a sustainable or effective long-term strategy of validating people outside traditional gender norms. We need something a bit more holistic than that. And the best- Wake and Jake says, I felt like I was born in the wrong body when I was small, probably because my ca my family was Catholic. I felt, I didn't feel like I was born in the wrong body. I just asked God if God would give me a female puberty and boobs. Unironically, I literally used to pray to God and ask him to give me a female puberty didn't happen well it did but in a weird roundabout way it was me who got it not god one thing i noticed with the born in the wrong body is that by me using it it low key key increased my self-loathing well right it's it, it's a certain framework that insists that you're like this flawed thing yeah why is vosh all of a sudden rebuilding bridges it's certainly a pleasant surprise it's something i wouldn't expect i i, I don't i don't i think vosh has always been pretty good about bridges um, Vosh can be really, really, really aggressive in debates, but he's always been pretty good at, uh, at being willing to talk with people, at least in my experience. So, I don't know. I feel like Vosh has been on a roll lately at having really, really good conversations, and I'm really happy with that. Because, um, as fun as spicy debates can be, the truth is, is that his viewers are going to gain a lot more from a healthy conversation with Iko personally they're going to become stronger and happier people they're going to get more out of his content than watching drama so i would really i'm really really happy to see that that's the case and i think he's been doing it for a while personally solution that i can really think of is to acknowledge the fundamental absurdity of gender respect people uh as they come you know and adopt so sort of long term prescriptive arguments in favor of gender's abolition oh yeah also vosh has been fucking killing it with funny jokes lately i've 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 been tuning into a couple vosh segments here and there i'm so happy uh oh oh cool can i have a can, would you bring me one of the other um flavors of the kombucha thank you appreciate that or at the very least the abolishment of gender roles you know exactly um yeah the... but it isn't it isn't it's fun it's just i understand it Gayfesh. i need to just write down the the thought you keep uh triggering thoughts in my mind as you speak and then i i need to just write them down um what i was thinking is yeah oh, that's fair mixed Dizzy. basically uh i get a oh, lot oh, of um oh well what about like how can you what about Topical the citrus. Uh, attack helicopter thing like you're becoming the thing like the straw like becoming the straw man I yeah. saw, um, no problem, Puerto it's Rican all, musician. It's stuck with me ever since I saw Riley say to towards Joe uh, a good amount of months ago, like, don't become the straw man. And it's, okay, well, do you believe the straw man? Is it a straw man? Or do you actually think that there are some specific people that we need to look out for within a group of pe other people this is so like good Iko. oh my god this is something Iko is really fucking good at Iko is very good at sussing out what people are actually trying to say and that is this is this is so on point they're shady they they may or may not be degenerate you know like that kind of thing um when in reality the, good night, the problem with that isn't the the person with an identity of any kind how does it feel to defeat god with your female puberty good it's the delicious it tastes amazing uh structure of dehumanization of this is a person who wants to be either an inanimate object or a fictional character and do thing do things to hurt other people that like get in other people's way that makes a mess that is like disgusting oh i finished the drink also, already so you're a something phobe if you don't respect me uh uh thank you for understanding some like that kind of stuff like the problem within that because i wasn't around during the gamer 
days or whatever. I've only been around for a couple years. So I didn't even know what it fully was. But when I read it, this is being used against, um, you know, non-binary trans people. True, like, Grime Dango. Or, like to oppress them because it's like, don't do that. Don't be make them right. And it's like, do you think that, like, I guess. I Gay Fesh says, Demon Mama, uh, Sansol called into Ico's stream last week and she called him on his accusation that our Discord had organized a harassment brigade. He ended up confessing there were only three people, one of which was a throwaway account and one of which was me. And he couldn't point to any of my tweets as con constituting harassment. Yes, because they lie. Including Sansol. They all lied. Because guess what? You want to know? Fucking tribalism is a hell of a drug. These motherfuckers are going to bat for Daddy Destiny. Because if they don't, they'll get made fun of by Daddy Destiny. Murder of Cross says something that just clicked in my head. One of the reasons it took me till my 30s to realize I was trans was this. I have to craft the perfect argument against the right mindset. It took people having honest conversations about their feelings to develop an understanding of myself and my own feelings. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Th there is this idea. That it's, that's, it's a conservative strategy. They're always on the attack, making you always on the defense. But guess what? You don't have to follow their rules if you don't want to. You don't. Let's continue. I feel like we don't talk enough through, like we get to a certain point and then we're like, oh, don't, don't be weird. And then we stop. But I think the only way is through because I feel like the discourse is on the level of a straw man. Like we're, there's a tarp between us and the grass. There's grass underneath, but we're like standing on the tarp and people keep shitting on it and we can't touch grass. Does that make sense? No, no, I get it. Well, I think, first of all, in terms of running a movement, you have to acknowledge that there are always going to be people who are the stereotype. We had this issue back during gay liberation as well, which is ongoing, but I think at least further along than it was in the 80s, where there were more social... Fresh says, this is such a good take uh, by Ico. It's like, expose everyone who thinks you need to be a quote-unquote good gay trans or, per or person of color. Uh, people fall will fall back into thinking different things are degenerate so quickly. Yeah, you have to push against it. You have to keep fighting it. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, it has to be an ongoing struggle to keep pushing. To, to challenge people to live authentically and not give in to the most disgusting, conservative, degenerate, uh, degenerate uh, pro uh, propaganda. Where they say everybody's a degenerate that's destroying the West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's respectability politics. It's assimilationism. Same shit. Actually conservative gays who are saying, you know, okay, quit wearing the booty shorts in public. All right, stop dressing like oh, a yes, flaming Oh, yes, yes, exactly, Wolfie. Yes, 100%. 100% like you know? agree the with you. The gay liberation came about not in spite of the most excessively gay people. They had no effect on it. In reality, there will always be people who meet the stereotype. They could be one in a hundred, a thousand, or ten thousand, but they will always exist. And I don't think there's much utility in, like, turning back on your movement to weed out the, like, very tiny, miniature portion of it that's, like, you know, acting in line with the expectations of conservatives. Because, you'll first of all, you'll never succeed. And second of all, historically, those groups aren't even what impede meaningful systemic advance. And, and and the conservatives will make them up either way. The attack helicopter gender came about in response to the existence of binary trans people. If they're yeah. going to go full attack helicopter gender at the existence of binary trans people, clearly they don't actually care whether or not anyone's identifying as attack helicopter gender. Like, back six years ago, they were making videos saying they literally identify as an attack helicopter. And if a person does today, what difference will there be in the title of their videos? They clearly don't care. Like, they'll just say Yeah, exactly. Way. They will lie. Right. Exactly. Yes. And I don't yes. think that... Yes, they will lie. I don't think people are completely... That's why you don't play that optics game. There. You just don't and do it. I guess, you know, like, when you have... Like, when you are... Um, I mean, I would imagine that when you are as large of a streamer as you are, you don't see, like, the, the individual little details unless someone brings them in front of your face. But I think that maybe it would be good if, in general, like we just had uh, more community conversations with different people to highlight, you know, it, I feel like people just get tired um, and then stop talking about it and just like kind of go away if they're one of the people who are being 
uh, harassed because I, you know, people as an extension of, of me just trying, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to say something if I see something. And, um, I think that a lot of people are misinterpreting what, what you mean because they're also making, yeah, they are saying the, don't be the attack helicopter thing or the, um, why doesn't, why, um, doesn't, uh, transracial work or, or, uh, how can you say that? Like, like, are you saying that, uh, a tur a tr ironically, the anti xenogender crowd think they're being hyper logical, but their arguments are full of fallacies and irrationality. Here's a secret. Are you ready? I'm going to give you all a hack. It's because they use the word logical, but what they mean is normal. That's what they mean. They mean that normal people would not think they're crazy. That's what they mean. I'm not kidding you. They say logical. They say consistent. They say pragmatic. They say all these different words. But what they mean is that normal people wouldn't treat them weird. That's what they mean. They mean normal. If you do that, you will understand the sock dem language. And turtle Rad norms. identity is the same as like uh, being a... Uh, a trans woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one. Bat Canary says, I also love how a lot of these people will cite ContraPoints, even though ContraPoints made her views very clear in the trans trender video that she agrees with my view. Yeah, I know. Trust me. Uh, it's fucking weird. It's really funny to me. It's... Uh, it's it's unfortunate. Sometimes I wish that, that like, ContraPoints would come in and just slap these people. But the problem is they would turn against that. Yeah. When, when, uh, w they would turn against ContraPoints immediately. They would turn against ContraPoints immediately. Just like they have, by the way, with, uh, Abigail. Yeah. And it's, like, n not a matter of being valid. It's just, you know, there's a lived experience and there's no lived turtle, uh, identity experience. So we just have to protect people in proportion of, like, hey, is someone... Is someone giving someone problems that result in them not being treated equally? Okay, well, that's... What the fuck did Abigail ever fucking do? Uh, I don't know. Destiny just hates her guts. Vosh is never gonna... Is gonna set the record straight, but but Hans named his stream Vosh agrees with me and attributes a position to Vosh that Vosh never made. That is so fucking embarrassing. Guys... Parasociality is the most embarrassing shit. If any of you ever say that I disagree with you and I haven't literally looked at you and said, or if any of you say that I agree with you and I haven't looked at you and said, I agree with your name, insert here, I will, I will be so disappointed in you. Please never do that. Please. Talk to me for fuck's sake. Focus on that because obviously, like, never uh, do that. Trans, Please. Um, like trans people in general. So are... cringe very much in danger so if someone's in danger i don't know just what i think the answer is always like whatever is the most protective of the of the least yeah uh, it, kid. it's i i mean at, at the end first of all if you're ever worried about optics when arguing with conservatives just ex get them to explain to you how it's damaging that these people exist because they'll scream yeah. and cry about it but how many people have been hurt by xeno gender zero people zero people have been hurt zero people it. have been hurt absolutely yep. not one like, person imagine Never. making that your issue like you know we spend trillions yeah. of dollars in the military the pentagon has trillions that just vanish into thin air when when they're you know um when their accounts are looked through this that or the other people dying starvation it's like oh well somebody identifies the turtle prescriptively i think that the term gender makes the most sense when we're using it to refer to a set of roles or identities relating to one's sex. So you have man, woman in the That's West, fair. at least. I understand You have non-binary identities and kind of a lot of expression under that. Uh I can understand this position, by the way. This is one of the reasons why I haven't been nearly as mad at, at Vosh as other people. Because I can understand where he's coming from with this. I just don't agree. Um... I don't think that we should spend time preserving the usefulness of gender. I don't think gender is useful. That's why I'm okay with people being dear gender, because uh, if that is a better way for people to express themselves, then that's fine. Even if we lose uh, the extremely harmful structure of gender, gender is harmful. The current um, the current uh, standard of gender is is just harmful. It's just bad. So I don't care if people destroy it with dear gender. 
Yeah. Um, and that it's a good thing. Stuff. I, I actually actively encourage it. I encourage you to be dear gender. I encourage you to be uh to be gobbo gobbo gender. I encourage you to be whatever gender you think accurately expresses yourself. Do it seriously. Like, let's say turtle gender, okay? I don't have an issue with people identifying sort of conceptually with the idea of an animal or with an object. We do this with tons of stuff. First yes. of all, people have nicknames. This goes back centuries. Yes! Plenty of people Yes! Yes! That's my argument! Yay! Oh, I'm so flattered. Military will have nicknames that directly refer to an animal or yep. an object yep. that they feel is in some way representative of their character. And a lot of people take their nicknames seriously. It's not just some errant secondary way of referring to them. There's a meaningful relationship. Historically, you've got figures, yeah, called dragons, wolves, lions, because it meant it was, you know, indicative. Richard the Lionheart. The Lion of Brittany. Indicative of strength or courage and we have people who like we call people like tanks sometimes if they're really big bear right. as a term has been incorporated into the gay community as a way of defining an entire subset of oh. of, of you know like people's body types <laughs> this is all over oh we oh my god ah oh, i'm so happy the place right so that already exists. If people want to call that like a gender, like, oh, I'm bare gender because they're like big and burly or whatever, or if, or if they identify with that as a concept, I think that's maybe a bit semantically odd w w using the term gender there, but I don't think it's harmful and I don't think it's disruptive to our broader gender theory. I don't think it hurts trans people, certainly. I think that ex like following it's... Yeah, it's funny too. It's funny that Vosh mentioned this too. I want to just set the record straight, by the way, just so that we all know. In all of this, the two people that have been most obsessed about uh, it earlier this year or late last year, I guess it was um, ferociously Steph, and this year it's Doe. Neither of those people animals critters uh actually have ever used the term deer gender doe does not use the term deer gender doe just is named doe and talks about and like does deer things a lot and then uses it its pronouns other people projected that doe does not use like it does not use the term deer gender at all or other kin, or any of those. All projection. Doe uses the term trans deer, but that's because that's the that's the the so solidarity meme. Yeah, Doe doesn't even use the term other kin. Nothing. But and yet it's been memed into reality by these fucking charlatans. Yeah, trans deer is a is a meme of a solidarity meme. Trans deer, by the way. Trans deer also hard because i mean like poor like I yeah said. it's simultaneously a meme and 100 legit the idea trans deer of like like somebody i've seen doe say it's non-binary is that true yes doe is non-binary yes yeah i am too by the way have been for a long time yep look at my look at my twitter it said non-binary for fucking forever also, yeah, Steph is based as fuck. Ferociously, Steph is fucking sick. Super nice. Always been really nice to me. Anyway, let's continue. I don't, I don't know him, but like, poor leftist owl, just like trying to, trying to say something instead, just getting all of like, you, you hate trans people. You are, you are actively damaging. True, them Dr. Jellicle. And, and so on. And I see a lot of. Trust me, I've thought about my gender more than I would like. The more than I would like to have. It would be a lot easier if I didn't have to think about my gender as much. Okay. Oh, I love this. I love this meme. I love this meme. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta play this meme. Me, I swear I won't hit that evil wizard weed. Me, ten minutes later. Me too! Me too! 
Bruh, I want to hang out with deer. I want to hang out with the deer wizard. Hurdy gurdies are sick. Hurdy gurdies are sick, but incredibly expensive and very hard to maintain. Yeah, it's a it's a hurdy gurdy. They're fucking wild. Let's continue. Actually, I see a lot of like trans people as well get like you are damaging the movement. You are harmful for the movement of your own rights. And I mean, I feel like people should be able. I'll to check that one after Jazz Dog. Advocate for themselves. However, they see fit as long as it's not um, out out of the bounds of anyone else's rights. Like, it's just I think that like where are the artists? Are there any artists out there? Does anyone on you know like isn't like I don't like couldn't gender be like if we were free? Couldn't gender just be art? And you know what I mean? Like some people are more expressive than others. Just let people exist. And, That's a very um, good point. Yeah, and if people care then i don't know do like just do the best you can with what's in front of you um i'm gonna start talking to more um more people especially like non-binary trans people like i'm gonna talk to lumi and i think that you know i think that people are just it's the moral panic stuff you know they don't see the connection between like Oh, this is like where this is the foundation for where the bathroom bill comes from, or you know, like the the oh, like the ba like the bad ones over there. Like, what if you're over there, and what if you're getting off for some reason? I I don't know. The thing the thing that I guess the thing that bugs me is that this whole you're hurting trans rights with this esoteric gender theory nonsense is exactly mm -hmm. what people like Blair White said about non-binary people, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yep, Nowadays, I agree. Nowadays, the Dango. left has pretty much accepted non-binary people under the umbrella of, like, acceptable, like, you know, hedge... You want to know what? Guess what, everybody? I am a state-licensed non-binary person. As of, as of two weeks ago... I am officially recognized as non-binary by the by the uh, by the state. Not that I care, really, but just to put that out there, I did. I did. I updated my uh, my IDs. I did. Yep. I mean that probably that probably I don't I don't know. Like, um, yeah, I got that X. Yeah, it's kind of sick. I mean, it doesn't. It's just I, I I thought I feel like it's a good political stance. Wouldn't that put you in danger if the tides turn? I'm in danger if the tides turn anyway for a lot of other reasons. I thought about it, by the way, for a long time. Um, I thought about it considerably because yeah, I do believe there's some risk of putting me at risk if the tides turn. But then I realized that I'm already in so much more risk. Like the fact that I run a, a reasonably popular public channel where I regularly uh, broadcast. Um, it, you know, extreme trans liberatory politics and, uh, and criticize the United States. So, yeah, you know, honestly, I don't think the X is going to add that much danger to me. Just going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. demonically defensible trans identities but for a while that was kind of not on the shelf trans medicalism was a lot more popular i think 15 years ago you, you call know? it extreme but is it really yes 10 years ago before people's thank you psychosocialism i appreciate that evolved you know that's how you used to defend trans people all the time it was like well it's a I mental condition and they're Babinska, when I first heard about the deer gender thing, I literally just went to Doe's stream and asked it some questions in chat about its thoughts on gender, and Doe responded thoughtfully, helped me understand what the whole thing was about. But for those with a severe case of content creator brain, like some streamers, this approach is not something that occurs to them. Instead, having a spicy argument on your stream without actually engaging with Doe's ideas is the route they take. Literally, thank you. Babinska, hold on. I have to go to the bathroom real quick, but I want to say, literally, thank you. Thank you for being the fucking sick person. Thank you for being a cool person who just asks the individual. Holy fuck. Thank you, Babinska. I'm going to play the bathroom song real quick, okay? I'm going to play bathroom song because I really need to go to the bathroom. I really, really fucking need to go to the bathroom, guys. It's really fucking bad. So here, enjoy. I'll be right back. Keep everybody, everybody stay entertained. Like, subscribe, throw some donos my way. Would hey, love it. I uh, want to pay for the bills. Thank you. The bathroom, so listen to the Demon Mama bathroom song. She streams 20 hour days and nine days a week. So let's give her and her bladder a little fucking break.
Okay, it's been a minute and she's still in the bathroom. I'm not a math whiz, but I can count to two. Let's all calm down and spam emotes while we wait and chat. Maybe someone here also needs a bathroom break. been a bit since Demon Mama went to the bathroom. Not like I'm counting, but this track's at 142. So don't you fret my little limbs, cause I wrote this track down to give you something boppin' while she's taking a break. Jesus fucking Christ, can Fun go check in the bathroom? I hope she doesn't lock the door when she uses it. But if she does, you might True! Be a little the more Patreon start. subscribers we get, the cooler the you are. Is weak enough I break. am nuts. I have a plan. Sober floated, that's so pog! I gotta do. Hmm. I'm so excited, Gay Fesh. Okay, you're just fucking with me now. Put down your phone, the stream is still running. I can only assume you forgot because you were doom scrolling. Jesus Christ, Demon Mama, do we need to call a doctor? Song's over, stop. Somebody help her out. True! Wait a minute, I'm fine. I survived. I served fifth. I surfif. Let's do this. Let's return to the video. Jump right back in. Excuse me. I was not. Snake tongue. Hold on. Snake tongue. There you go. Back to the back to the back to the show. Oh, I'm getting way better. My muscles are all cool. I can do fucking cool shit. It just takes a long time to heal up. I've been working them out. They're left, you know, female brain, male body, blah, blah. And now that's not as common anymore. And I think that's wonderful. And we haven't suffered. For Good. It. We've gotten stronger because before <laughs> we were only able to advocate for trans people on the defense. Oh, they're like this because of a defect in their brain. Oh, it's a condition, you know, but now we can take the offense. We challenge the conservative. Explain to me how exactly is what it I'm does, saying. It does. Yeah. Somniostatic. I don't know why. how I'm wrong. And that's the conversation they don't want to have. It's easy for them to- We have one crop top, you know, crop topkin. It's called the Mlem emote. It's a modified Mlem that has a split tongue. Fun of the trans person. Oh, you don't look normal. Oh, you're not normal. That's their preferred territory. But when you challenge them to come up with a better theory, you know, come to my house, show me how it's supposed to be done. They falter. And I think it's, it's yeah, you keep, keep up the offense, right? The naysayers, like, it's very easy to just be like, nope, that's, which is what, you know, a lot of, um, when you talk to a lot of conservatives, they're just like, yeah, no, you're wrong, because- Fawn can weigh in on that. What? Gender Juice has a message for you. You can, you can just, you can confirm I or not. I said so, or because, you know, uh, because God said so, or because, uh, theory says so, or because Merriam-Webster dictionary definition says so, or- which is kind of ironic because literally, I mean, isn't the dictionary kind of the last thing to get updated? You know, the con 
the concept. Yes, exactly, think, Posadas like, John. It's, it's time. It, it has, Dr. Jellicle, thank you so much. In the dictionary, you know, the idea of trans people is in the dictionary. A lot of things they well, don't are already in the dictionary. And you're right, dictionaries don't get updated really, really quickly. They oh, yeah, you guys want to do something fun while we're listening to this? Go check and see. If you follow me on Twitter, go check and see if RGR blocked you. Chances are you have been mass blocked. RGR, uh, RGR and RGR's girlfriend did like a mass block of all people who follow me. It's extremely funny. Yeah, look, see? Everybody in chat is showing up. Yeah, everybody's been blocked. That's how petty and, pa and bad it is. Because I had the audacity. Oh, because I had the audacity to call RGR out on being a literal liar. She blocked every person who follows me. Mother Mirset, thank you so very much. Thank you so much. Oh, whoops, I, I broke my thing, hold on. Thank you so much, Mother Mirset. Let me read that message. After watching you the past seven months, you've given me lots to think about with my own gender expression identity. Doe and Fawn have really helped too. That makes me so happy. That makes me so happy to hear. Thank you so much. Everyone's blocked, look at that. Almost everyone's fucking blocked. I told you, I fucking told you. I told you the the demon mama derangement syndrome is out of control. Can you imagine blocking 10,000 people because I disagreed with you and called you out on your shit ass lies? She blocked James. What the fuck? It because he platformed me or what? Lamau. Lamau. Incredible. Nah. You're good. Let's continue tends to take some time for a word to be normalized before it gets introduced, you know? And then you have the sciences, medical science, psychiatric science, it's on our side as well. So I, I just, I guess my only concern would be that I worry there are people who call themselves progressive, like Hans. Can you s explain how you saying I have the right to simply exist as extreme? Uh, yes, because we live in an extremely stupid world. And so I am, I am considered a, a trans liberation extremist. Because we live in an extremely stupid world. That's the reason why. I do think is a progressive, you know. But um, they're, yep. they're adopting. Yep, they're spherical man. Yep. Affecting Everybody got blocked. Look at that. Everybody's blocked. Adopted by reactionaries. Where the progressivism that they have is not a, a positive or affirmative one of carving out space for, you know, disadvantaged True nuts. or oppressed people to exist. I challenge you, go further than me, one, please. Or they're attacking people in their own movement who they think are going to give the conservatives a, you know, a bad image of us. They're going to give the transes a bad name. And this historically is a always a losing position. Every time, always. This never works. It always loses. You're, it's always Grime Dango, you're blocked too? Simple bifurcated strike, zero cost, two six, Grime Dango, blocked. Good night, a pillow. Hope you enjoy resting on a pillow. It's bad. We shouldn't do it. It's interesting because it's like um, I don't know. I don't know anything about the sigma sigma male shit, but I've heard something about breaking frame. Um, I do, I might be misusing this, but the way I think, <laughs> like you have to roll it out <laughs> with your with confidence. You have to be like, oh, th no, this is what it is. Because in fact, I mean, having dated a whole bunch, if you act like something is weird, if you are hesitant, if you're like, uh, then oh, people will Dango. think that it's weird. If you do something weird, very confidently, people will go along with it because they'll think that they're the weird ones or something like that. You know, they lose the, a lot of it is within like, I think, like you have to be, like, are we right? Are we correct that people are owed uh equality like we're owed it's a part of the social contract by having to adhere to laws by having to you know be a part of all of it we like it's presently not i don't believe i do believe i think i know what Ico's saying i do believe that at the very least the state does owe everyone the right th their rights by the minimum and guess what when they don't deliver you have a right to disregard the state, unironically. So yeah. Happening, so it doesn't matter how people feel about it. It's Holy shit, like literally uh, almost everyone in my chat has been mass blocked. How stupid. These people are so stupid. They literally don't understand how that, how, how that hurts you.
It hurts you to block 10,000 people who are otherwise potentially open to your view. So stupid. So stupid. Is just it idiots. If you just don't clowns. Like it, then just go look at something else. Go watch TV. I don't know. So, yeah, I think, um, I don't know. I, I think that, like, maybe. Echo no, chamber. No, Fuck yeah. Agree. Yeah. At the end of the day. If Everybody build an echo chamber. Oh. There are always going to be people that are inscrutable to me or that I find confusing. I'm defending this in the abstract, okay? I'm a cis male, all right? I identify as pansexual, and I'll probably keep that label until I die. I don't understand people. They, you know, some of these other kin or like they. She identify blocked as live globe that. emoji types. Nice, this, whatever. But we should be in. We should live in a world where people have a right to do all of this. You know, as a, almost like fundamentally, like borderline axiomatically. If you're not hurting anyone, you have a right to be, you know, going on about it. And I don't think they deserve rejection or exclusion. And I don't. Oh think my they god! Deserve contempt Sada or Sean, yeah, I saw either. that. If, okay, if people want to do that stuff, I, I play video games. What right do I have? You know, people, oh, you know, you play video games all day. You sit at home. Okay. And we should have the right to do that. And maybe xenogenders are the, you know, ideological gender analogy to sitting at home playing video games a lot. But God damn it, it's America. And I think they have that right. I mean... Like I said too, uh, art, artistic expression, like what? Dead Vosh reaction. Have, like <laughs> oh, another thing is like okay, uh, people are who need are saying that. I don't think I can cure demon mama derangement syndrome. Listen, my channel is comparatively tiny. People who are deranged over me, I I don't think I can help them. I just I really don't think I can help them. I'm so sorry. Like gender will be uh, rendered meaningless or have no utility, but I want I I want someone to give me like an example of like what is a good utility for gender categories based on not your own self assertion of your identity but of other people categorizing. It's you not based there isn't on one gender that isn't to um, offset current. Mellow Anarchist asks, what is it about you and Vosh that shatters people's brains? Are you ready for the real hot take? Are you ready for the real hot take? What shatters people about me and Vosh uh, that shatters people's brains is literally that we're loud leftists. We're loud leftists who unapologetically advocate for what is viewed by our idiotic society as extreme positions. That's literally what it is. You realize that America had literally zero leftist media of any type. And people are just fucking triggered that lefties have a say now. That live that queer liberationists have a say now. That gay the, the, the fucking the loud gay people like myself have have a have a say now. That pansexuals like Vosh who openly talk about fucking men um are have a say. It's literally, we're queer, we're here, we're queer, get used to it, and they can't get used to it. They literally cannot cope. BreadTube was incognito lefty content, and now we're not incognito. We're cognito. We are the cognito hazards that they fear. Destroyed a lib? Oh my god, fucking lib. When the liberal store runs out. <laughs> we are cognito hazards. That's what we are. Let's continue. Harm. So in a in a world without harm, what's a good categorization like use? Does that make sense? I don't know. True. I, I mean, one there's I, a I'm, there's I'm a new one dollar and fifty tier on the Patreon. Guess what? You can jump in on the Patreon, get in while it's hot, fucking sick, or you can subscribe to the website one or two, either ones. Abolitionist, I agree that gender really doesn't serve much utility outside of its. Uh, Orbato says, unironically, retired veterans have been the only seen leftists around for a long time. Yep. Yep. Um, you, like, I don't think race does either, but we still use race colloquially, even on the left, because it describes people's existing biases, you know? Yes, exactly. So outside of that, it's like, what it like, is there a reason um, that uh, I guess that's kind of I guess it would be more like for someone that didn't agree with. Gender no, no, but no, but I I agree, right? And by the way, I've posed this question to quite a few people yep. or variants of it. Yeah, Grime Dango, fuck yeah. It. I really have not, 
yet heard a really good explanation for why gender as a concept should be kept around. If a person can acknowledge that sex and gender aren't the same thing, that they're distinct concepts, if they can get that far, you know, after that, I feel like it's almost inevitable that you have to accept that gender isn't a very useful one to keep around. Let's talk about that for a second. Can we talk about that for just one second? Can you guys imagine a world where every single day you don't have an expectation to dress a certain way that somebody else wants you to dress? Can you imagine a world where you're allowed to be a, a dude with a huge dick and fat fucking tits and you can call yourself a dude if you want to and you can even have a beard if you want to and have a huge fucking dick and big fucking strong ass tits? Can you imagine a world like that? Can you imagine a world where you can be a, a, a girl uh, where you can be a woman and you can be super femme, but the moment you tear off your clothes, you're fucking ripped from top to bottom. You're muscly as fuck. Can you imagine a world where you can look like me? Wait, guess what? That's this world. Guess what? I'm a fucking demon, bitches. I'm fucking weird. My body's weird. I have a weird mutant body. And guess what? It fucks. It fucks and people love my weird mutant body. So yeah, get fucked. Oh no, I lost my cap. Oh no, there it is. I lost my cap, I got it. Just saying, wouldn't it be cool if we had, wouldn't it be cool if we had a world where you didn't have to, um, where you didn't have to fucking pretend, where you could just be and dress how you want to every day because it doesn't hurt anybody else? Just saying. That, that in the meantime, it's only kind of like a legitimizing mechanism for biases and preferences people already have. Like, I, I do consider myself a man, even if I'm a gender abolitionist. But in the future, you know, uh, I, I imagine a person referring to themselves as a man would be as outlandish or as not outlandish. As a Texture Spelunky says, you can both form an argument and concern it. Uh, uh, and sincerely do that. That's based. Demon Mama and Vaunch are real assets to dialogue on socio socioeconomic challenges and coming from places typically di disenfranchised. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. Seriously. Thank you. I didn't chat much during Person September. That's true. Of themselves as a turtle. In the allegory, of course. Not you know what I was doing in September? Sleeping sense. and getting my right. tongue split. We can't, split. like... We can't predict the future because it's just guessing. Some people are more educated guesses than others, but instead of trying to form a future that we want because it never looks the way that Mad Dog with a fat hog. True. True. Would, um, in any case, Vouch. we just I think that it's like, what are the problems that could occur um, for some people moving forward and try to deal with that and then let it unfold? You know, like it's whatever it is, as long as we try to maintain equality, if gen if gender um, continues to exist in some form, because we find we find a way to use it in a in a non toxic way. Um, I think that, you know, I think people, you know, it's just um, El a reactionary feeling. I think we all have a little reactionary in us that. Is, I drank the first one. I'm already on my third boot. Something and we're like, um, I don't understand that. And also, why are you an adult and talking about things that I don't know about? You know what I mean? And then uh, there can be like a knee jerk reaction of of like, nope, that's not that's not a thing. I refuse to accept it. There are too many new things, and I can't handle it. Um, yeah, I, I think, think. Oh, yeah. sorry. No, you go ahead. No, I, I agree. I think that we have That'd be a really sick, Comrade Owo. inbuilt aversion to concepts. Have I done a drunk stream yet? No. I have done a tipsy stream. I have never gotten drunk on stream. I don't think. No. I don't think I have. I've gotten tipsy. I've never gotten drunk. Uh, uh, I don't think it would be... I think I would get TOS'd. The last time I got really drunk, I'm just going to say the last time you and Vosh have big PP energy. Thank you very much. I do agree. Thank you so much. Absolutely destroyed the anarcho Bidenist. Fact. Yeah. Sh d destroyed. Uh, did I get a little TOS y? Uh, I drank a bunch of. Uh, I drank a bunch of absinthe. And things got very TOS. 
I'll just, I'll just say that much, okay? Listen, what went on in the studio was not for camera consumption, okay? Let's just put it that way. All right, that's all I'm going to say. It was not to be, it was not for camera consumption, at least not on this website. ...that we're not familiar with. And that's why it's important when, as a progress... Oh, fuck. I fucking love Absinthe, by the way. It is the Green Goblin. It is fucking... Mm. Ooh. You need. Do I need to sterilize the couch? No, come on. I'm so clean. I'm a clean person. I'm, I'm disorganized. I'm not dirty. I'm a very clean person. I wash my, I like wash my hands obsessively. My stream is fucking great on acid. Oh, shit. The green goblin juice. It's the goblin juice. Yeah, I'm a very clean person. Absinthe makes the heart grow fonder. It really does. It truly... Uh, unironically, absinthe... Mm, love it. Beautiful. It's a green goblin. It's a goblin. I'm not a... I'm a square? What? Listen, I gotta tell you something about this absinthe. Okay? This shit will fuck you up. You will be fucked up. You were making a joke about me fucking on the couch? Well, yeah, obviously, it's my couch. But, like, I clean it up. I clean things up. I'm clean. I'm a very nice and tidy person. But, like, don't come to my house if you're worried about things that... Look, don't come to my house if you're worried about fuck, okay? There's a lot of fuck energy in the general air, okay? <laughs> Listen... Comrade Owo says, here's an example I saw earlier today. What's this? What's this? Let's see. What's this mean? Car dad pool. Let's hear what this guy's got to say. <gasps> That's sick! It's a little rough. Let's put it on the tree. We still have to put ornaments on it, but there it is. It's a biblically accurate angel? That's fucking sick! That's fucking sick! Oh, we got to do that. We got to do that. Oh, that's sick. Okay, I'll think about that. I'll think about it. Seriously, I'll think about it. All right. Fuck energy. My house is chast. Grime Dango. Don't test me. I know. I know what happens in Megabed, Grime Dango. I know. I know what happens in Megabed. To, to develop not just an understanding of the pro progressive positions you hold now, but an understanding of a good method. Grime Dango, you were at my house this weekend. Methodology for arriving at progressive positions you can't on lie any to me. issue. You know, like the ideal progressive um, could have been born back in 2000, like, sorry, 200 AD, could be brought to the modern world, caught up with what's happening, and have a progressive position today too. That the ideal mm -hmm. set should be universally applicable. Same with right. like... Yeah, liberal rights, like universalism, humanism, democracy. We understand these in the context of the modern world, but a good advocate for those positions should be able to live in any society, human, alien, whatever, any time period, and apply what they believe to those worlds as well. And with the progressive thing, you know, in this case, I think we're seeing kind of a failing where the old talking points aren't gelling with the way the the dialogue has advanced so the t you know yesterday's progressive becomes today's reactionary maybe um it, ha it happens a lot throughout history it's an unfortunate mm, tendency course. i think eventually we all fall prey to it i'll probably fall prey to it you know it's no that's actually not true most people don't fall prey to it uh it's an illusion the problem is it, that's an illusion that's caused the idea that you get more conservative when you go when you get older is a is because rich people who are tend to be conservative live longer. It's actually not true. I've met a lot of very of old people who are super progressive, who maintain being progressive, who keep up with the times. It's just the reality is that rich people are conservative and rich people live older. Yep. Sucks. Sucks. Some ways. When when I'm older, you know? grass aka talk to other people that are different you know right like yeah. that's the people that i've known um you know like the like people true much, much older poor people bifurcated strike for, grind cetera, dango with, get a like um, get a like on the stream that stay like that stay like regular people like you can talk to versus the ones who are just 
like shaking their fists at the clouds and uh, just being mad all the time that I, I don't know that they're it, it in very uh, very yeah that's fair some aesthetic it's because of like some people like for instance okay like Dave Chappelle I think he true went into, he lived on a farm or something for ten years came back and he's like why are people different why do people not laugh at like the same things that I say like. You know what I mean? Like, uh, the world kept moving. You have to, like, you have to think about things within the context of the world that you're living in, not, like, demand that it it bend to your will just, just because you don't feel comfy with it. Because you can just look at something else, you know? Yeah. Just watch well, reruns of something. Go back to that's true. Uh, your, that's true. your fa favorite time. And And often, I think the discomfort is an understanding that the new progressive talking points not only invalidate your old progressive talking points, but they also make you, in retrospect, more of a reactionary than you may have been comfortable with. So, for example, you know, like, take the gay marriage advancement. 30 years ago, a progressive might be okay with civil unions for gay people, and then later for, you know, gay marriage, and then it, it advances further and further. But every time the discourse advances, you cut off a section of people who were once progressive, but now have moderate or even reactionary views. And I think a lot of people hold on to that because they don't want to acknowledge in retrospect, like, oh my god, I never really- Okay, had true Grime Dango, 500 likes would be unbelievably pog. If we pulled 500 likes, that would be like- uh, like unpress almost unprecedented on a stream like this the truth is we have the liking power we just need people to press the like button had the progressive position it was only contextually progressive i didn't okay. hold the yeah i wasn't holding on to the end of history i fucking I was love just, it i was just another step the, the, it's a it's a staircase and there are steps above me and only 20 really likes to go on a monday some people really Fuck like, yeah you know they really like the week ain't even started like, no you guys don't even know what's coming you guys don't even know. On Wednesday, we're continuing the inscription voice acted playthrough. And then on Friday, we're doing f something very funny. Okay? Really funny. So Wednesday, we're continuing our absolutely amazing, fully voice acted by me. I voice act all the characters in inscription. And all the episodes of our inscription playthrough are currently up on YouTube for you to enjoy. I'm telling you, it's but it's fucking awesome. We broke the game on the first episode, and it was sick, okay? And then on Friday, a surprise. I have a surprise for you on Friday. I'm not going to tell you yet, but it's going to be really fun. It has to do with gaming and a whole bunch of really funny people, really funny and famous people, okay? Their case ended with me, and everything going past it is just a rickety, you know wood ramshackle scaffolding tier staircase uh, or you could it's chaos yeah. it's chaos dragon we hit 500 yeah, chaos dragon people are losing their mind the left has gone too far we reached 500 thank you thank you so much everybody seriously likes are free and they seriously help me in the algorithm thank you so much 515 thank you now he's writing on turf manifestos. Uh, All right. Yep. We have a request for a combo. Okay. Okay. This is a let's go combo. Everybody, listen up. All of you who are on site chat, prepare, load your let's go. That means don't type let's go in chat right now. Load it. Clear your chat. Type anything except let's go and get it ready. Okay. On the count of three, three, two, one, let's go! Seventy fucking two! That's sick! No, that's sick! Seventy two is awesome! That's so good. It's not broken our record, but that's pretty fucking good. We got to finish this video, though. That was fucking sick. We'll do another one later. That was sick. G guys, did you know, unironically, we have the best combos on this side of the internet? No joke. We straight up have the best combos. Nobody out nobody beats us. Yes, the 121 is the record. Yes. No, 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 no,
Gender Juice says we're well trained in Pavlovian response. Incorrect. Incorrect. Being able to participate in chat combos is a sign of your ability to work together with people on things that don't have much impact. It costs nothing to participate in a very fun combo. So if you're able, if you are able to combo well, it means you have a good social uh, engagement. Yeah, it is about, it's about, it's about a, a healthy discipline. Yeah. It's about a healthy discipline. Nine away. Oh my God. Yeah, it's like returning the shopping cart. Exactly, it is. It's kind of like returning a shopping cart. Fuck, so sick. Thank you all for the likes, everybody. Really appreciate that shit. Seriously. Likes, love, all of it. Fucking sick. Yeah, it, it happens to a lot of people, but you have to learn to get up and keep walking. It, it is all about the Fast and the Furious family and also the Mets. Built, I guess. Just manage your feelings. Just stop, like... Hell yeah, Nico Pico. Fuck yeah. something right away. Just think... Like, you know, I have a lot of feelings. I've always had a lot of feelings. That was a good so one. So I try to feel them initially and then just put them to the side and think about why I feel that way. And if it's because of... We are doing a live. We are doing a live, everybody. We're doing a live. We're doing a live. We are doing a live. Proportion and so on. And that's... Doing a live. Is it even my business? Does my opinion, like... Within, you know, I I appreciate my opinion. Some people do, but overall, mm, I don't. Maybe at I some point, left us out. We'll see. To have uh, to value my opinion more than than anyone else's. Yes, I, I did do a stream on Vin Diesel. On That's correct, pros. But I will be like, no. You're wrong because you're doing a thing to another person, and that's not your business. So move, you know. Yeah. No, I I, I completely get it. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad we agree on this. I'm actually. I'm happy you messaged to talk. I um, I'm 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 sorry that I uh, uh sort of rapidly asked to talk today instead of yesterday because my scheduling changed a little bit. Uh, That's totally fine. It was totally fine. Yeah. Was there was there any other uh, dastardly misappropriation of my talking points? Um, uh, oh, there are so many. Aware of? Oh, there are so many, um, but I'll definitely, I'll, I'll probably, I'll DM you some, some thoughts. And then if you have any like thought, you want to talk about any of them or if something occurs to me, I think that, you know, for me personally, I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. I'm not trying to cancel people ever uh, because that, there's no such One thing. More? I think that it's like. There's For like real? criticism and then there's harassment. You know, there are people that are attacking you. This stream could be classified as a new some, discovered narcotic you know, because uh, it was a, the, a wild ride. It was a good ride. This is a wild and one. That. And then, you know, I, I don't know. I don't we really reached look what? Twitter, 550? For real? Did we really reach 550? You guys got us to 550 likes? That's so fucking pog. I know. I know it sounds silly, but guys. YouTube uses likes to determine whether I'm going to make a living or not. Likes are so fucking important. Thank you so much. It takes one second to like the stream and you all did it. Thank you so much. 550 likes is unironically so good. Seriously so good. Thank you so much. Does watching you on site chat give you the premium view? I believe it does, yes. I should push it more. I will. I will push it more. I'm doing my best. Grime Dango is helping me. A lot of you are helping me. 560? Holy fuck! Seriously, thank you. I really appreciate it. The last stream was only 307. Yeah. If we get 569, that's going to be outrageous. Oh yeah, no, no joke. Uh, uh, Aska Ashen one. No joke. I'm going to. I am going to make a strain of weed someday. I really want to do it. It's something I actually want to do. I just need to get to a place where I have the space to grow weed. I don't have space here to do it. Yeah, unironically. People leave it and they're very angry and they're kind of yelling. I do at too. Gender that juice aren't there anymore. Like they're yelling at their time. They're like. Uh, like as if the people they're arguing if we get 25 Twitter likes we're gonna hit 600 that's ridiculous be there and that would be absurd and I'm always confused but yeah so I think that um yeah it's it's a mess I don't I just want people to have oh shit mellow anarchist and be accurate 
Like you yeah, you know what the shit you can do if you if you breed your own strain of weed, you can make like a weed that has like insane THC from the get go. Oh, it's fucking wild! I can't wait to do it. I'm gonna do it. I promise. I really want to do it. Have to like someone. You don't have to. You can you can like shitty people. You can like you can even like Bad Bunny if you want. I guess like even though I'm worried about the cults, I'm very worried about about this weird cult of like of loyalty she's demanding but that's an entire other thing and that's just you know me, uh, me talking shit um yeah she's she's got a lot going on yeah you know it, it's very it's very oh hard that would be sick gender people, juice uh these days like herself so i um, really hates bad yeah, bunny so, Oof. yeah i just i just i don't we don't have to agree um on the bad something. bunny stuff as a whole thing i just want Oof. um to present my case oh, and God. have everyone acknowledge the stuff and then we can a portobello, do yeah, what fuck we yeah. will with it and just do our best. No, I, right? I, I appreciate that. I, I do maintain the value of arguing within the left to advance people's opinions, you know, and, and arrive at maybe better conclusions. But I did used to overfixate in a way similar to what you just described, where I would see like some people, you know, w woke scolds on Twitter being like really cringe and it would really like get me worked up. And then, I, you know, these people are destroying the left. I do think there are I still think somebody is. maybe broad ideological issues. I know you're all about building. I know you're all about building that bridge, but honestly, I think Bad Bunny isn't worth your effort. Wait, what effort? I don't. I haven't had any effort. There's been no. There's not been really any effort. Like I just get along with Bad Bunny. That's it. I think Bad Bunny is funny, and I get along with Bad Bunny. There's never been like, I, like I didn't. I have a stream. Yeah, we did a we did a um, charity stream, and it was fucking sick. We raised $23,000 for a trans charity together, for a bunch of trans charities, and we funded a bunch of people's GoFundMes. Yeah. I will always, like, I don't care. I would do a charity stream with Mike from PA. The only person I wouldn't do it with is like, well, actually, I probably would do it with Destiny, honestly, even still. Yeah. Um... Yeah. People are mad because of the beef with Lumi. I don't really get that. I don't know. Like, honestly, a lot of people, um, a lot of people have problems with Bad Bunny. I don't really have those problems. I don't really have any problems with Bad Bunny. Um, I haven't personally had any issues. Uh, and I don't really care to. Everybody has problems with everybody else. I just um, do it with Destiny and donate the money to Hamas. <laughs> okay. Whoa! 600! All right, everybody. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my fucking God. Six fucking hundred, huh? What the fuck? What the fuck? That's so sick. We have over 600 likes? Is that for real? Thank you. See, this is this is what I'm this is why I really oh I'm only three hundred subs away from the call in stream. Am I dreaming? I feels like I'm dreaming. A welcome back gift? Thank you. Guys, I want I want twenty twenty two to be the year of this channel fucking going pog lord mode. Okay? You guys thought you guys thought twenty twenty one was a fucking pog year? You guys have had fun this year, right? You guys have had fun with all this crazy content? I want 2022 to be even better. This is how we do it. I mean, unfortunately, this is how we do it. Uh, likes and subscribes are the way that you grow the channel. And I will keep making awesome shit to appear right here on this little screen. I'll keep doing that if you guys keep giving me the comments and the likes and some, some tips every once in a while. If I get banned from YouTube, I would cry. Please don't ban me from YouTube. Oh, yeah, comments help a lot. I will, I'm going, ah, I have so much work I need to do. I know. I shouldn't talk about all the work I need to do. But thank you. Thank you for the likes. Seriously. Thank you. Truly. Um, posting cool emotes in site chat. That is true. Thank you. I do too much. I do work too much. I literally have had multiple of my... Multiple, multiple of my family members have told me I need to take a, a chill pill. 
I I'll try to do my best. I know I work a lot. Anyway, let's finish this video, huh? Thank you all so much. Seriously. Truly. I know I'm a bit of a work cuck. And position. But not really. Um, but it's my own job. It's my own it's my own art, okay? I don't go to work. I do this for you all. Textualize that because if you get too deep in the sauce, you're really just doing anti SJW React content just from the other direction. Um it's just not ideal. Anyway, I I uh, I appreciate you coming on. No, thank you so much for for the talk. I appreciate it. And uh, if I if I think of some other, I mean, you know, when I think of some other uh, people that thank are you. saying they have your positions that are oh, thank very you, yikes, Stick Boy. I appreciate that. Um, I'll let I'll let you know. Absolutely, please do. You have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. That was a sick ass convo. Well, that was a sick ass convo. Very happy with that. Damn, that was a cool conversation. I'm really happy. What the fuck don't I do? Uh, I can't draw. My handwriting sucks. Um, I am bad at, at engineering. I am bad at car repair. I'm not a very good, I'm not as good at cooking as I want to be. Um, I am not as smart as Sadie, as, uh, as Grime Dango is on computers. Um, I'm not as good at makeup as my partner is. Um, I'm bad at rhythm games. Bad, I'm really bad at rhythm games. I'm bad at platformers. Silent is a genuinely good cook. Seriously. I'm good at being demon mama. That's true. I'm rel I'm relatively good at being demon mama. That's true. I am a bad... I don't know how I ended up... I don't know what it is that works out well that makes me a good streamer, but I, I feel like I'm pretty good at streaming. <laughs> rhythm games. Uh, everybody's tried to cheat me. I'm not fucking good at it. It's funny because I do have rhythm. I'm just not good at rhythm games. Know what it is something about the rhythm games fucks me up i'm good at pl i can play music to rhythm i can keep a I can keep a beat and everything like that but um yeah please react to this clip on stream all right what's this clip okay all right let's see we're gonna react to this clip i've been given a clip uh oh i think i know what this clip is oh boy here we go let's do it let's try it oh yeah i gotta switch this there we go let's do it Look at the photos of Ethan Crumbly people on social media and some media outlets are using. He's now 15, and yet they chose this angelic-looking photo from about when he was 10. What is the purpose of this when there are several other photos, like his mugshot, that could have been shown instead? This same sort of tactic is used in reverse against black perpetrators and even victims. Rather than use their school photo of them smiling and looking like good kids, they use the meanest looking, most aggressive photo they can find on social media to portray them as villains. They attempt to portray them as people who either obviously would commit the heinous crime they did or victims who deserved it. They do this to placate a certain bias and mindset that the audience already holds. And the same looks to be happening in this case. Showing Crumbly as this innocent looking angelic white kid is intended to stoke fear and support a narrative that white people, no matter how nice they look, are domestic terrorists who should who we should all be afraid of. Look at the photos. OK. So I'm not going to lie. The first time I saw this. The first time I saw this, I actually cracked up. I'm not lying. I actually started laughing really hard. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a joke and that like somebody had clipped it to make it look funny. I, I, I'm not kidding you. And then I looked in the comments and I realized that people were, that she was serious. I was, la I unironically was laughing really hard. Like I was like, what the fuck? And then I was like, uh oh, I had a keck wait moment. That, that face. Um, and what would you do if we hit 666 subscribers? Also, last meme tonight, I promise. Nah, let's look at it. Let's look at the meme. See what we got. 
I have noticed that although this stream has several hundred viewers, I have not received several hundred likes on my YouTube. I'm not sure if this is being done intentionally or if these imps are forgetting to click like. Either way, I've had enough. I've compiled a spreadsheet of individuals who have forgotten to like my stream. After two consecutive strikes, your name is automatically highlighted and I am immediately notified. Three consecutive strikes and you can expect an in-person consultation. Think about your actions. I love this. I love this. I should make this into a fucking... Uh... <laughs> Absolutely fucking incredible. Vosh is so right about the Nosble Vortex. Okay, so there's a few things I need to... <laughs> a few things I need to say, okay? Listen. I have a few... <laughs> the in-person consultation. Listen. I'll, I'll, I'll flex the pain, okay? Oh, wait, there's more. Look, there's more. Wait, there's more. Wait, there's more to this. So I think this is going to be another case, kind of like Kyle Rittenhouse, where now, look, this guy's guilty. I think it's really obvious from all the evidence that we're seeing that this guy was is, is very, very guilty, very different than the Kyle Rittenhouse case as far as the actual facts, but how they'll use it to fuel a narrative or a discussion or to demonize others. This isn't about Ethan Crumbly. Uh, whether or not people want to call him a terrorist, that has nothing to do with him. It really has to do with this narrative that we're facing this white domestic terrorism in this country, this is our big problem, and we've got to do something to stop it. And that stopping it has nothing to do with Ethan Crumbly. It will affect other people, and that is what I'm most afraid of on this. So I think this is going to... Okay. Okay, okay, let's let me drop a hot take, okay? If you watch the rising, I fear for your mental well being. Okay? It's that simple. The rising has got to be one of the most brain dead shows on the air. It is a it is a red flag in and of it itself. If somebody says, Oh yeah, I watched the rising, you should probably just give them a lobotomy instantaneously. You would do them a favor, okay? No, wait, don't do that. That's literally a joke, okay? That's just a joke. Never do that. Um, the truth is that, like, if you watch The Rising, I sincerely worry about your ability to think. Um, Ryan Grimm makes it better. I feel bad for Ryan Grimm because I actually, um, I actually, um, we just got back on Twitch. That was a joke. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. It's about, it's, it's a joke. It was, anyway. Um, the, the... <laughs> The Rising is a show for idiots, okay? It really, really is. Good night, Pansabi. Good night. Hope you rest well. Uh, it really is a show for idiots. Um, uh, this is a sub-zero take. Rising is bad. Rising is unironically bad. It was like Crystal and Sagar. Yeah, I mean, I can understand because they have, like, snappy production and they talk about, like, hot-button issues. But what I'm saying is, like, it's a show designed to to make the most gallingly stupid takes seem palatable by means of putting the stupidest takes all in the same room together and then you hear the worst take of all worded the best next to a bunch of other bad takes does that make sense so like it'll i know that vosh did like vosh did the, can we just watch the vosh sagar thing this is i'm sorry i know that like we're deferring we're doing an argumentum ad voshium here but, uh, hold on. Hold on. Does he, do we have this? Where's the one? Hold on. Where's the, where's the clip? Here he goes. Is this the one? No, no, this isn't the one. Does anybody have the clip? Where's the clip where he does the voice? Where he does the voice? Does he have an impression? Where's the one? I want to find the one. Yeah, did yeah, yeah, didn't didn't High Progressive have it? Is it on the Vosh pit? I'm not finding it. I remember th there was a video of it. Is this the one? Yes, this is the one. Yes! I love this one. This is the one. Yes. Thank God. Here we go, everybody. Enjoy. Enjoy. For their LGBT month. And Crystal Ball will say, 
Yeah, well, this is good, I guess, but we have to recognize that corporate hegemony is never going to sincerely, you know, promote the interests of gay people. This is just a virtue signaling attempt to get their attention, and Sagar will say, You're completely right. This is just virtue signaling. Corporations have been brainwashed by post-Frankfurt neo-Marxist academics who are trying to disseminate an anti-white agenda by educating the wealthy and the children of the wealthy to hate white people in the pursuit of a wokeness cult. And Crystal Ball will say, Well, I don't know if I agree about that, but I do agree that corporations are bad. And Sagar will say, Yes, corporations are bad. You know who else believes that? Tucker Carlson. Let's go to a Tucker Carlson clip, folks. Cue two minutes of Tucker Carlson in the middle of a segment about how black people aren't humans, talking about how corporations are bad because they support black people, but in like an insincere up? way. Then they cut back to rising. Yeah, wow. You know, you got to hand it to him when he says stuff that could be a right or left leaning position that's really kind of ambiguous, you know? And then Sagar will say, Yeah, I completely agree. I really do think the insincere attempts to appeal to the interests of BLM on the part of corporations really signals how corporations are furthering the downfall of Western civilization. Really, uh, it is nearly impossible for conservatives to imagine themselves living in the glorious, culturally hegemonous America that they once uh, lived in back 50, 60 years ago, as long as these corporations continue to shill for anti-white agendas. And then Crystal Ball will say, Well, I don't know if I agree about that, but at least we agree corporations are bad. And then the segment ends. That's it. Literally every single episode of The Rising, and it's only gotten worse. It is just a contest. What they do is they have the dumbest takes. Everyone, the lefty, the righty, the centrist, all say their dumbest takes, but the writers have written the right winger take to be the most reasonable. So the dumb lefty says the dumb take, then the dumb centrist says the dumb take, and then the righty says the the least dumb sounding take of all and then all the viewers go oh yeah the right he was right look at how reasonable this nazi is i hate it it's so stupid it drives me so mad i oh i fucking hate it so much their show doesn't it doesn't give you anything that you can't get anywhere else just watch like just watch like what's that what's that fucking um what's the show with um Is it this one? Yeah, Democracy Now. If you want a show that has like, uh, that like actually teaches you news and that has like a similar feel to The Rising, just watch Democracy Now. Unironically, it's it's very like clean cut, high production value, nice calming voices. Just fucking, oh my god, just go for it. Yeah, Amy Goodman's Amy Goodman is legit. They're way better. Their content is way better, but it's got a similar feeling. Yeah. Democracy, meow. Oh my God, based Celine. Look at this, based Celine, everybody. I'm going to rob an NFT truck. Me too, goes to the Pirate Bay in Roblox. This is sick. I agree. I fucking agree. All right, everybody. Holy shit. What a great, what a fucking great time. <laughs> Thank you, 85 to Derek. I love, I love Celine. Celine is so funny. You guys, if you don't follow Celine, like seriously, go follow Celine. Celine is unironically absolutely hilarious. Here you go. You need me to see this clip? What's this clip? Gummy Cooks Ramen. Okay, all right. All right, impromptu cooking mama. This is the last bonus of the night. Then I need to go rest. Here we go. I don't know what this is, but let's do it. How do I make ramen? Do I just pour water on it? Oven. Thanks. How about just boiling water? How? Teapot? A kettle? You put water on a pot, boil, put the noodles, put the packet in. Or also put an egg for extra yummy. Thanks. Do I just break the egg into the pot? Yeah. Crack the egg and throw it in the ramen. Anyways, I finished. Come on. This can't be real. 
This has got to be fake. Why don't I see water there? What do you mean? It's right there. Oh, it's just lighting. Sure hope you have something to give it flavor. Uh, salt? It doesn't have a bag. You're telling me that you'll eat the ramen just like that? No vegetables, no broth, just water, salt, and ramen? The fuck? You want me to put it in a bag? It's gonna melt. What? Unpack it. It's a plastic bag. Open the bag. The flavor? Salt? Where's the flavor packet? Okay. Inside the packaging? Were there more packages? Oh. Yeah. I thought it was one of those anti-moisture packages. So it was flavoring. Good to know for next time. I mean, there are instructions on the packet 100%. Just read. Shit, maybe I shouldn't have thrown it away. Well, it's still in the trash bin. Too late, I already ate it. What the fuck did you eat? Noodles on salt and water? They were crunchy. Crunchy? Crunchy? What? Did you even cook it? My stomach hurts. I'm out. You just ate raw noodles and salted water. I am deeply concerned. I am deeply concerned. I... There's a lot that I could say, but I feel like the video speaks for itself, right? I, re I really feel like it speaks for itself. The sad thing is, guys, listen. Every Some of you in chat here are sitting here going, this has to be fake, right? I even said that for a second. But then I thought about it again, and I remembered that there are literally people in this chat right now who said that instead of boiling noodles, they would rather just microwave noodles. And then I rem and then I realized, wait a minute, no, actually, this is probably real. This, this probably is true. Like, there are people who literally do not know that you could just boil water, pour it over the noodles, let them get soft, mix in the flavoring, and be good to go. They're like, oh yeah, uh, I came up with an idea. I uh, put a water balloon in the microwave sitting on top of some noodles. And when the microwave reaches, when the water boils, it melts the plastic in the delicious plastic down onto the noodles. So you get some of that extra delicious rubber flavor. And uh, yeah, it's really good. I consider it a five-star meal. You know? You laugh, but I have been, I, I have been black-pilled. On the reality of like any of this. I microwave macaroni noodles. The only noodles I've microwaved. Oh. Mm. Mm. Some people go through life on autopilot. Why? I got to agree with Leshy here. Some people live their lives with no purpose whatsoever. They just do what they're told. But that's not a life at all. In fact, a life without struggle. A life without the fight, is no life at all. It sounds like a hate crime. It is. Don't worry. It's a hate crime. There are Americans who do hate crimes every single day. I've lived with many different boys in college. Some people cannot cook for shit. It's not that they can't cook. It's just they're too lazy. They're literally too lazy, okay? A life without living is a death without dying. True. Have you heard of Vosh's mayo brownies? I have heard of the mayo brownie story. I have heard of that. That was an accident, though, wasn't it? Wasn't that an accident? I can't remember. The mayo brownies was an accident. No, he had no eggs. So he put mayo... Oh.
Good night, session. Didn't work for Vosh. That's all I'm saying. Didn't work for Vosh. 618 likes. I mean, I'm here for that. I don't know why I'm being tortured right here. Font, wait, wait. Zan reused oil he fried fish in for some dessert and loudly regretted it. Dude, that's disgusting. He probably used Miracle Whip. Owning Miracle Whip is a sin in and of itself. If you use, if you buy Miracle Whip, you're, uh, you deserve whatever comes your way sorry it's disgusting yeah it's a self-report literal fuck miracle whip actually disgusting wait what's wrong with miracle whip disgusting it's filthy Vos just straight up subbed eggs for mayonnaise my favorite use of german chocolate uses mayonnaise to replace them for eggs and vegetable oil what if it's for porn what what why would you use Miracle Whip for porn? What? I think we've reached the part of the stream where I stop believing bedtime. that I live in reality. Bedtime. I think it's bedtime. I think it's, be I think it's, be I think it's bedtime. I've only had two. I've only had two of these things. These things aren't even that high alcohol content. These are only 6%. I've only had two. I already have nightmares. I had a really, I actually had a really bad nightmare last night. Believe it or not, it was scary. My dog was in danger in my dream. What does the beer taste like? This isn't beer. This is a a hard kombucha, and it's fucking delicious. It tastes like a fuckload of fruit. It's amazing. I will be smoking a bowl after this, probably. Um, stream too long? Yeah, you're right. I think it's time for us to raid out, everybody. I love, I seriously, you all non-parasocial, but as much love as I can possibly send to you without being parasocial. Thank you. You guys made today awesome. And I feel really good. Today was a really fucking great stream. So we're going to raid out real quick. Um, We're going to raid out. I know who we're raiding to. We're raiding to Keffels. We haven't raided Keffels in a million years. So we're going to raid out to Keffels. I fucking think Keffels is awesome. So here we go. YouTube, go hang out with Keffels. We're going to go raid Keffels. Keffels is super funny. Keffels is super, super funny. A memer of, of, the, uh, of the epic level. You can go and gamble on sausages. We love Keffels. Here's the link. Go ahead and click through to Keffels. I promise you, if you go watch Keffels, you will have a good time. Okay? I'm not kidding you. At least go and say hello to Keffels. Thank you for 621 likes. I want to see that every stream. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. And I will see you guys on Wednesday to continue our awesome inscription playthrough. If you are here and listening and you haven't watched the inscription chapter one and chapter two, I promise you they are awesome. Go watch them so you can catch chapter three. Not only is inscription an amazing game, but I did voice acting for all the characters, and I promise you it's really good, okay? All right, much love to each and every single one of you. I'm gonna go rest, and I'll see you very soon with some cool and exciting and fun things. Today was awesome. Thank you for your support. Mwah. Much love to all of my imps, and I'll see you very soon, okay? Bye-bye for now, everybody.